In this video, we're gonna talk about Spawn's World Shatters. This is Hell's Rapture, and where does Spawn go now? I don't know if you watched my previous video, the craziest twist in Spawn's history revealed. That's where we cover Spawn issue number 300 to 325. In this video, we're gonna cover Spawn issue number 326 to issue number 350. And the storyline is this. Since Spawn issue number 100, the throne of Hell has remained empty, leading to a chaotic power struggle among the demonic forces. And the way this will end, it will pivot drastically for spawn issues going forward so stick to the very end you'll see exactly what i mean you will definitely want to binge watch this video but before we get into the content timestamps will be in description if you wish to go from issue to issue also link in description if you wish to purchase any of the spawn comics in this video support the art support the industry and also don't forget to check out some of our limited print rated comics limited print exclusives to add to your comic book collection lastly hey if you like the content we're throwing up you know what to do like the video and subscribe to rated comics youtube channel with all that being said hey let's get into the content Before we get into the review, if this is your first time here, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It'll help Rated Comics to make more comic book reviews and comic book related content like this. We begin this issue exactly where we left off in, in issue number 325. Spawn comes across with Hunt when he's looking for Fregretto as a lead to try to find Calixto Yostra. And Hunt is just going to work on Spawn, slashing. And Hunt's real name is, I didn't know this, is Daniel Kilgore. And he's all that remains in his Spawn's way to fight in this mind this beast to find out where the heck is Calixtiosa because in the last issue Spawn needs it because all these new threats are happening and Cos is the only man that can help Spawn to handle all those new threats. So when Hunt slashes Spawn in the midsection and Spawn just bleeds out, Spawn knows the only way that this creature will abide by him and calm down is to flex his superiority and this huge energy blast he emits and it shows Hunt who the heck the superior is. Yes, yeah, son, tell your mama to save me a play. Hunt snaps out of his like mind rage and another voice tells him, come on, Daniel, get a grip. Remember your brain. Try my best here, Kurt. And Kurt is his brother in spirit. Tell him, I recognize this guy. That's Al Simmons. Tell him you know me. Maybe he'll calm down or something. Spawn's like, why are you two here? Wait, you can see us? You can see me? Yes. Now, who are you? Oh, I mean, you know, I'm Kurt Kilgore. This is my brother. This is his brother. We met years ago in Guadalajara when you were with the U.S. security group. Oh, did I ask about you? Calm down. Let's just talk for a second. This is just a misunderstanding. See, my brother Daniel, about a month ago, he was poisoned by his assassin girlfriend named Lydia, and we're trying to track her down to see if there's a cure. Now, we know she's part of a section of angels, but we haven't had that much luck finding them. Why did the angels attack you, says Spawn? Try to figure all that out. I mean, come on now. All I know is heaven and hell, they have it out for us because of this suit and the symbol on it. Lydia's group has an allegiance with Fregretto's crew. It's why we came here to get some answers. Okay, you came here to get some answers. Then why'd you kill him? Well, you know, it wasn't part of the plan. The poison in me. Plus, it's, it was causing issues with my suit. And in the middle of questioning Fregretto, he attacked me. I lost it. You freaking killed my only freaking lead, says Spawn. Whoa, relax. Let's just look around and see if we can find anything useful. So they look around, they do some digging. Hunt is contemplating in silence. Should I apologize for what I did? I mean, I did kill the brother's only lead. Remember, Spawn needed to find Cogs. For Greta was that only lead after Spawn was doing a beat down the streets to find out where Cogs is at. Meanwhile, Kirk's spirit tells him, hey guys, I think I found something. So they go to the next room and it's some kind of box some kind of communication device. It's what the shadow players like to keep clear dividing lines between their different lives. They use devices like this when dealing with their own kind. Spawn doesn't know it can be open, but it's encrypted and any useful useful information about our targets, it'll be on this, but I have to go back to my base to encrypt it. Okay, great. How do we get there? Says Daniel. And they're like, uh, we're just gonna disappear. Boom, disappear, that's it. Meanwhile, back at the zoo, the Centurion spawn is getting his ass beat because he's refusing to fight with the other spawns. The other spawns, they know they They've been there long enough to know there's brutal consequences of non-compliance. So he's getting his asses handed to him. And what are they fighting for? I don't know. But the Forsaken in the last issue, Heaven's Angels, like, what's the point of all this? They're sworn enemies. We should have killed them by now. Well, look, we don't want to upset the Almighty. And I know you're, you have plans to go back to Heaven. I'm going to 
conduct a report on you and your worthy services because you've been very great at what you've done. But you know, it's Almighty's wishes to keep these a lot, keep these other hell spawns alive because he sees them as valuable. The Forsaken, the black suit, which is an awesome depiction of him, by the way. I think he just looks gangster in the, in the all black armor. He's like, all right, well, I'll be in my quarters. Please let me know if you need anything. I mean, this guy is very imposing and doesn't look like you want to piss him off. And they're like, Lydia, you're jeopardizing all this. If this black boy ever figures out the truth, well, we better make sure he doesn't then. And in the last issue, Lydia is they're talking about who's going to take over Hell's throne because they want to serve his second or third in command to them because they don't want to take the throne themselves. That way they can adapt to whoever can take the throne and they're not putting their asses on the line like that. So they're playing this guy and if he ever finds out some things about to go down. In Spawn's hideout, he's doing his thing, just pondering whatever this encryption box is. Hunt is like, dude, this is crazy. Like I'm still trying to figure out and process the crazy stuff between heaven and hell and that's a whole new level to me. Then they talk about Spawn and how Kurt's connection with Spawn is and he's like, dude, I only met him once during my earliest missions with the agency. We were both in this huge cross agency task force that was sent to extract scientists out of Guadalajara. Mission is itself was a disaster the target got killed and we barely made it out alive but my memory of simmons is that he he was someone worth having on your side it bit headstrong but dependable so we could trust them right whoa daniel baby bro i wouldn't call that far and hunt's like man i'm just going out for a walk he runs into saigor and saigor looks pissed he's like hey king kong you got a problem and that sniff of hot gorilla breath on his forehead. It's like, man, you, I wish so. I wish you would try something. Spawn's like, hey, I told you, huh? Don't wander around. You know, go back to the com computer room. Cyber, it's all good. I think I found out who ordered the attack on you guys. It's Arthur Sylvine. Like for Gretel, he's another one of Heaven's operatives. Stuck on Earth, he runs several logistic companies in North America. The woman who poisoned you, she's one of Sylvine's enforcers. And after going into some more detail and dialogue, and I saw on one of his files a detailed meeting he was having with Cox tonight. We should be there. And they're like, okay, well, and also link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. So Spawn's request is you guys are following my lead. Don't screw this up. You follow, I lead. All right. And Hunt's like, wait a minute, hold on. I don't follow nobody's lead. And Kurt's like, fine, we accept. Good. There's a room down the hall. I'll come and get you in the time when it's time to go. Meanwhile, in the meeting, they meet with Iris. Iris is like, hey, Cog sends his apology. He's tied with other matters. He believes it's appropriate for you and for Gretel to meet with me directly until we resolve our issues. And what issue is that? I thought this was talking about equal partnership. No, this ain't equal partnership. Then what is it then? Cogs wants your allegiance. Hold up, bro. Cogs needs to be out here himself and tell his ass to get down here so he can tell that to ourselves. We ain't pledging no allegiance to nobody. This is equal partnership. All of a sudden, Spawn, Hunt, and Gang enter the room and Iris is like, whoa, it's a pleasure to finally meet you in the flesh after all this time, Spawn. So Spawn tells you didn't really think you could trust him to meet Cogs, did you? Why do you care? Because he uses everyone until they're no longer useful. Then eliminates him. I bet he didn't tell you that part. Oh, you know, Spawn, you're just being a little dramatic. Is that why Cog isn't here, Iris, to ambush us? Then they morph into demons and go in for the attack. Then you all will die. And then Cog will die too, and he will be next. And that's where we end the issue of Spawn issue number 326. Personally, I thought it was not bad of an issue, but it's not great of an issue. I think King Spawn and Gunslinger Spawn spoiled that up for us, but I still gotta do these other Spawn issues because I think Spawn is still a gangster ass comic. I think you'll have a fun time reading this book. It's just not, in my personal opinion, the best issue of Spawn, but hey, I'm still gonna keep reviewing other Spawn issues as well as King Spawn and Gunslinger Spawn, and of course, the Scorch, which was gangster. But with that being said, we begin this issue with the hell spawn trapped in Cordelia's grasp. He wants to make a deal, but Cordelia's like, you know what? There's no deal to be made. You're not in no position to be making demands. And he's like, well, I must have some value. Otherwise, you have to kill me by now. I will cooperate. Let's make a deal. She's like, mm, is that what you think? Well, sorry to disappoint you, but it's nothing like that. We chose you because you were the most expendable. A putrid smell burns as she shift forms. And she's just downplaying this hell spot, you know, making it feel like crap. I never understood why hell wastes so much of its time and energy on your hell spawn. Energy that almost always ends up in disappointment. So off screen, someone says, excuse me, ma'am. She goes back into her normal human form. That's the form we like better because she's looking good, though. So one of the guards are like Dr. Milner wanted you to know that he finished the examination and this prisoner's gotten to this 
got the necessary psychic abilities. Good, bring it over here. And the Hellspun's like, what, is this the best you got? I already said I'll cooperate. You know he's in a position of weakness. He has no leverage. And this girl's like, I know, but you know what? You're gonna do exactly that, cooperate. And this psychic puts his fingers inside the symbiote and goes into this Hellspun's mind. Meanwhile, Daniel, I love this panel right here where you get the fighting and action scenes, but also the backstory of Daniel Kilgore. Haunt, Daniel Kilgore has never had the best record with women. The first woman he ever loved left him for his brother and married him. Damn, that's savage. The second tragically died in a chaotic battle with the psychotic cult. That's double savage. And what's also triple savage is look at this panel right here with Spawn and Hunt and these minion demons just going at it right in front of Iris when they had this last meeting in issue 326 to meet with Iris to see they could join forces, but Iris wants their allegiance. Sorry, not Iris. Cogliciosa, who is now Sin, wants their allegiance. Daniel started to doubt if he ever find love again. Then he met Lydia. And for the first time in ages, he began to feel that there is hope. That is, until she tried to murder him. And now, this is where we are. Going at it, more fighting going on. Epic fighting, awesome fighting. On the far side of the warehouse, Spawn battles a fresh wave of reinforcements. You're a fool, Spawn. You've fallen so low that you die for scum like Iris. And he's like, I know what she is, and I know what she's capable of, even if she does work with Cog. And for now, I need her alive they do more battling battling ensues this is awesome artwork you're on the wrong side spawn they're using you so they can steal more power they don't want you on their throne that's their lie hunt goes into more battle and his uh, and his brother is like danny be careful man you're angry i know but we need to find a way to get rid of the poison in you the demon is like oh my my where was that fire when we were together shut up you're not lydia the antidote where is it tell me or i'll swear I'll... okay all right hold up yes there is an antidote but you can only get it in heaven so you want to live they get spawn to open the dead zones it's the only way you can get there what the hell are the dead zones watch out he gets clobbered and <laughs> haymakered on the only reason i let you live last time was because it gave the poison longer to spread through your body if we killed you now early the haunt suit might have been able to survive and attach itself to the new host but it looks like the poison had enough time now so it's attached to you so if i kill you i end you and the haunt suit step away from him said spawn and this demon's like okay your call but I suspect you'll soon wish I finished him. As for you, Iris, we won't forget this betrayal. Iris is like, leave her. And Spawn's like, dude, where are you going? I want to speak to Cox. Patience, Spawn. My master is a busy man. Still, he said he'd meet you in a week's time and I'll make arrangements. Well, good. Tell him I look forward to it because I need him. Cogs is the only one I can tell Spawn how to win this battle or how to defeat his enemies that are coming up. So Han said, okay, what are the dead zones? And Spawn's like, why do you ask? Well, the creature told me that the antidote I need is in heaven. The only way to get there is by you unlocking the dead zones. So what are they? They're entrance points connecting heaven and hell to earth. Can you open them? Well, in theory, well, take me to heaven because that's a relief. I need that antidote. And his brother is telling him, Daniel, look, Spawn's not going to open them for you. And Spawn's like, dude, man, they're staying closed. Well, why is that? The dead zones need to stay closed. It's the only way to stop heaven and hell from interfering with humanity. Because if they don't, humanity gets wiped out. Well, they can't stay closed. I need to live. Look, man, a couple things first. First, you're not more important than the rest of the world. So I don't give a shit if you die. Second, I bet they're lying to you because that's only in their best interest for them to open up the dead zones. They don't care about you living. They just want what's best for them, which is open up the dead zones. That way they can grow their armies and become more powerful. You're better off finding a cure on Earth. It's where the poison was probably created, so start there. By scouring the Earth? Bro, Spawn, I don't have that kind of time. But like I said, bruh, you're not my problem. But I'll reach out to a few people that might be able to help. If they can't, the dead stones still stay locked. So don't even try me like that. Spawn, tell your mama to save me a plate. Well, he didn't tell her like that, but it's just kind of funny. So that's how it is. Every man works for themselves. Well, screw you. I thought after all these years, you'd be more pissed at them. And when someone offered to help, you'll take it. I take help when I can trust it. You don't have that luxury anymore. This is war. We have aligned interests. So take my freaking help. I'm not asking you to be my friend. I got plenty of those. I'm telling you. I want to help, but I can't if I'm dead. We all die, says Spawn. Yeah, but we don't all get to come back like you, though, do we? Mm, clap back right there, huh? But he don't know. You want to help? Fine. This is how you help me, huh? Tell me how do I stop dozens of factions filled with demons and angels who don't give a damn whose side they're on as long as they retain power and influence over every human being on Earth. The reason they want the dead zones open is so they can grow those powers. I'm not going to let them do that. Then take my help. 
We're done. You don't turn your back on me, Spawn. I didn't ask for you to join this war, and Spawn puts his ass up in chains. That was your choice. And you're not the only one that's had to sacrifice things, so you don't want to fight, then do it. But part of that means one day our enemies might just get their kill shot. So dying, that's just part of the equation. If you don't have the stomach for that, you're useless to me. So either you're going to die, you're going to have to find this poison yourself, this antidote, or die winning a war, because either way, I can't help you. I'm not opening up those dead zones right there. And it haunts like, well, give me a chance to be useful then spawn thinks about it for a second and he knows he needs as many allies as he can for at least now you want to survive then focus on that says spawn he retreats into the cold shadows that swallow him allowing him to disappear comps like i don't know what to do now so what do we do now meanwhile in dc we get senator scott rawlings giving a speech to the people. And the speech is just, you know, building up hope, running for a campaign. You know, saying, I won't let Al Simmons and his radical new followers run rough shit over our great nation. I will put my feet to the to, to DC's fire. I will get these policies, keep you guys safe. We will do this, you know, just prepping up the speech. Meanwhile, that hell spot from the beginning of this issue appears like, you look scared, Rollins. You should be. Breaks his neck and the crowd tries to flee, but the sheer numbers slow them down, making their executions that much easier for the mercenaries and their high-powered rifles. Just going to work on this crowd. News coverage is getting a hold of this. As utter carnage has engulfed the area where Senator Rollins was giving a speech to thousands of his supporters, though most have managed to escape, the event has descended into a massacre. One of the mercenaries is like, hey, target's locked. Am I clear to proceed? Cornelia is like, not yet. I want them to gather more footage. We still need our money shot. We see this brother in this hooded sweatshirt with the cell phone recording that hell spot. Death to those who oppose Al Simmons. Perfect. Proceed. Take that shot. Copy that. And once he gets the order, boom. Headshot to kill the head spawn. And that's where we end this issue of spawn 327. What do I think of this issue? I mean, okay, look, I think it's probably, it's not a filler issue, but I think it's setting up a story for something. What is it setting up? I don't know, but I'm still gonna go into it. This, this issue is obviously not as good as Gunslinger spawn or the Scorch or King spawn, but I think it's setting up a new direction for a new story. I don't know what the significance of that headshot is, but it's all out pandemonium and Spawn has a, is gonna defend humanity because it's, that's why he's keeping the dead zones closed. But what's this gonna turn out to be? How is this gonna be? Is this gonna create more pressure for Spawn? I have no idea. But if you wish to add Spawn 327 or any, or any of the other Spawn comics to your comic book collection, link in description. You know I got to do it for the boys, so let's get to it. We begin this issue with, we previously left off with issue number 327. The Exodus Foundation has declared war. With the assassination of Senator Rollins, the entire world sees Spawn as public enemy number one. But we know from the last issue, it wasn't Spawn that did that. It was some of the Walmart looking Spawn or Hell Spawn that committed that act and got shot in the head. Now these new media coverages are talking about the terrorists that were killed at the scene, the identity of groups and the leaders who were dressed as a vigilante Spawn. So the mystery remains who is this Hell Spawn, but people in the media perceive to believe that it's Spawn. And the government is avoiding giving any information to the public as it is. The next panel talks about the lead terrorist was a 28 year old college dropout named Elliot Cooper. And that's what the news coverage is going with. But is that information really true? I mean, it seems like obviously mainstream media is telling you what the left hand is doing, but what is the right hand really doing? So Spawn is obviously investigating this himself. And he's going through this and this monologue is going back and forth with what, with what Spawn is doing. But Spawn is trying to get to the bottom of this. And then off screen we hear someone telling Spawn don't move, which you know you don't come up on Spawn like that unless you want that smoke from him. And it's the army, it's the military, the militia, they want him gone, they want him out. And they all know the last sighting of Simmons was in Washington DC two weeks ago, which is a reference to King Spawn issue number two. But guess what? They don't want this smoke and Spawn goes ham on these military militia. Chains, decapitating their heads, guns, they don't even stand a chance. You know what, this is just like putting a grown ass kid in daycare amongst other kids. Give me your Capri Sun and string cheese, I'm hungry and there's nothing you can do about it. So he's just wiping the floor with the blood, guts all over the place. In this next panel, we see the Forsaken, and he's pissed off at Cordelia because he doesn't care who she has to get in contact with. He wants to get in touch and get an audience with the Almighty. And he feels it was not God's intention for him to be 
hiding on earth like some coward. And Cordelia's like, look, I understand your frustration, but we're all in this together. We've all been locked away from heaven. If you checked out the previous issue, she's obviously playing him because she wants to for a second fulfill her agenda. So Cordelia tells the forsaken, remember, you still have much to atone for in God's eyes. And Forsaken is like, look, I'm not trying to buy all that. I have sacrificed more in service of heaven than any one of you, Cordelia. So for that devotion, I am seeking my reward. Well, you want your reward? You better earn it, baby. I'm obviously putting my own twist too because she's got cleavage on like that and you make an eye contact with a brother like that, you know something's about to go down. But jokes aside, she's really holding her ground with the Forsaken. So Cordelia continues on with the speech. God called you to fulfill a purpose. Do that and he'll consider rewarding you. If you can't, others will gladly follow God's orders and she leaves room. And I promise to do everything I can to help you because you're not the only one who wishes to return home. But to do that, you have to trust me. And for that, for now, that means keeping yourself hidden, Forsaken. And Forsaken's like, look, I ain't buying what she's what she's feeding me, but I can't prove it right now, but I promise it won't be much longer. And he's about to do his own little thing. So Terry tells Spawn, he's still trying to figure out why they went public with their actions at the conclusion of issue number 327. And Spawn agrees, it's like, it's counter to what their previous methods were. They were always on the down low, but this time they went public for the entire world to see. And right now, I don't see any signs of any, or any hell spawn was taken and I want to know where that hell spawns body is at where he got shot in the head so odds are that hell spawns body was probably destroyed by now but Terry did say he found a bullet cartilage that they used to kill him there's some supernatural residue all over it and he can run tests to confirm its origins. But before he does that, he wants to update Spawn that, that a few more of the networks and his connections that he looked into, they took out some fake IDs that was lifted from the kid who died a few days ago. So there's probably a connection to that. So Spawn's obviously good work. And also Terry informs him, ever since the other Spawn started showing up, there's been a huge spike across the planet in the number of necroplasm readings. But because there were so many, he didn't notice how to decipher them because they appeared and disappeared so quickly. But so far, he's identified at least 23. Some are spawns that you fought before, like on Omega Island and Omega, but most of them, they don't fit any pattern that we can use or that we can see. But that same spawn who assassinated Rollins that appears that he looks like you, he disappeared out of nowhere, but nowhere. But the data shows that he arrived in the same era at the same time as the others. So they gotta do some more digging, you know? And Spawn's like, well, I think he found a way to cloak himself. Maybe he did, maybe he not. And Terry found some footage with the Forsaken and it looked like they're collecting hell spawns, but for what? And Spawn's like, mm, okay, I don't know who is doing it, but I think I know somebody who might know who's doing it. And Cyborg goes into a telepathic, reading the mind, connecting the mind, doing the Jean Grey kind of thing with Jim drowning here. And Mark, in the previous issues, goes with Jimmy because he doesn't like the way Spawn is treating him. And also, he is not sure if he believes in Spawn's causes and Jim kind of kills him with kindness. So Mark is going on Jim's side for the moment. You know? So a system alert goes up and, and what attracts its human hybrids and celestials where it can determine their potential recruits. And Mark is like, what do you talk about recruiting for what? Well, I need to recruit because you're gonna need a whole army to take down Al Simmons, you know? And I need to determine if they're on our side or not. And Mark's like, and exactly whose side is that? The same side as when we first met Mark. And Mark is starting to have second doubts about this. So Jim is like, there's only one way to decipher what it is, but I got to go, I got to get back. I got to see what it's all about. So he disappears using his necroplasm energy and Mark's like, okay, I don't know what kind of stuff I'm getting into, but we'll look into that later. Meanwhile, Cordelia's associate is telling her, you overplayed your hand and there's gonna be consequences messing with the Forsaken like that. He can't put doubt, he can't put fear into that guy's mind. And Cordelia's like, look man, I did what was needed to be done and my operation accomplished exactly what it was meant to do. And that's to put fear and doubt and Spawn's little protest movement. I'm not worried about the followers or Spawn's actions. Well, what about the Redeemer? I'm not worried about that clown. And it's like, look, you don't take that brother lightly. You know, I'm sick of it. I know you might be sick of his whining, but her associate tells her, you don't have Forsaken in check. And Cordelia's like, really? Well, so tell your bosses that Forsaken's under our control. We're in the middle of a war, and in order to win this war, he's under our control. We will respectfully, Cordelia, her associate tells her, 
He's never been on anyone's side. And what scares her the most about him is he's a psychopath with the power to level cities. And what do you think happens, Cordelia, if he learns that you've been lying to him all this time? You think he's just gonna want an apology? Hell no. He's gonna want some names, numbers, and some assets on the platter. And also, I don't wanna be anywhere near him when that shit does go down. And when he finds out that God's never gonna take him back and he's never forgiven him, uh, we should have had, we should have destroyed him when we had the chance, Cordelia. And Cordelia's like, look, associate, you worry too much, just stick to the plan. He's not gonna find out, I promise. You know what? This brother is gonna find out. The Redeemer is getting put in a compromising position with, I don't know who this guy is, but he's talking about cleansing and, you know, you're under my power. But in that position, before he could get to the pill, Redeemer blasted with the energy, but before Redeemer has a chance to revel in his victory, he senses something in the shadows, and it's Spawn. And Spawn's like, okay, very impressive, who was that? Oh, don't worry about it, bro, that was somebody from my past, you don't wanna know. Redeemer looks at Spawn, well, you're not here just to say hi, so what are you here for? And Spawn tells Redeemer the kind of info you know. When did heaven start creating Redeemer? And that's where we end this panel. Meanwhile, in this panel right here, where these two boys, Nate and his friend, are talking about dating apps, and this guy is like, Dude, dating apps are dead. There's nothing out there for me. Will I ever find love? Man, look, be a man. Forget that internet dating stuff. Be the girl the old fashioned way, at a bar, at a funeral. <laughs> Jokes aside, I'm just joking here. There is nothing wrong with internet dating. I'm sure there's been a lot of matches made in heaven, or a lot of matches found on internet dating. But jokes aside, let's get back to the review. I'm just having fun here. So meanwhile, this guy who he's talking to his friend, he gets overtaken, his eyes turn green with necroplasm. And before you know it, he looks very similar to the hell spawn that killed Senator Rowling in issue number 327. And his friend is like, you're that dude that killed him. So someone off screen is talking to this hell spawn and we don't know who it is, but it keeps that allure, it keeps that mystery going. And he tells them, fascinating, I always wonder what would happen if a spawn was killed while the dead zones were closed. Even with the body dead, the spirit can latch onto a new host. And this spawn's like, and you are? Hmm, why bother with introductions? And he chokes him, uh, and you can see that thumb pressing down on his symbiote Adam's apple. And he's like, why bother with introductions when you've had so little time left? Just know that you have my thanks for the sacrifice you're about to make and he sucks the soul out of this hell spot. So he tells me because your name will live forever along with all those who help put sin on the throne of hell. And that's where we end this issue with Spawn, issue number 328. I am not sure where this storyline is going in my personal opinion, but one thing I do enjoy about Spawn and the King Spawn series, that while King Spawn is shaping up for things for Spawn to inherit the throne of each kingdom, Spawn in this issue provides a story where others are placing themselves in the line as all time rulers or everything. So they're acting like King Spawn himself, where in King Spawn, enemies from Spawn are pretty much tempting him like crazy to take the throne of hell for their own agenda. So personally, I thought this issue was a little bit better than the issue 327. And as always on this channel, we're always gonna review any and all Spawn content, whether it's Spawn, King Spawn, Scorch, and of course, Gunslinger Spawn. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. And with that being said, now, before we get into this issue, we're just gonna take it back a little bit. The Forsaken has had enough of false promises. He is on a rampage to earn back his seat at the side of the Almighty. So now we begin this issue with how the Redeemer was created, created for God's specific purpose, and he gave that signal, that purpose, the name Anti-Spawn, otherwise known as Redeemers. So we see how Redeemers are created. They have existed throughout history more than we could possibly imagine. And I like this Redeemer right here with the skeleton, with the bone armor. But it all started with the Forsaken, the black one. Heaven's first attempt at a soldier. He was also its first failure. Redeemer's having a conversation with Spawn. He's telling Spawn they imbued the Forsaken with more of its power than any Redeemer since. But that process was too much for one mind to bear. And it drove him insane. Disgusted by that result, heaven considered him a deformity and one that might contaminate the purity of the other realm. So he was cast out. Despite this, the Forsaken remained loyal, stalking the earth for years as he continued battling Hell's forces, hoping to win back God's approval. So there's not much else that we know about him, but after his exile, heaven wiped out every trace of Forsaken from their existence. If he's here now, which he is, it's because he came through the time rip. And Spawn's like, man, this brother doesn't sound like the type that take prisoners. 
No, he doesn't. He's working with somebody. So Terry tells Al, hey, Al, something strange needs to be going on with one of the spawn signals that we're tracking. And it's Forsaken. And Forsaken is on the hunt again. So turns out he's battling out with this spawn, iron spawn looking like thing. His iron spawn's blasted at him like, dude, we don't have to do this. We're not enemies. Yes, we are. And he suicide collides into him and causing a shock wave of an impact. And Forsaken's like, your corpse will be an offering to the almighty. And if your soul and this husk isn't enough, I'll gather another one like you. Smashes his head. You can tell the impact of that punch just takes the top off of his head. And another more green blood spoots out. And another until the pile of dead hell spawns outside heaven's gates can't be ignored. As he's about to impact with the final blow, Spawn tells if you touch him again, you're dead. And so are the people you work for. And Forsaken's like, you? Oh, I've been looking for you, Spawn. I only serve Lord God and his will. No others. But I'm glad you're here because I'm going to hunt you down anyway. He's on this rampage. And when this brother feels like he's got nothing to lose with all the power that he has, he is nothing but dangerous. Cordelia is called into the chambers. What is it? It better be important. You got 30 seconds to tell me. Finally, Cordelia, we've been trying to reach you, says this guy. Forsaken's gone AWOL. We don't know what's happened or why, but he's broken out of the facility. And they're looking at all this destruction that he's doing. And Cordelia's like, we already tracked him down. The problem is, so has Spawn and Redeemer. This is happening too fast. And this guy's like, look, I thought your plan was to get Spawn's attention. It is. I was. But this is happening too quickly, and I need more time to prepare. So the guy was like, I wouldn't worry about that. I doubt the Forsaken will let himself be taken alive by Al. So she's like, it doesn't matter. Spawn has some power over the dead. If he kills him, he may still be able to find the answer he needs. I need the telepath. Bring me the telepath. So we go into this panel with Hunt looking for answers, going on the killing spree, trying to figure out how to open up the dead zones. Or he wants to find out the cure for the poison that he's infected with. And this guy tells him heaven's the only place you can find a cure for it. He's like, you sure? Positive. Decapitates his head. I don't need you to no Look at all this killing spree he's doing. And Hunt hates this. Kurt tells his brother Daniel, if you watch my Haunt Origins explain, it explains how Haunt became about if you're new to this or whatnot, but just a little little fun fact here. So he's telling his brother, stop chasing dead ends, man. You know, they keep giving the same answer. We need Simmons. He can open up the dead zone, secure ourselves. So this guy goes in for the attack and he gets blasted in half <laughs> by this other brother. And, and he's like, well, he wanna hurt you. And Haunt's like, okay, well, what about you? Why are you sneaking up like that? I thought you were dead. I did, then I got better. Well, what the hell does that mean? I don't know what that means. And so this brother tells him, it means I can help you with your situation with heaven and finding Al Simmons. And that's where we end this panel. So now we go back to the juicy part of the book where Spawn, Redeemer, and Forsaken are duking it out. Radio contact is maintained with home base by Terry telling Al, if you can hear me, another batch of signals just popped up on my scanners. They're heading your way. Spawn's like, how many are there? I can't tell, but you gotta get the hell out of there. He can't, he's in the middle of something. And this Forsaken is pretty much giving Spawn a fight right now. And it's too late. Stand aside, hell Spawn. We got Centurion Spawn. I don't know what this other spawn is. Napoleon spawn and this Harry Potter looking spawn. Actually, it's more intense looking than Harry Potter, but whatever. In time, we will learn the names of these intruders. The big one we know is in Centurion spawn. He goes in there and literally clears the path by kicking spawn out the way while the others collect their target. Napoleon spawn tries to get Forsaken up and the Forsaken is like, get your filthy hands off of me. I'd sooner die than flee with scum like you. I'll never be a traitor like this Redeemer over there. A Redeemer is like, Bruh, I got to tell you something. Go ahead and keep deluding yourself. Keep telling yourself a traitor is the one who won't kill innocent women and children just to serve the ego. Remember, Agartha, God needed you out of his sight for a reason. Liar says forsaken. I was betrayed by all of you. Now you're doing it to God. No one who wears that armor would ever fight alongside a hell spawn. Then why do you think they're here, says Redeemer? It's because of your purity? No, they're here for one reason. They think you're just like them. That hell can make you into their useful soldier. You're wrong. They came in for the same reason you are because you're afraid. You're all afraid. Afraid that I was called here on a mission from God. Fool, says Redeemer. You're here by chance. 
brought by a hell spawn. Anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying. Whatever god you serve a millennia ago was replaced ten times over, chasing after a dead master. You spent your whole life at heaven's command. You gave them everything, and how did they repay your loyalty? How did they repay your devotion? By trying to destroy you. It wasn't enough just to banish you from heaven, forsaken, says the Redeemer. God was repulsed by you. He sent an army to destroy you. Remember that? They hunted you like a dog, defeating you with sheer numbers. They humiliated you. So whether you think I'm a traitor or not, we have the same elemental fire coursing through our veins. That flame holds the experiences of all redeemers. And it's time you saw the truth. Hundreds of images flash across forsake his mind in a split second as redeemer gives him that memory. Do you understand it now? Do you see it now? Forsaken's like, yes, I do, as he impacts the ground. This cannot be. It can't. His brain screams one word, Cordelia, as he rushes out of there. <laughs> Sorry, my mind for a second thought it was going to be another C word that he was going to say. But anyways, whatever. So now, so Cordelia and team are like, oh my God, it seems the crisis has been averted. Everyone, Forsaken is leaving the combat zone. He's heading in our direction at hyper speed, and he's only heading there for one reason. So the guy asked Cordelia, why would he come back here? You think the hell spawns were able to talk some sense into him? No, you freaking idiot, says Cordelia. Is that what you actually think he is? He's coming not to rejoin us. He's coming to kill us. And that's where we end this issue of Spawn. Issue number 329. With these Spawn issues, they could be up and down. More up than down. This is definitely up. I absolutely love it. The cover is sick. The story is sick. This issue is sick. I ain't got nothing else to say about that. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. With that being said... Just a quick summary before we get into this issue. The Forsaken is on a warpath, realizing that he's been lied to by Cordelia the entire time he was in her service. Now, a direct confrontation with Spawn is inevitable. So we go to the base where Cordelia and team is at. Cordelia is like, we need to evacuate now. When Forsaken gets here, he'll wipe everything out he sees. So we need to be gone by then. And his brother is like, well, what about the other patients, the other hell spawns that you were running tests on? Well, according to this security footage, they are dealing with the problem right now by eliminating them. No loose sand, says Cordelia. And once the guards are finished, this place will be leveled to the ground. Think of it as mercy killing. And this guy's like, but our research, you're gonna destroy all the hard work that we've done? Well, you're welcome to stay behind if you like, cause I'm not. And then a big rumble comes up and Cordelia's like, damn it, he's already here, Al ahead of schedule. Alert the team, alert the security, slow him down, contain him for as long as you can. And Forsaken looks like he means business. Where is she? Where is Cordelia, says Forsaken. Meanwhile, in another panel, we see Redeemer flying over to, to follow the Forsaken's trail. He's closing it on his location. And that location appears to be in the middle of the Colorado desert. And Terry tells him the only worker he sees in that location is an old military base that was closed decades ago. Nothing's coming up on that satellite image, so whatever there's there, there must be some cloaking tech. And Spawn's like, get me those coordinates ASAP, Terry. I'll meet Redeemer there. So minutes later, Spawn gets to the location and Redeemer's like, yo, this is the slaughterhouse. So Redeemer's like, yo, man, I recognize some of these species. They must have been pulled here through your time hole as well. So Spawn sees all this death and all these hundreds of cells. So Spawn tells Redeemer, someone's panicking. See, if there's any of them you could save. I'm going to find the Forsaken because I got business to take care of. Now, in this panel right here, we get to see that Overkill's brought back to life by Jim Downing. And also, Overkill's brought back to life to help Jim Downing fight this war against heaven and hell. Now, when Jim appears back, he just tells him that, like, hey, Overkill is reanimated. He's been dead twice. He's brought back. He's programmed to see you as a friend, not a foe. But we're also going to get haunt to join our cause. But if he doesn't join our cause, well, then that's okay. I guess we just got to proceed the plan as usual. It's referenced issue uh, 314 of Spawn but you know this is interesting but also it, it, it sets up the story from the back end so we can move forward on the forward end but I want to get into the Spawn and Forsaken battle. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. So now back to the action. Cordelia is leaving to prepare to get the hell up out of it because when Forsaken comes there he's going to mean business and forget about everything. Listen to me she tells her gang. This is bigger than Spawn. We got to go as she 
a parachute chart the helicopter. Oh, forsake is like, you lied to me, girl. Your right to be a servant of heaven has been forfeited. And Cordelia's like, whatever the hell spawns have told you, forsaken, it's not what. Silence! No more lies! So she morphs and she prepares. I'm not gonna go out like that. If you're gonna kill me, I gotta go down swinging at least. Now, Cordelia gets first blood. And for a brief moment, she entertains a possibility she might make it through this alive. But it's just a moment. She's against the elemental force bent on her destruction. So there could only have been one outcome. He impels her and ends her. She's down for the count. And Spawn's like, good, now. It's my turn. And Forsaken is like, oh, you want some of this smoke too? I was coming to look for you since I'm about to destroy every hell spawn that ever lives. Now, Spawn and Forsaken go at it. At first glance, this clash appears to be simply the latest confrontation in the war that's been rising and raging since the first angel was cast out of heaven. Yet, they share a very common bond. Both are anomalies amongst their kind. Hell spawn versus anti spawn. Heaven versus hell. Both are despised as much by the side that created them as their enemies. But you know what? Though each would sooner die before admitting that connection. And for spawn right now, he hones in on his opponent's potential weakness. His armor. Once cracked, it forces its host to split its connection. This is an awesome fight right here, and the art is insane. Battling both external and internal damage. Now, Forsaken is a very smart warrior, and especially smart since he survived many tests that he's been taking because he's battle tested. He knows when to make a strategic retreat to prepare for his next assault. Because he has to, after Spawn cracks his armor, that's his weakness. I gotta I gotta go back and regroup, but I'm coming back for that ass later. Forsaken tells Spawn, tell Cordelia I'll be back, and tell her to count her blessings. Next time, you won't get the chance to save her. Then he's gone. He walks up to Cordelia, and Cordelia goes, You see what you've created, Spawn? Spawn stands silent, unwilling to engage or debate his enemy, especially her kind. Look at what you unleashed. How do you think he got here? It was you when you created that tear in time that pulled in hundreds of hell spawns from every imaginable era. That you were dumped here on Earth, and now all of us have to clean up your freaking mess, Spawn. Did you ever stop to wonder where they came from, what they're capable of, or why these monsters aren't attacking your cities and massacring millions of people? Did you question that? Or are you just as arrogant or you just don't care? I've been catching them, containing them, not you. Because every one of them hates that they're locked on this damn planet, says Cordelia. You pretend you're protecting this world, but you're not. You know why? It's because you're the greatest danger to its existence. And unfortunate for you and for them, You've no idea what's approaching the chaos the destruction coming your way. You set everything that breathes on the path to annihilation spawn. Remember that all the deaths will be on your head. So later on, we get this monologue where Terry says he did a scan of the remaining at the facility and to see if there was anything useful. The only positive that came out from his scan was all the work they were doing got destroyed and Redeemer still searching for the Forsaken, but it appears he's gone into hiding. And so Spawn's like, what about some of the other spawns? Any luck tracking down their signals? And Terry's like, because their signals were active when you left, but minutes later, they all went dead at first. I assume the Forsaken was capturing all those spawns from them. So Terry continues, but from what you said, it was Cordelia and her facility looked like it only ever held four spawns at the most. That's only a quarter of the total number of signals the other spawns were given off. Another dozen readings also went dead. And someone's collecting their energy plasma. Whoever that is is still out there waiting. And Terry continues to tell Spawn, and I'm also worried that this collection of energy could be converted into a power that you've never dealt with before. And we get this, I don't know who this brother is, but whoever he is, I want to see Spawn battle his ass next. And that's where we end this issue. Personally, I thought this issue was gangster. I, I appreciate the fact that they brought back Overkill as a backstory to move the story forward for further issues. And where is Ninja Spawn? I still want to see Ninja Spawn but that's okay i'm sure they'll get to that but i thought this was a fun read awesome read fantastic read i absolutely loved it link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection just a little bit what happened previously in Spawn issue 330. The Exodus Foundation has been torn apart by the Forsaken. Now he has no masters. Meanwhile, the surprise return of the cybernetic Russian assassin Overkill could tip the scale in Jim Downing's favor. So we begin this issue with the story of Abel Akainar reenactment of it. 
After Cain murders Abel, his life and any real meaning it had truly began with the murder of his brother. It was an act of cruel necessity that led to his first exile. An exile that forced him to water the fastness of earth for the rest of his days, never knowing any peace. And this act ensured that when he died, only one place he'd be destined for, and that was hell. And within a few heartbeats, he knew that from that day forward, he would do whatever it took to rule the earth again. And all who occupied it. And this demon comes up to him like, ah, fresh meat to play with. So Cain goes into that his brother's death was an accident, a moment of madness when he let his anger prevail. And since that day, he doubt whether he would be able to take another life again. But he quickly relived that illusion and he did just that and many deaths after that. He lost himself in the first few years in countless shadow realms exploring and educating himself in all dark practices. He learned, he grew, he got more savage, he started killing more in hell. In those days, a human presence was still novelty in hell and soon he began to acquire a reputation enough to attract the attention of Malboja, one of hell's many rulers. Ah, Malboja, like, tell me your name. I was known as Cain, but now I'm Cox. That's a hell of a plot twist right there. I've heard many tales about you, says Malboja. I believe you could be a use of my army and me. Cain had no choice but to accept because he needed to buy time as he was still just one man. In order to take the throne in hell, he needed to increase his power and gather allies by his side. Serving Malboja's army gave him the chance to do both. Those next few years passed in a blur of baptism and blood. And we get this conversation with Argus and College Joshua where Argus asks him, hey, Malboja seeks to create a new class of elite soldiers, one capable of leading his army against those of heaven and hell. The king will be forging a symbiotic armor for these warriors to wear. But our attempts have been unsatisfactory, so we need your knowledge of the necroplasm and what you know him doing his travels. So you gotta help us out, and Malboja seeks it. So after Cogs, also known as Kane, back then at least, agrees to it, he goes into it, and despite his outward enthusiasm just playing it off, he approached this project with veiled caution, having heard tales of others who've been recruited for the same mission. Everyone eventually banished to the pits when they failed to deliver to Mount Bose's expectations. So he meets Violator, and Violator's pissed like, what is this you brought me, Argus? A human? They can't be trusted with matters important like this. And Cogs is like, I'm not here because I want to be. I'm here because you weren't able to deliver what was asked of you. I've been dragged here myself. What did you say, human? Violator was like, you messed with my ego, bro. Enough, says Argus. You guys are here to do a task for Malboja. Set your bullshit aside, all right? And he's like, okay. Violator's like, all right, bro, I agree. I will tolerate you for now, but make no mistake who's in charge. And the moment Malboja tires of you, I will be waiting. For now, it's time for us to work together. So, Cos goes into a narration that there are few in existence of whom he despises more than the Violator. He has always presented himself as the one creator of the Hellspawn symbiote, but before his involvement is and his initial efforts had ended in failure, his closest success was a failed prototype that had escaped into the darkest corners of Hell's months before, which is Plague Spawn. But the true fact remains that on his own and without Cos, he has nothing. He can't do this thing without me. There will never be another hell spawn without Cogs. At last, a creation has been born, and it's finally time to present that symbiote to Malboza, and Violator is happy about it. Throughout their time together, Violator believed, and he boasted that he would be the very first host for that symbiote. Such a promise had never been made to him, but Violator's arrogance did not allow them to be any other possibility. So, he had to admit, watching him learn his truth, when Malboza is like, nah, bro, I'm giving that symbiote to Cogs, not you. He's going to be the host. Violator is like, Lord, please, like, I beg of you, this should be a, this, a native of hell should possess it, not a human. I made my choice, Violator, said Malfoja. I've chosen Cox to be my first hell spot. Know your place. Your reaction serves as proof of your unfitness. And he blasts him back and Cox's like, I am humble for this. I need more of the humility from you, says Malfoja. I need much more. Arise now. You are neither Cogs nor Simia. You are my hell. Hell spawn and Cogs looks like a pretty good hell spawn right there. That shit looks good. Becoming Hell's first war only drove his lust for wanting more. And so over years he waged relentless war on Maboja's behalf. But all the while he was doing it, he was gathering more and more support for his own plans. Converting demonic soldiers one by one to his way of thinking that their group sacrifices and bloodshed is why Malboja held on to his power. Without them, Malboja is nada. 
So he's recruiting more crew members and more, and they're recruiting more. So as his recruitment grew, his plan was to take the throne on the eve of Cortosia, and those loyal to Malboja will be scattered across the realm that night. The thing is, Cogs knew that with every fiber in his bone that his plan would succeed, but he never got the chance to because of a lone traitor in the ranks, which is that purple brother right there. And when Malboja gets wind of this, he tortures the hell out of him. I treat you like a true born, and treason is what you give me in return? Did you think you could stand against me, says Malboja? But nothing's compared to what I have in store for you. Your corpse will be smeared across the many. Lord, says Violator, there's another choice in how to punish a prisoner. So that way of punishment was exile in human form. For the next 30 centuries, Cods wandered the earth. Only a single spark of power left in him from his hellspawn days. Once he used that shred of power, he'll return to hell to be punished for eternity. So it's just like a mind game, mind torture they're doing to him instead of physical torture. Whoa! And he's been trying to steal necro powers from every hellspawn, but to no end. Bell. Violator visits him every century just to pity him. You know what? I th pity I have on you. I thought you would escape here by now. What's wrong? Are you stupid? Violator's just mind, mind messing with him, you know? So Cog's like, okay, I'll decide to clap back at you. All those years, Malboja never offered a symbiote to you. Why, Violator? Why? No matter how many failures he kept coming back to humans, not your kind. Imagine how little he thought of you. It's why he always called you a clown. So Violet wanted to glow, visit every century, just clobbers his ass, don't talk to me like that. But in time, Violet forgot about him. They all forgot about him. And to Cogs, that was their greatest mistake, their greatest sin, which is why he is sin now. Because no matter how long it took, he was going to return to hell and claim his throne. His search for a useful hell spawn never bore fruit. Everyone was a disappointment to him until he met Al Simmons, spawn. From our first encounter, he knew that he was different and he proved him right when he disposed and decapitated Malboja himself in one of the previous spawn issues. That ultimately created his chance and he took his damn chance and he took the throne, seizing Hell's vacant throne for himself. Though he realized that by being human, being limited with Hell spawn power, never allowed him to be a true ruler as he should have been. Why? Because he felt that heaven and the green world closing in. Both knew that with one sitting on the throne of hell, you couldn't. You have to wield enough power to destroy all of his enemies until they have powers first. So he, that was his mistake. Heaven, hell, and the green world. He needed a piece of all of them so he could truly possess the full potential of the throne's hell. So he battled and he raged for many months before he was able to claim even a tiny victory. But those encounters left him severely weakened. And when he tried returning to the kingdom, that world was somehow changed. While he had been away, the dead zones had been locked, preventing him from returning to his throne but this time he swore it wouldn't be a third exile because this time there was a way to beat them so he began laying the groundwork towards the goal towards the one outcome which he'll get everything and to do that after all these centuries required a total transformation first he had to eliminate all those that he trusted which is next right there the rest he needs to reinforce what they already believed that he was a feeble weak old man and he wanted to be on omega's island being a prisoner to have play spawn there that was always a plan now that he's completed his transformation this is a reference to spawn issue number one and when he i guess absorbs some of uh, play spawns powers and now he's becoming more powerful and this is the brother that was at the end of issue spawn 330 now he's taking the meeting up with spawn and he knows it's a trap but he's not concerned with that because he needs to acquire what he needs so if spawn wants to be the alpha for him to do that he doesn't care he's opening hell's doors so he'll play nice and he'll beat it out of him either way the dead zones are getting unlocked and that's where we end this issue this is a compelling story about cogs and going back in time his his rise and his fall and his rise again I, I really dug it i really absolutely dug it link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection with that being said in the previous issue, the secret history of Calixtio, so now known as Sin, is finally revealed, starting with the murder of his brother and his descent into hell. To his climbing the ranks to hell and his part in the creation of the first hell spawn, Sin has come. Now we begin with Spawn walking in the blistering cold. It's good to see you again, Al. And we see Cogs looking down upon Al and standing on top of a hill. So tell me, says Spawn, what's so important that we had to meet here? Well, it's the place where my brother died. It's been quite a long time now, but I enjoy coming here. Truth be told, it's one of the few places I feel at peace. Question before we start, says Spawn. How did you manage to get off Omega Island? Well, Cog's like, you, you ain't the only one who's clever. Now, what is it that wish you speak to me about? 
So Spark continues his dialogue. He wants to talk about the terror and time that created all this chaos. You were a hellspawn once. You seem to more, know more than others. Do you think what I did is reversible? Ah, says Cogs, I do. But my help requires something to return. Like what? Come on, Al, you're a pretty smart guy. I need a dead zone unlock. Just one, and just for a few moments so I could get to the other side. You do that, and I'll show you how to close the terror in time and send everyone back to their original times. And Spawn, he ain't no fool either. He's like, what, you want to take over Malboja's empty throne? Well, someone's eventually going to sit in it, right? And who do you think that should be? You? The clown? Who, Spawn? So Cods continues to complete his case. Be realistic. I know you have no desire to rule hell no matter what all the others say. I've heard all the wishes about you. Some are calling you King Spawn. Is it true? I love that reference and that tie into King Spawn because I think King Spawn is one of the most gangster issues you can read. That's ridiculous. And we both know it, says Cox. You're a soldier. A good one. A great one. But a soldier nonetheless. A follower, not a leader. Not a king. Someone has to sit on Hailstone, though. It's against the natural order for it to be empty, and it'll cause even more chaos if it continues to stay empty. And Spawn's like, oh, so you think you should be the one sitting on that damn throne? Well, if you're not going to take it, says Cogs, then I'm the best option you got. I'm not Malboja or Mammon, Al. I have no desire to replay their old ways. Someone has to protect Earth, and you could do it from here, and I'll help you from Hellside. It's why Omega imprisoned me. He wanted the throne for himself. And he's not the only one. If you or I don't fill the throne's void, soon it'll be too late. All you have to do is open up that dad zone, Al, and your problems are solved. So, the next move is on you. And the next move is on Spawn. And he lets it be known by putting that chain to his chin. You want some of the smoke? No! That's my simple answer, says Spawn. Spawn curses himself thinking Cogs was the one who could help him. I am not your apprentice no more, Cogs, and I'm not here to bargain. I want to know how to close that tear in time, and I don't give a damn about no throne. Ah, oh, says Cogs. I'd hope we'll be able to discuss this sensibly. I just dream, just remember, I tried to avoid this, and he morphs into sin. All this necroplasm green light coming out of him, emitting out of him. Whatever happened from here on out, Spawn, is on you. This new transformation that Cogs did from Cogs to Sin takes Spawn by surprise. The old man he knows all this time appears to only have been a mask. And today, for the first time, he's seen the real Cog. And Cog lays a haymaker on Spawn. And you could tell that, that that was some brutal pain right there. Did you think I'd come here if I thought you could beat me? You better get the hell up out of here. You can't. That's why you'll never be king. Kings, thrones, dad zones. None of that shit matters. Spawn is sick, all of it. But it may be too late as he feels his powers draining away. Realizing Cog didn't come here to talk. He came to set a trap and we see Spawn with that big ass axe ready to do some damage. You have no idea how long I waited for this Simmons as Sin blasted with this green energy. How long I've been forced to depend on others for my survival. Do you know how degrading that is? But now, now, I don't need others to give me their power. Now I can just take it for myself. And he impales Spawn with his fist in his chest and you can see that pain, that brutal, sheer, agonizing pain is just written all over Spawn's face in that text right there. And I owe it all to you, Spawn, because the right pieces didn't exist here on Earth, but you fixed that. Omega, play Spawn. That was a comma for the spark I needed. My thousand year wait is finally over, and I've begun to lose hope, but you've restored that. I've become sin because of you. And Spawn realizes if what he's saying is true, then Spawn is once again confronted with the unintended consequence of his action to destroy Clown. And that's in issues 300 and 301. And I'm glad I did reviews on that. I'll put the link in the description if you wish to watch those reviews as well, because those are some gangster issues too. The enemies he's helped bring here became tools to create another devastating parasite. One that makes fighting it a mismatch. And Sin takes Spawn's cloak and blasts it into the air. You ain't going away nowhere, son. You're mine. You, you're the one that's been haunting all those hell spawns, says Spawn. Yes, they become useful in what I'm doing. Opening up that hole sped up the groundwork that would have otherwise meant centuries more in waiting. Now there's only one last piece left together because you're going to open up them damn dead zone. The power of an army's worth of spawn courses through sin's veins increasing with each passing second. Isn't it exhilarating? You're the only one delaying the inevitable, Al. I'm going to extract your power to unlock the dead zones, and then I'll do it myself. You're wrong, says Spawn. I don't have those powers anymore. What? Says Sin. 
kill me because I can't unlock the Dezos. I've hidden that power somewhere. You'll never find it. So drain me to a husk. You're just wasting time. And Sin's like, uh, I don't believe it. I don't know. But meanwhile, this voice from off panel says, get away. And the first lesson Al Sim has learned in the military is whenever entering a hostile territory, especially against an unpredictable enemy like Hogs, you got to have backup. And we see Cygro come in and just clobber him and get his ass out the way. Take me out of here, says Spawn. The creature surprise attacks buys them only a moment, but that's all they need as Spawn's cloak comes back to them, envelops them, and gets them up out of the scene. Retreating goes against Spawn's every instinct, but he can't risk Sin draining more power from him than he already has. The battle for now is done, but in the weeks and months to come, many will hold this night up as a turning point when everything changed. When the war for Hailstone actually became official. So we see Jim Downing talking about, talking on the intercom, whoever he's talking to, that Al failed his chance, and he, he had his chance and felt if Sin had a managed to unlock the Denzel, none of us will be safe. So Al said he's managed to hide it somewhere, but he doesn't know where it's at. As he goes and starts figuring out what the next plan of attack is, Hunt goes there, he's like, hey, you know what? I wanna join the team. But before I do that, I want to investigate another lead first, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work out. But Hunt is on his own mission. He needs to find some allies because he wants to find a cure for his sickness, for his symbiote, you know, what he's going through right now. And Jim Downey is happy to hear that. So he tells him, for now, allow me to introduce you to the rest of the team as we see Mark and Overkill. And this is a different Overkill from the previous issues. It's not, it's a much more tame Overkill, a reprogram Overkill. And that's where we end this issue. Look, I mean, it's cool to see Spawn get his ass handed to him, but you know Spawn is always gonna come back stronger and better. At least that's what I think is gonna happen with Sin. It's interesting, I dug this issue and that variant cover that I put on the thumbnail, that is definitely worth the price of adding this comic book to your comic book collection because I think that's the first, no, it's not the first appearance of Sin. It's just really good looking art. And if you're a fan of art and supporting the art in the industry, that cover is definitely worth adding to your comic book collection. And I thought this was a gangster read. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. In the previous issue of Spawn, before we go any further, Spawn finally receives an audience with his former mentor, Kali Siostro, now known as Sin. The ensuing battle proves that Sin's power has grown exponentially and that Spawn is completely unprepared for what is going to happen next. In other words, we all know our boy Spawn got his ass whooped. So in the weeks since the clash with Spawn, word of Sin's power has traveled far and wide with all these other demons and Hell's demons mating and trying to pleasure allegiance and where they're going to pleasure allegiance to in all ensuing all this chaos, heralding a crisis for some. While all this is happening, this is creating opportunities for others. So this brother knocks on the door, Iris opens the door, and his name is Cataclysm. And he says he's here to pledge his allegiance to Sin. So Iris tells him to come in, but he's warned. Many others also wish to speak to the master, and the list is getting longer. So I suggest you make yourself comfortable. It could be quite some time before Sin grants you some permission, Cataclysm. And Cataclysm tells him, well, tell him, tell Sin, he'll want to hear what I have to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he does, says Iris, like everyone else. Well, what if that information I have to tell him is information how he can return to hell? You saw what happened last week. Sin does want to return to hell so he can claim the throne of hell. But he needs a dead zone to do that. And that's where Sin might want to hear the brother out. So meanwhile, in another place, Jim Downey tells Overkill and Mark and Gain that he's not going to keep saying it. Simmons can't be controlled and he can't be allowed to control the dead zones any longer. His reckless and arrogance and luxuries that we can't afford. We have to act now. We have to ambush him because Sin is, isn't going to back down. He's going to reinforce. Half the demons on Earth are gathering under his banner. It's only a matter of time before he comes for Spawn again. This is our best opportunity to attack Spawn and do an ambush while he's weakened and not even expected. So we got the element of surprise. And Mark's like, okay, so you want to ambush? But I don't know where he's at. It's okay. I, when I regenerate a Cygor, I establish a personal link with him. I've been spying on Spawn for months. And to extract that information on how to control the dead zones or find the power source of the dead zones, Jim Down is like, we need him back here so we can contain him long enough. And Mark is like, yo, I don't like this idea. Let me talk to Spawn first. This feels like we're moving way too fast. We've run out of time, Mark. We attack tonight, says Jim Downey. And Mark's not all the way with this. So he's like, yo, we have having second thoughts about this Mark says Jim I thought you were on our side I am but keep in mind I did everything for you you asked me to come here on a whim you're keeping information from me and I still don't know your full plan of attack or what your full plan is but I'm asking you to trust me on this trust me on this return the favor let me talk to spawn before you do this attack and Jim Downey's like fine 
We'll hold off. We'll grant you that. Talk to him. Maybe he'll prove us wrong. But I'm not holding my breath, though, says Jim Downey. Elsewhere, a horror unfolds as Hell's chosen warriors have turned on one another in pursuit of their own sense of survival. And we got one, two, three Hell spawns feasting, devouring on Calisiostro. Calisiostro, now known as Sint, is among those whose life force is about to be extinguished. Or so it appears. And then we get this telepath, this guy. <laughs> this guy comes in talking about, hey, I really thought you'd be much more of a challenge, Sint, given it was your idea to test me. So, did I pass? And says, like, shut the fuck up. No, you did not pass. You're just a disappointment. And he smashes his head to the ground. Pathetic. And meanwhile, at this long table meeting with blood and other hell's demons, that brother right there is just sitting dead and not sitting pretty at all in this meeting. And Sin is pissed. He's like, these are the best telepaths you guys can find. None of them had anywhere near the love of a psychic power I'll need to break through Spawn's defenses. Oh, we're trying, my lord. Our search still continues. Silence, says Sin. You've all wasted my time. I should have done this task my damn self. Well, I understand your frustration since it's blood, the vampire lord. But look how far we've come this week. The whores are willing to pleasure loyalty to you. It's irrelevant if I can't unlock a single dead zone. So get the word out that starting today, says Sin, every day Spa refuses to open the dead zones, I will level a new city. Blood's like, yo. That wasn't what we agreed to. You swore to me to leave Earth to my vampires. Calm yourself, blood. There would be plenty left for you. All right? This is just a flesh spawn out. But you underestimate Simmons. He'll rather burn the world down than hand it to the likes of you or me, says Sin. And Iris comes in. He's like, well, then maybe it's possible that we may not need Simmons after all. What are you saying, Iris? I want you to meet someone, says Iris. So Cataclysm introduces himself. He's like, yo, I've traveled a great distance to be here so that I might offer my services in your journey. Hmm. <laughs> And Iris is like, just listen to him, Sin. Listen to him, hear the brother out. And so Cataclysm tells him for months, I've served the vision of the clown. But eventually, I could feel which way the tides were shifting. When the throne of hell is claimed, you shall be the one sitting on it, Sin. My wish is to do everything I can in helping you get there. That's why I've come to tell you, you don't need the dead zones to return to hell. There's another route. Deep underground in the Keza Omega Island, there's a fissure, a small crack in the fabric of reality between the world and hell. I don't know why or how it's there, I just know it exists. And Sin's like, that's where I became Sin, when I was in prison there. Maybe it was that. It doesn't matter, it exists, and now the clown doesn't know how valuable the fissure is. And that's a reference to Spawn's universe, issue number one. Card up above, link in description if you wanna check out that review to see how this ties in. But now, back to the content. So, Kadok is like, so for anyone who's tried passing through it from hell has felt i believe with your powers there's a way to reverse the flow to go from earth to hell not the other way around hmm. and since i and i should trust a soldier from clown's army as the one with all the answers and that's a very sussy you know comeback and this guy's like i understand your hesitation all i can say is you're not the only one that hates clown he betrayed me and hundreds of others so if me helping you allows me to get my revenge then I'll be your loyal subject. And Sin's like, okay, well, if what you're saying is true, you'll be richly rewarded. But take a walk with me. I won't tolerate a single lie. Meanwhile, in the base with Jim Downey, Haunt is like, hmm, this is boring, man. And Overkill's like, hmm, you fight. You strong, but no fighter, though. You need practice. You need training. And Haunt's like, man, thanks, but I don't need no practice from no machine. And Overkill just... <laughs> Haymakers it, but the face like, all right, bro, just take it easy. You need trading. And so Haunt goes at Overkill. I think it's just a funny moment in the comic book. But meanwhile, Jim Downey's having a conversation with some mysterious hell spawn. And the mysterious hell spawn's like, you think they're capable of doing what we need, Jim? And Jim's like, they have to. We don't have any other choice. What about you? Are you ready for this? So the mysterious hell spawn responds with, I would have liked more time, but Al has forced our hand. I think it's a mistake letting Jim Rosen speak to him. I know it's not a perfect situation, but we need to keep Mark on our side says Jim. Plus, it'll distract him while I figure out how to deal with his medieval spawn persona, or at least neutralize it. Yes, says the mysterious spawn. We agreed on that. The last thing we need is another spawn interfering with our plan. But, speaking of which, spawn is out there, out in these streets, and it's only a matter of time until sin comes for him again. Spawn knows this. And if Al is intent on minimizing the loss of human life, when that happens, he needs to take the offensive. It's why the past week he's been hunting day and night, attempting to find his old mentor first. At the very least, he means to flush him out. To accomplish that, he needs to be strong and he needs to be healthy. Because as much as he'd like to ignore it, the last few months he's taken a mounting toll on his body. He needs to rest and he needs time to recover. So he goes into the shadow, back into the base. But how, Al asks, 
Satan seems to be growing more powerful each day. He'll continue to press his assaults and his spawn senses a presence in his lair. You, you're not supposed to be here. Nice to see you too, Al, says Mark. I'm here because we have a problem. We both do. And I thought you'd be resting and I heard about your accounting. where said, you got your ass when we got knocked out. It's almost like you don't rest during that. That's how enemies conquer their opponents. But you've been at this far too long to not know that. Look, says Mark, I didn't come here to fight. Then what'd you come here for, says Spawn? To warn you and to help. Sin is just the tip of the iceberg, says Mark. You know that, but you still keep playing your solo game. Solo game, says Spawn? I'm helping the Scorch. That's he, what, what more do you want from me? I want you alive, says Mark. But that won't happen if you keep being a lone wolf. Have you bothered to ask yourself the question, why am I doing it this way, says Spawn? I'm sure you think you have a valid answer to that, Al, but come on, you're not being realistic. So Spawn's like, you haven't the faintest idea of what you're spewing, Mark. I'm the only one capable of handling this. The rest of you are way too green. Mark's like, no, bro, you're wrong, if anything. You're the last person who should be doing this. You're the biggest target, and you keep letting your emotions get in your way. That's a recipe for disaster. You need to trust me, Spawn. And Mark's like, trust you, huh? Yeah, that's right, trust me. Then when were you planning to tell me that you mailed it with medieval spawn? <gasps> Says Mark, you know? Hell yeah, I know. I've been knowing for a while, so save me your lecture about trust. Now get out. Ow! Wait! And Jim Downey comes in, blasts Al Simmons from the back, and he tells him, I've heard enough, Mark. I've told you this wasn't going to work. And step aside, it's back to my original plan. We're doing it my way. So they go in to launch an ambush attack on spawn, and that's where we end this issue okay look i i look I, I like spawn i do i do and do i think this is worth adding to your combo collection of course i do i'm going to be biased about that is this the best issue of spawn no it's not but does it move the story forward maybe not as fast as i would like but you know what four play is four play at the same time the story moves forward i'm looking forward to the next issue as long as you give me a reason in my personal opinion to go into the next issue excited to go into it yo i'm all in for it baby just give me a good cliffhanger but keep the story moving i mean obviously i would like it faster but at the same time hey a story is a story to me my man at the same time i obviously prefer gunslinger spawn and king spawn but i'm okay with the new york strip and to me spawn comic books are new york strip spawn comics are about other people trying to take the throne of hell where king spawn is about yo we want our boy spawn to take the throne of hell i love the intertwining how the stories mix and gel with one another with all that being said before we get into this issue, I'm just going to sum up what happened previously in Spawn. Sin receives word that his way back into hell may not be as difficult as he initially thought, while Spawn receives some uninvited guests at his secret headquarters. Privately, Mark Rosen always believed that they'd always be able to avoid this moment, that Jim's fears would prove unfounded, that Al would come to his senses, and that reason would prevail. But as they ambush Al, they realize this is going to be an all-out war overkill jim dowling and hunt and mark rosa who hasn't yet been immediately spawn or he's not going to be immediately spawn because he's not all the way with this ambush attack jim dowling and the rest of the crew are and they go at it with spawn overkill goes up behind him was like you left me remember you left me to rot or die why and that's a reference to spawn issue 312 which i haven't done a review of which I am getting to it. Yesterday, I did do an upload of Spawn issue number 310. I'm trying to get all the Spawn 300s coming out. But Mark tells Overkill to stop. This isn't what he wants. Spawn takes a chain and whacks Mark Rosen back and gives him a distraction. That slight distraction just cost Jim Downing his edge because remember, they ambushed Spawn without a moment's notice. And now that they're momentarily distracted, oh, this is Spawn's time to shine. You just made a big mistake, says Spawn. Because unlike Mark, Spawn always knew this day would come. He's been betrayed so many times in the past, of course he's prepared himself for this eventuality. And Hunt gives him a haymaker right to the face. Dude, this is a cool pose right there. I might just use that for a thumbnail. We'll see about that. If I don't, it's probably because I picked something more dramatic in this issue. Even worse, he has to listen to Downing justify his betrayal. You brought this onto yourself, Al. I wish Mark was right, that you see what was going on. But we can't keep waiting for you to wake up. There isn't time, and there's too much at stake. Downing, says Spawn. And I believe what, I mean, what they're talking about is Spawn getting too much power for you, power crazy, and it's all out war, and Spawn is just going way off left field. Shut up! up says spawn and he unleashes his chain attack against everyone jim downing overkill and hunt what was your plan says spawn to take me out so you can shut down heaven and hell you think you could do that better than without me they'll wipe you and right away spawn realizes something imposing is coming up behind him 
and it's Psygor, and he's like, come on, not you too, Psygor. And guess what? The beast, Psygor, doesn't show any remembrance or any memory of Spawn. He doesn't recognize him. It's because a distinct frequency has been triggered that is literally throwing the mech monster in into a blind rage. Boom! Clobbers him. Is it done, says Haunt. Yeah, it's done, Jim Dowling says. Let's get the hell out of here. I think we made our point to Spawn as Spawn blacks out and he's unconscious. Meanwhile, on Omega Island, these two guards are just shooting the shit about Leo should be part of the team. You know, just kind of typical soldier's car, just talking shit. They don't want Leo as part of it and they're making fun of him. But what happens is they hear something in the woods and the air fills with the hiss of hundreds of screaming objects. And those objects are the first stage of their attack. Bats, bats attack them, neutralize most of the island sentries. So far, resistance has been minimal and they don't know how to fight that back. So I believe it's Cataclysm telling him in the monologue, we expect alarm soon, but should still be able to breach the forces out of perimeter before Clown has time to properly mobilize its forces. Remember in the previous issue, Cataclysm, Cataclysm tells Sin there's another way to get to hell without the effects of the dead zones because Spawn's not gonna open them for nobody at this point. But Omega Mylan has another way to get in according to Cataclysm. Well done, Blood. This is a good start. Because that was Blood that caught that at least all the you know the bats to attack. Now, Cataclysm, your information has proven accurate so far. It's time to prove your worth. So, okay, Cataclysm, like, okay, of course. You know, we're in, once we're inside Clown's Forces, I'll be able to lead you where the fissure is so you can go back to hell and do your thing. So Jim Downing and gang get back to base and Overkill is instructed to bring Spawn into the next room. So Han's like, what do you want the rest of us to do? Well, Mark needs some medical assistance, says Jim Downing. Make sure he gets what he needs. His health is imperative. What about you, says Hans? I need to get a word out that all of us here is we're united. We can't let them have any idea there's a division. Spawn still has to be an imagined threat to them. Jim Downing has some work to do, right? Back to Omega Island, Cataclysm is like we're almost at Clown personal forces is up ahead. Sin goes to work. Having spent months in clown service, Cataclysm was able to brief Sin about his former master soldiers, detailing both their strengths and weaknesses. And Sin is having a ball just taking them out one by one. It ain't nothing, man. It's just cake. It's easy to me. In another circumstance, each of these recruits would be a formidable foe of their own. Against Sin, they're nothing more than just a momentary obstacle. However, he gets clobbered in the face by the side and Sin's like, yo, I wasn't expecting that, but now that I know what I'm expecting, it's just a little tickle. One weapon in Clown's arsenal has been underplayed by a Cataclysm and it's Violator. And Sin's like, ah, oh, shit, it's about to go down. You think you're about to take me on? Well, ain't no way, boy. Ain't no way. Boy, ain't no way, boy. <laughs> but before we can get into that, we'll see what happens next. Elsewhere, someone is none too pleased with the direction things are going, and that's Mark. He's immediately asking for Jim. Where's Jim? I need him. What if you tell where the hell's going on? Well, Hans like, if I were you, I'll just slow down. You're not. Well, I'll slow down a second, Mark. You're not in the best shape right now. Well, go fuck yourself. This is what I signed up for. You know, you guys just ambush, attack, spawn without even me giving a chance. And that's what Mark is pissed about. And keep in mind, he hasn't gone into his medieval spawn form yet. So, out of my way, Overkill. I need to talk to Jim. Jim busy, says Overkill. You're kidding, right? He says not to disturb. Not while deal with Simmons. They? Who are they? Asks Mark. Meanwhile, inside of the chambers where Spawn is being held captive, Jim Downing lets Spawn have at it. Last time we spoke, you said you made me Spawn. The question is why? I've been thinking about that. Why would you send your symbiote to me in the first place? You knew I'd gain power from it. Still, you sent it. Trying to figure that out. More curious, you had to know a day like this would come. A day where you wanted someone to stop you. I don't understand how you've been talking about building some grand coalition your army take on in heaven and hell, but you reject every offer when people come to wanting to help you. Why? Mm, says Spawn. You feeling jilted? That's what this is about? No, Al, it isn't. Yes, Jim, it is. And Jim's like, really? This is about your recklessness, putting people in harm's way. Your way of doing things doesn't work anymore. It's why your powers need to be stripped. And Spawn's like, okay, then tell me, Jim. How are you going to stop this war? What about Sin? What are you going to do when he comes hunting for you? Which he will. Hmm, says Jim, you haven't been paying attention, Al. I'm not a hell spot anymore, and I haven't been for a long time. Al was like confused, like, what the hell are you talking about? And this lady pops out, and it's Nyx in a different form. Remember Nyx from issue 300, where she gets murdered? And also that video I uploaded to spawn issue 310. 
Nyx comes up to She Spawn in, in, in her zombie form, and now Nyx is this. So Nyx tells Spawn, Sorry, we need to meet again under such circumstances, Al. But right now, you're the greatest danger to our world, and you need to be stopped. Spawn shatters. It's not her. Not now. No way she's back from the dead without him knowing it. Because remember, Spawn issue 310, he controls the dead, and he was controlling her. This can't be Nyx. And that's where we end this issue. Hey man, one thing that's a 10 out of 10 with this issue is the pacing. The pacing was just smooth, like silk and a toddler's ass. You can't debate that. I don't think you could do the pacing any better with this issue. This issue is also gangster because, dude, it just moves the story forward and you open up with the banger with Spawn getting ambushed and to this. Now you gotta leave me this cliffhanger of a ribeye to now I want the next issue. Damn it, I can't wait another month for this. But hey, dude, I, I thought this issue was gangster and I think you need to add it to your comic book collection. Previously, Spawn has been captured by Jim Downing's new team. Sin has engaged Clown's forces on Omega Island and a surprising return of a former friend. Now, who that former friend is, we shall find out later. We begin this issue with the continuation of what happened in the previous issue. Sin has came back to life and Spawn is in disbelief. And Spawn is thinking, Nyx, are you behind all this? Not by choice, but you haven't really given us any other options out because if you keep heading down this path, you're going to destroy everything. And this is referencing to back in issue Spawn, issue number 300, which we did do a review on. Why did you come back, says Spawn? Because I was murdered, Al. You know better, Al. You take precautions in our line of work. And look at that smirk on our face. It was Kalish Yosha, by the way. He's the one who murdered me, in case you were wondering. Or didn't you care? Did you spend even a second trying to locate my murderer? There wasn't time, says Spawn. You're a soldier, and you fell. That's war. Of course, the war. It's always about the war with you, Spawn. But nothing you've done has actually helped to end it. Has it? In fact, Actually, everything you seem to do is designed to further stoke it. You don't really want to end it, D, because if you did, then you would do it. And Spawn's like, who told you that, Downing? He likes to poison minds. I wouldn't give him too much credence. So you want to be angry with me? Fine, I deserve it. But do it for your own reasons, not his. But also ask yourself, every enemy has been trying to force me to open up the dead zones. How many demons or angels tried bending me to the world? Then ask yourself how they succeeded. Spawn has a really good clap back and a really good point right there. The power to control the dead zones is hidden somewhere you'll never find. If Sin can't beat the location out of me, neither will you. And Nyx is like, we don't need to beat it out of you, Al. We're going to reach into your mind and take it. I wish I hadn't come to this. I remember how happy I was when I heard you come back to life, but now seeing you like this, disappointed. The Al I once knew tried to help people. He wasn't hell bent on bringing the whole world crashing down in a forever war. You're just a husk now. You're wrong about that, says Al. Oh, we'll see, and Nyx's magic freezes Al for a moment. As they enter their Al's mind, they are like, is it, Jim Downing is like, is it work? Did it work? Don't worry, we're in, says Nyx. And Jim Downing's like, that's it? This is his mind? Mm, don't be fooled, Jim. This is probably by design. He wants to make it as difficult as possible. So let's get moving. This is just a surface level we're in. We're going to have to dig a lot deeper to get the information we need. Elsewhere, war rages across Omega Island. Deep in the caverns, far below, there's a fissure, a crack in the fabric of reality, one that can help Sin finally return to hell to claim a throne he's long desired. It's that prize that has brought Sin and his army to invade the shores of Omega Island. But the island's present ruler has no desire to surrender any shred of control to his enemy. Show yourself, clown, says Sin. If I'm so unworthy to you, then stop hiding. Many words can describe clown. Speechless is not one of them. Yet, since their fight began, Sin's opponent hasn't uttered a single word. This is not like him, but it's too late. Sin realizes he's been deceived. Nothing of his old foe still resides inside this mindless beast, and he gets decked in the face. So Clown is watching on the monitor elsewhere, and he's asking what's the latest update, and he gets a report. It's not looking good. Sin's army is closing in on them. We've got a battalion of six circled demons deploying from the east, a group of necrozyles from the west, and barren dispersed forces coming from the north. The most pressing concern is blood his vampires, and blood is the root of all those vampires. They've been advancing rapidly from the south. It won't be long before they're closing in on our doorstep. The good news is reinforcements have started to arrive and there's been some encouraging signs. 
Dakota looking good as hell. I mean, come on, look at that cake. Ah, no! <laughs> okay, well, you know what I mean. With Dakota and her reinforcements being there, it's showing some encouraging signs. The teams are marshalling a strong defense by the cliffs. And as for your companions, those minis, those guys that bit gunslinger spawn in issue number five or six, like, <laughs> anyways, your companions have also been effective to slowing down the vampire's progress. But ultimately, it doesn't change the fact that Sins got us pinned in. We're sustaining heavy casualties. I don't think we could beat them. And Clown is like, we don't need to beat them. We just need to slow them down long enough. And he makes a phone call. So have you found him yet? And Jericho's like, yeah, I found him. I've been digging a lot of digging and, and I tracked him down. When are you going to make contact? Soon. I just want to make sure you definitely need this guy. Yes, Jericho, I do. I need him now, says Clown. And, and for Jericho to have this kind of fear, this brother has to be out of this world imposing. I, I'm curious to know who this guy is. And Clown is like, tell him what I told you exactly. I've got it. You better. And Jericho's like, mm. And Jericho curses himself out because he feels he should have doubled his retainer. He nears his target. And you can tell by the look on his face, he's just like, oh my gosh, I got to tread carefully because my life depends on it. I'm Jericho. I'm hoping you might have time to chat. And this guy closes his fist like, I ain't got no time for this. Look, look, we're all friends here. I'm here on behalf of a mutual friend. We've been keeping an eye on the activities you've been doing. He's got some information he thinks you might be interested in. He just wants me to pass this on to you and then leave it up to you and you deal with it. So please do you have a second to talk. And you could tell like Jericho does not want to be doing this, but whoever this guy is, and all we see is the fist i hope we get a reveal at the end so mark calls jessica and he tells jessica i think i may have made a big mistake never mind it doesn't matter right now i'm going to try and send you my location i need you and the rest of the scorch to get here asap and overkill's like mark what are you doing and is mark compromising this issue so jim downing and nicks are inside the mine to spawn and Jim Down is just walking around like, any luck yet? And Nyx is like, nothing yet? I don't think we're gonna find anything here, but we're getting closer. There has to be an entry point next level somewhere around here. Well, how are you holding up, by the way? I know you and Al were friends, but this can't be easy. Just worry about yourself, Nyx. And based on her facial reaction right there, I think she's going through some disappointments, just to say the very least. Now, she's found something, a weak spot in the ground that she feels that she can create an entrance point to. And Jim Down is like, yo, man, can I help? And she she tells him no I just need some space to construct my spell so she does that and spawns defenses go in and Jim Downing has to force a has to enact a force field damn I hope we get deeper before security kicked in says Nix I can't keep this thing at bay says Jim Downing I'm working as fast as I can says Nix this gets more intense and Jim Downing is losing his position losing his strength and losing the force field that he's holding up follow me says Nix so they go into a portal she creates a portal and they get out of there Al's defenses have improved since since the last time I was alive. Well, we can still enact our plan, right? Says Jim Downing. We can. We just need to be more careful. I doubt that that's the only surprise Al has got for us. It turns out that isn't the only surprise. Something else is lurking and that's gonna go down too. Clown wants a report in and he calls in Jericho. And Jericho tells him, I think my conversation with him took a few years off my life, but it's done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I conveyed everything you wanted word for word and says clown don't worry clown He's on the way and he should be arriving any second now and sin is going to work and laying that smoke on Violet and he knows and Violet is like yo man I don't want this smoke no more and after this fight concludes and sin comes out victorious I know you're watching clown. I hope you're taking notes. Or are you just gonna continue to hide behind your pets? Why won't you face me? I'm just a human crack -hoom. and sin is wondering what the the hell is that coming out from the skies and as this thing braces for superhero landing impact and we come on a reference to Deadpool right then the voice of what just crashed landed speaks it is you Kane I had my doubts but I should have known you'd find a way of surviving all this time and this put fear in Sin's eyes because back in Spawn issue number 331 where we did do the full story of uh, not the full story but it breaks down the history of Sin and Cogs all that story that was the brother he were and Sin was the first murderer he was Cain and his brother was Abel and that's Abel wanting to enact revenge hello brother prepare to die and that's where we end this issue of Spawn issue number 335 dude this issue of Spawn to me it just keeps getting better and better I'm loving that we're getting more details on sin and spawn is taking a little bit of a back seat but at the same time don't worry we want spawn to get the front row seat and do the action delay all the ass weapons out there but this is really interesting really compelling and i'm definitely digging this spawn series link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection
Before we get into the issue, Sin's surprise attack of Omega Island was met by Clown's forces and the sudden appearance of Sin's brother, the Forsaken. The world was still young the last time Sin laid eyes on his brother. Though a millennia has passed since then, he still clearly recalls that fateful day when he, as Cain, crushed in the skull of Abel, forever changing the world. It was the day Sin committed the first murder, going biblical here. Before that, the brothers had been boys who loved each other dearly. Neither could have ever conceived the world they now find themselves in as they go at it back and forth. I love this half panel of Cain and Abel back in the day and now Sin and the Forsaken evolved into today's world. The pain that awaited them, they could not imagine the hate that would one day fill the boy's heart because when these boys grew into men, they became the first human hellspawn and redeemer. And they go at it hard. Ham! Forsaken lays a haymaker on sin. Necroplasm is oozing out of his head. You've no idea how long I waited for this cane. How long I spent wondering when I ever get my revenge. And sin's like, for me, I didn't think about you once. But I'll do a better job at killing you this time. Despite sin's bravado, he knows he's potentially made a fatal miscalculation in coming here. And so does Clown. And Clown was like, hmm. I was hoping he put up more of a challenge because Sin is getting his ass wiped on the floor. Arrogance has always been Sin's downfall. The second he gets a taste of power, he's like a child on a sugar rush. It goes straight to his head. He's thinking he's unstoppable, but look at him. He's leaking necroplasm like a sieve. I actually had to look up what sieve was. You could judge me on that later because I didn't know, but hey, he's, he's, he's getting his butt whipped. He may be able to siphon power from hell spawns, but he can lose it just as fast. So we keep him busy, keep him burning through his energy reserves. Then we gut him like a pig. In this panel right here, Mark has to deal with the tough question asked by Overkill when Mark was making a call for She Spawn in the previous issue asking for help and reinforcements. What are you doing, Mark? Who'd you call? Jim says no messages in or out, says Overkill. Don't worry, Overkill. I was just calling for a pizza because, you know, I'm human and everything and I got to eat, so I was hungry. We're trying to save the world, Mark. Overkill's not buying it. And Overkill tells him the Spawn Master doesn't care about anyone or anything, just himself. We have to stop him, understand? I don't want to hurt you. And he's referring to Spawn. So you need to tell me who you were calling. But in the meantime, while he was doing all that confrontation, Mark's immediately spawn mask is falling him and as soon as it engages and activates he transforms into medieval spawn and he tells him I would have words with you overkill but you need to step away from Mark now or else and you know what forget or else he's just gonna go at it and wax him in the back gets him out the face I told you to want none of the smoke <laughs> So Daniel Kilgore tells Medieval Spawn about time he showed yourself Medieval Spawn, so they're ready to go at it. Not to them, but to, you know, in the base, they want to have some fun, it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. And Medieval Spawn tells him that, you were warned, there might be delays, Kilgore, are you ready to proceed? And Kilgore tells him that his brother, Haunt, is in position, we've been waiting for the right moment. Well, it turns out the right moment is here. I'll deal with these two, let's get some. And so they go at it, but in this panel, this isn't how it was supposed to go down. The plan was for a quick shock and awe attack that would bring Omega Island to its knees. Unexpected obstacles slowed the progress of Sin's army. Though while Clown's forces have, after initial setback, proven more resilient than expected, the prospect of a quick victory has dwindled too. And Blood's associate, maybe second in command, tells her that we're being pushed back into the south and we lost most of the Necrozyles. The sun will be up soon, what should we do Blood? We're getting worked here. And Blood's like, well, give the order to retreat. And Cataclysm is like, no, we need to stay and help Sid. And Blood's like, if your information had been more accurate, we wouldn't be in this freaking mess. Sid overplayed his hand and come here it was an ambitious gamble but it failed if i were you i worry about your own survival and blood flies off with his associates the order is given and in minutes sends already depleted force to shrink even further and Forsaken knocks his ass back in this panel. After you murder me, do you know what happened, Kane? I was one of the first humans let into heaven. So the purifiers can use me as a plaything, testing to see how much pain they can inflict before I broke. Once they found that limit, they brainwashed me into being their lapdog. And now I can finally make all of you pay for what you did to me. It was only by being pulled to this era that I was able to regain control of myself. And says like, man, don't worry, I'll end your suffering right now. Once again, his bravado is overcoming and he's overplaying his hands. And Forsaken's like, you don't get to lord over me no more. You're just the first thing that's going to fall. The rest of heaven will soon be falling you into oblivion. That was one hell of a fight, man. I loved it. In this panel right here, Nyx and Jim Downing are still in Spawn's mind. 
And because where they're at right now in the friendly suburban neighborhood, Jim is like, this can't actually be Al's mind. We can't still be in Spawn's mind because this actually looks normal, which somehow makes it more unnerving because they're used to Spawn and Al Simmons being darker. Nix is like, oh my gosh, they're at Spawn's wedding. It's his wedding the day he married Wanda Blake. And Jim's like, I met her one time back when I first started out as Spawn. And I didn't realize who she was at the time, but my symbiote shared Al's memories with me afterwards. We don't get no editorial notes with that because I don't know what issue that is. But anyways, so Jim tells Nix that she seemed like a good person, but it's strange seeing Al happy. I don't ever think I ever seen him smile. It just makes me sadder to see what he's become now. But this could be a good sign though, because as they approach and keep walking down his memory lane, and these are memories that Al Simmons guards with his life, they must be getting close to where Al keeps the secrets of unlocking the dead zones and controlling the dead zones. And as they keep walking, they believe they're found it because they found 14 graves one for each of the dead zones, each with unique coordinates that Al must have hidden the power to control them in a different location on Earth. So Nick tries to memorize each coordinate, then they can go. They can go back to their, you know, real world outside of Spawn's mind. But in the meantime, Jim disappears and Nick wonders, where the hell are you? So as she goes back into real time and steps out of, outside of Al's mind, Hunt is right there like, okay, take a deep breath and relax for a second. And Nick's like, what the hell are you doing, traitor? I wasn't convinced that you and Jim Downey had my best interest at heart because the only reason why Hunt joined him in the first place because they told him they could find a cure for him but he's like I don't believe it and guess what I knew damn well you guys were gonna have my best interest now I was just proven otherwise so Nix looks at Jim and she wonders what the hell have you guys done to him and spawns like less than he deserves is your little coop over Nix or do I have to and before anything could get started, well, it got started with Cyborg and Medieval Spawn going at it. And Hunt's brother tells him to get up and not to let Nyx escape. And he's like, I'm honest. So as he goes and attracts Nyx and tries to, you know, pin her down to not let her escape, Nyx is like, I won't forget this, you traitor. And she blasts him off. All this fighting is ensuing and it's just right unfolding before Nyx's eyes. Nyx over here says, Jim, we need to disappear. This might be our only shot. We're not going to win this. Not today. Bring you're the only one who knows where he's hidden each dead zone. You need to find them before he moves them again, says Jim. What about the rest of you, says Nix? Oh, uh, we'll be just fine. But go. We'll try buying you as much time as we can. And that's where we end this issue of Spawn Ish number 336. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below. Let me know. I thought this was gangster. I thought this was fun. And seeing Sin and Forsaken go at it, even though it was short-lived and a short fight, I thought it was bloody necroplasmic fun. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection with all that. While Sin's invasion of Omega Island starts to crumble, Al is betrayed by one of the few people he ever considered a friend. So we begin this issue in the past. This event takes place prior to Spawn 333. Medieval Spawn goes up to Spawn in the alleyway while Spawn's handling business. He tells Spawn that he brings him a message, that there's a plot against you. A team led by Jim Downing is being built to move against you, Spawn. He wants the dead zones. He's recruiting more, but so far, his only member is Mark Rosen, whose body I've been using as a host. I'm able to access his memories. Spawn is pissed about this because he trusts Mark, but in previous events, Mark did this for his own reason because he wanted to see what Jim Downing was all about. So Spawn tells Medieval Spawn, find out who else Downing is recruiting. Meanwhile, Spawn goes to Hunt and tells him, hey, remember back then you asked to be useful? Well, here's your chance. If Downing approaches you for whatever reason, I want you to accept this offer. And Hunt's brother in spirit tells him, well, Downing might actually be able to help us find a cure for that poison that's in your suit. And Spawn's like, nah, he's not going to do that. If he was going to do that, you would have joined him by now if that were true. So Hunt is like, why not just call the scores on all this if you're asking us for reinforcements? So Spawn's like, nah, this ain't big enough. Someone else behind Downing is running things, and I need to draw them out in the open by letting myself get caught. You'll be my backup when that happens. And one other thing, Mark Rosen already joined him. So now, Spawn had already known his plan was going to be risky. In preparation though, he tried factoring every potential complication he could think of. The reappearance of Nyx had not been one of them. Her return 
blindsided him and now he risks losing everything. After venturing deep into Spawn's mind, Nyx uncovered the secret locations where Spawn hid the power to control all 14 dead zones scattered around the world. Two minutes ago, Nyx had teleported away, saying that she was going to start unlocking these dead zone locations. And seconds from now, control of these dead zones will be determined as Spawn's group battles Downing's new recruits. And they go at it. And this is a pretty good looking panel right here. Every moment Downing can delay Spawn in pursuing Nyx inches him closer to attaining his ultimate goal, which is to open up the dead zones. Medieval tells Spawn to leave and get out of here. Haunt and I will deal with the things over here. You need to stop Nyx. And Spawn does that. Thousands of miles away, Sin's plan lies in tatters. Bloods, vampires have made up the bulk of his forces. And now without them, the battle has turned into a massacre. Anyone who could have fled has done so already. Those remaining no clown won't take prisoners. And though their efforts are ultimately doomed, they fight with the determination to kill as many foes as they can. This scientist gives a report to Clown. Reports are coming in from across the island. We've retaken the Easter and Clown ain't trying to hear all that. All he wants to know is the latest on Sin and the Forsaken. And all the scientists can tell him is, well, the cameras have been incinerated. We can't locate them. But during their battle, Forsaken tells Sin, you better surrender. And he looks like he has the upper hand. You thought you could take the throne without me? And Sin's like, I did what you would have done, little brother. God favored your offerings over mine. I was jealous, but I never meant to kill you. I've carried that guilt for a millennia. And that was back when, in Spawn issue 331, when Cogs, it was revealed that Cogs was Cain. And Forsaken ain't trying to hear all that. So Sin tells him, look, I don't expect you to change your mind, but before you kill me, I want your forgiveness. And Forsaken's like, you dare? Forgiveness? Not after, thump, or whatever this, <laughs> whatever happens over here. Turns out, Cataclysm shanked him in his neck. You dare touch me, demon? Sin knows there's but a brief window in which to strike. Gathering all the remaining power he's stolen from Spawn and the other hell spawns the last few months, he unleashes it. As he drags his weary body from the ground after knocking Abel a mile across the island, Sin doubts that'll be the last time he sees his brother. He's coming back again. Cataclysm asks him if he's okay, and Sin's like, yo, man, I'm good. So Cataclysm tells him, Blood abandoned us. Without his army, I doubt we'll be able to hold out much longer. And Sin is pissed. He'll pay for this betrayal. Let's focus on reaching the fissure. And it's not far from here, says Cataclysm. Most of Clown's forces are preoccupied with their fighting, and Sin's like, good, that will allow us time to get there first. In the past minute, Spawn has visited 13 of his secret locations, each stop lasting seconds, as he goes about reclaiming the fragments of power he's hidden at each space. The first five locations were untouched, leading him to wonder, did he overestimate Nyx? Then he found out that one has been compromised, then another and another and now he arrives at the final location almost half of the dead zones are no longer under his control this needs to stop Nyx you won't be able to control the dead zones even if you could find a way to unlock them only I can do that not anymore Al says Nyx it's too much power for one person you just won't accept that because I know what's coming they'll all try and enter everyone trapped here and on the other side they all talk about this black beast and that's a reference to Batman Spawn, which we did cover. I'll put the card at the end of this video and also link in description as well. Spawn warns her, you try this, you'll die all over again. Take that as a warning. And that's a reference to Spawn issue number 299 or 300. We definitely cover that at the playlist. And I'll put the playlist of all the Spawn issues we covered in the beginning as well as the current playlist as well. I'm not sure what issue that is, but I believe it's 299, 300, or 301. Something like that. Yeah, what angers Spawn the most is that after all these years, he still allows himself to feel betrayed. Nyx was different. At least she was supposed to be. As she was one of the few that had actually believed him. She goes into the portal. But but she's changed since her resurrection. Spawn wonders if it's really her actions or someone who's influencing Nyx. Her eyes, though, tell him that Nyx is in full control of herself. But in the back of his mind, he knows they're both navigating a life that can take its toll on all of them. Now, as dawn breaks on Omega Island, these clowns found forsaken, but Sin is gone. Clown gives him the order to hunt Sin 
down and make sure he doesn't reach that fissure. And Cataclysm's like, yo, man, I hear Clown's men coming. We need to act quick. And Sin's not worried about it. He knows they'll be in the outer dimension in no time. And after all that, this will mean nothing to them. So they're there. And before I go any further, if you're liking the content so far, you know what to do. Like the video and subscribe to this channel. Here at Rated Comics, we do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. So once they reach the fissure, Sin tells Cataclysm, you've proven your loyalty today. And Sin tells it, and once I sit on the throne of hell, I will ensure that your loyalty is well rewarded. Cloud's forces arrive in the chamber moments later to find the fissure sealed is shut. Sin and Cataclysm have left the world of men far behind by that point. Even after many decades away, Sin still recognizes it immediately. The barren edges of the ninth realm, the furthest point one could be from the throne while still standing in hell. The end of the first leg of Sin's journey. Let's get moving, says Sin. There's still a long way to go. Now in this panel, Haunt and Medieval Spawn give a report to Spawn. Haunt tells him, Downing and the others just bolted once you were gone. And Spawn thinks, well, okay, they, they must have received the signal from Nyx, right? And Spawn's like, well, perhaps so, but what about our deal? You made a deal with me. And Spawn tells him, give me a day or two, we'll reconnect on it. So Medieval Spawn asks Spawn, what plans do you have with the base? And Spawn's like, I'm not sure. It depends whether there's anything worth salvaging. Well, says Medieval Spawn, it may be worth speaking to Mark. He might have information about this place that I don't have access to. Should I manifest him? No, says Spawn. I don't need Mark ever again. If you read the previous issues, Spawn feels betrayed by Mark and he is pissed. So we conclude this issue with Jim Dowling observing that Nyx is angry and don't be so hard on yourself. You took control of half the dead zones and that's huge. And Nyx is like, look, I could have had them all and I should have realized Al would have hit the power in different locations. And Jim tells you, look, man, there's going to be other opportunities to get the rest, but we lost our element of surprise, says Nyx. Maybe, says Jim Downing, but the fact is there's seven less dead zones to worry about and their powers will be more secure here if anyone wants to try to take them. They'll have to fight their way through the green world first. And that's where we end this issue of Spawn, issue number 337. What you guys think of this comic book? Comment below, let me know. Also, link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry lastly don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com if you wish to add any of our really cool rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection they're definitely worth adding to your comic book collection As Spawn declares war, the battle against heaven and hell is taken to another level. And what happens is in the previous issue, Jim Downing and Nyx's attack against Spawn was only partially successful. Nyx has gained control of half the dead zones while Spawn retains the other half. As Nyx takes a walk along the green world, it's one of the great forces in the universe. And since her earliest days of studying magic, she's been entranced by it. Gaia thinks she is trespassing and Gaia tells her that she has no right to be here. Nyx tells her, forgive me Gaia. I mean no disrespect my intrusion is simply me practicing my dream walking and what's your name child tell me your name Carrie Andrews he says no your real name not the one you were given but the one you chosen Nyx my name is Nyx and I wish to serve the green world a guy is like is that so well we do not normally tolerate intruders but you intrigue me and from this moment forward you may commence your training as a maiden of the green world. In time, we will see if you can become more. And that's what happened with her encounter with Gaia. Over the next few years, she set to work on honing her skills, determined to dedicate herself to the green world. It was her connection to the green world that first led her to Al Simmons. And to her, he was one of the most remarkable individuals that she ever met at least when she knew him. He's always been tormented, but she never doubted that Al was trying to do good. And that's to say nothing about how much time she spent learning and furthering her mystical education. And after all, how many can say that they've been transformed into a hell spawn? So when Al died, it was hard for her, but he wasn't the first person she lost. And she wasn't going to sit around mourning her loss. And that was in spawn issue number 185. So she gathered new allies like Jessica Priest. She helped her continue Al's mission of protecting humanity from the forces of heaven and hell. And until one day, Al returned. And rumors have been floating around for some time, but they were confirmed when he appeared on TV. Even though Al seemed a bit different than what she remembered, but not so much and she figured that he had his reasons for not really seeking out to look out for Nyx. But in that moment, she figured, well, when he's ready, he'll reach out to me. 
but it never came to the realization that she was going to get murdered eventually and truth is when cog murdered her in spawn issue 300 or 301 it's one of those two issues like i said you could definitely check out the playlist at the end of this video but my brother needs his watch time so the truth is according to nix while she didn't expect it to be someone close to her that would murder her, it had not been a total surprise. And given the circles that she walked in, she always known that someone would come for her eventually. So she did her best to take the necessary precautions. And she didn't know this would work. So she cast the spell, summon a spell for her resurrection. As she awakens, Stuart greets her good you're awake i must say i've never come across such an intricate spell of resurrection before welcome to the green world i am Stuart. how is your new body so she's like well i feel dizzy and he's like well that's to be expected you remember anything and she's like well i had some information for spawn i called arthur then and it was not arthur he tells her you've been deceived the man you knew as arthur was actually calisiostro a key architect in the chaos currently engulfing earth so she wonders why would calisiostro murder me Stuart tells her we believe he was trying to steal the latent hell spawn power you held and although he failed on an occasion he subsequently succeeded in transforming himself into an incredibly dangerous being known as sin he was a thief says nix and a murderer added steward well should we contact spawn he has a history with calicio show and steward's like i think not that's not what we should do right now and besides spawn is one of the biggest threats to our world well that doesn't make any sense says nix ah forgive me says steward i forget how much time has passed while you were sleeping and since her death from issue 300 or 301 to now the process of creating her new body had taken several months and during that time the world had become a darker and much more dangerous place so they walked for several hours revisiting and recounting everything that had happened since her death so Stuart tells her the green world has not escaped unscathed from this either rotten decay has crept in and i fear we're rapidly approaching to the point of no return so nix is like what is guy doing about all this should i should we speak with her so nick tells him well what is guy doing about all this i need to speak with her and steward's like you will soon but she's presently occupied so nix realizes during her studies she read many stories about the emerald parliament the governing body of the green world that sits under gaia and over the centuries its existence has remained critical to the heartbeat of the green world and in addition to the steward the current incarnation of the parliament consists of the keeper the oracle the builder and the navigator so the keeper tells that we have always tried not to involve ourselves in the wars between heaven and hell, but their endless squabbling over the Denzodes has made that increasingly difficult. In the past, we discreetly sent agents into the world to help keep things under control, even trying to work with Spawn himself. And the keeper continues, the key to de-escalating the new war is for the green world to take control of the dead zones. And Nix is like, well, won't that bring war to the green world? And Stuart's like, only if the others learn we're responsible. We are secretly creating a force to seize away control of the dead zones from spawn with the hope that none of them will find out it was us and if they do you'll all have giant targets on your back says nix well yeah that's true says the steward but those are risks that are worth taking but those involved would have the protection of the green world and could remain here forever if they choose so the keeper makes a proposition to nix our strike force is almost ready, Nix, but there is one critical piece still missing. The steward believes you have the power needed to break into Spawn's mind to gain control of the dead zones. You will heed Green World's call. And Nix is like, okay, I'll do it, but I'll need time to learn the necessary spells, but I'm at your service. Excellent, says the keeper. You have shown yourself to be a loyal maiden, Nix. And I love how all this is coming together before previously in the issues of Spawn, how she showed how her and Jim Downing went into Spawn's mind and gained control of the dead zones. But in this past time, time has come to recognize that dedication. Henceforth, her powers have grown, charged with the responsibility of protecting Greenwell from any who wish to do it harm. And the Keeper tells her, now let me introduce you to the rest of the team. And that's when Jim Downing comes in. And to be honest, when she heard of Jim Downing that she'd be working with Jim Downing, she had her concerns. They never met before, but she kept tabs on him when he was Al's replacement. And what she observed didn't fill her with confidence. But fortunately, over time, Jim has proven himself to her as her and Jim Downing catch up. And the problem was she had heaven and hell hunting her and she had no spawn powers anymore simmons energy though left her with a small bit of necroplasm but that ran out if not for the green world she would have died 
And as Jim gains more trust from Nyx, he tells her that he has something to tell her and it's a bit complicated. While he does believe the green world is their best hope to save the world, they need to be careful. They've been there for months and from what he's seen and what she's seen, it doesn't feel like everyone on the Emerald Parliament is behind this plan. The Oracle and the Navigator lead a faction that's wanting to pursue more hardline tactics that could lead to trauma on Earth. And if they fail to control all the dead zones, he's worried what might happen next. And to Nyx, it was an odd thing for him to say and for him to tell her about that, but still, they joined forces. But by the time she became involved, Jim had already assembled his team already, but one slot was left to be filled, and it was between Mark Rosen, Haunt. So Nyx tells her, I'm not sure Haunt's a good fit, he's kind of a loose cannon. Why don't we try working with Jessica Priest in our cause? She's worked with her, and she's dependable. She's too close to Al, says Jim, we can't do it. What about Mark Rosen, says Nyx? And in addition to Mark Rosen, Jim also recruited Overkill and Saigor, two of Al's undead enforcers. Al may be able to raise the dead, but only Greenware has the power to fully restore things to life. Months before Jim's return, Jim had kidnapped them from Al's base, then used Green World resources to revive them. When Al came to retrieve them, he had no idea he was taking spies back to his base. And she has to admit it, she still didn't believe what has been told about Al. There have been some other explanation that things began to change as she spied on him over those next few months. She barely recognized the man in front of her. There was no one moment that did it. It was more of a steady erosion until one day she realized she lost faith in him and Al went completely off the grid. From then on, she committed herself to fully to the mission while Jim built up their operation she remained in the green world preparing for their eventual attack on spawn and yet she couldn't shake the feeling that something was off something was amiss and she hadn't seen Gaia once she arrived whenever she asked about Gaia and her whereabouts the answer would always be the same Gaia is preoccupied the Emerald Parliament can't assist her in her place and finally it was time to attack and that's referencing a couple issues back and though she spent much time to prepare seeing Al again after so long it was harder than she would imagine but the worst part of it all was after all that time and energy all that sacrifice they failed because they only got half the dead zones and not all of it so when they go back to the parliament they're like you've done very well unfortunately controlling only half the dead zones will not be enough to end this war Stewart tells her we have decided more extreme actions will be needed and Nix is like we can make another attempt to you know get control of the dead zones the other half from spawn and the oracle's like no the decision is final and then Nix is like then i wish to see guy as in my right as a sign of the green world where is she and the steward tells her there have been some significant developments since we have recently learned of you are not aware, but over the centuries, the mother of existence has birthed a number of children, some you already know. God, Satan, Gaia herself, but there are more. Long ago, some of these children rebelled, growing in power to a point where they threatened reality itself. To protect her other creations, the mother had no choice but to seal those children away in other dimensions. We tell you this because we have studied the effects of Spawn's necroplasmic detonation. We initially believed its impact was limited to time. It's now clear it also damaged the dimensional walls that kept the mother's fallen children at bay. This is why Gaia has been absent for so long. She is in the astral planes trying to keep those seals from breaking. They are holding for now, but another event of that magnitude could shatter them completely, and that cannot happen. I believe he's referencing spawn issue number 300. So for now, Gaia is no help to us. So it falls to the Emerald Parliament to act, says the Oracle. If it were up to me, I would simply wipe the universe clean and start over again. But without Gaia, we lack the power to do so on our own. So nevertheless, we will not stand idle any longer. And so the Parliament has decided to abandon the Green World's long-standing position of non-intervention. To end this war, our priority must be to preserve our existence first. Everything else is expendable. And that's going to put Nyx in a compromising situation. And that is the end of this issue of Spawn, issue number 338. What you guys think of that comic book? Comment below, let me know. And I know some people might be feeling like, I don't know how you feel about this, but come on, enough with the Dead Zone story arc already. But I think this takes it to the next level of the battle against between heaven and hell. That's my personal opinion, but I'm with it.
So previously in Spawn 338, we see Nyx's journey from the afterlife to her rebirth at the Scion of the Green World. Meanwhile, Sin continues his journey across Hell. Well, in this panel, we get a picture of the Dead Zones. They were first created to these sites who have played a critical role in the eternal war between Heaven and Hell, enabling both sides to move their operatives around Battleground of Earth. Now, their importance is over a year ago because Spawn closed them all intent on reading Earth of Heaven and Hell on wanted influence an ambitious goal but doomed to fail days ago spawn lost control of over half of the dead zones to nix she has half spawn has the other half before today is out spawn will lose control over the rest of them as the doorways connecting heaven and hell to earth will have been reopened this time permanently okay about time we get something interesting with these damn dead zones and spawn you know but meanwhile on this panel right here haunt is waiting to meet up with spawn and he's like i can't wait i can't wait any longer there's poison in my suit that's killing me where the hell is he and kurt tells dan to relax he'll be here we can't trust him says daniel and he feels he's getting screwed by spawn by all this because he believes that if he were to stay with nix and downing this would have all been sorted by now and he would have had his cure daniel feels that they could use a dead zone stolen by nix and been back from heaven by now and cured and they could have done so without making so many damn enemies and spawn comes in like you're wrong downy and nix were never gonna open any dead zones for you you can't control them and they know that and haunt is like then what are we doing here and where the hell are the dead zones well you're near the edge of one right now says spawn this one's a bit of a longer route than the others but it'll get us into heaven undetected where we retrieve our targets and Hans like targets I thought we we're gonna find the antidote like my antidote to end my sickness and spawns like man there's a weapon capable of neutralizing any one power by necroplasm and sin that lunatic sin is fixated on reclaiming the throne of hell but to do that he needs me to open up the rest of the dead zones first and he's found a way to drain my powers I barely survived our last fight so I need to level the playing field so Hans is like, okay, so let me get this straight. So this trip was going to happen with or without us, right? Yeah, not a problem. And Hans is like, I just remember you talking about the dead zones need to stay shut. Interesting how the rules change when you need something. And Spawn's like, because I make the motherfucking rules, that's why. Now you want my help or not? And Kurt's like, yo, man, we do chill. Like, I don't need y'all fighting right now. And Spawn just snaps his finger, portal opens up, and Spawn's like, good, then let's get moving then. Now in this panel right here, unbeknownst to Spawn, Sin has already bypassed the dead zones, making his way back to hell. So his return hasn't been without complications though, back into hell. Upon Sin and Cataclysm's arrival, they found themselves in the ninth realm, one of the most desolate corners of hell. From there, they dealt with a brutal journey across the Pandemonium Sea, then through the city of Shrieking Glass. Today, after months of traveling, they finally crossed over into the eighth realm, inching themselves closer to the first circle where hell's throne is located yet with each passing moment sin faces a creepy realization that this is not the hell he remembers now we get a little backstory with cataclysm saying this is where his ancestors came from and he learned the true heritage of himself last year his mother that he's ashamed to say has gone native and she forgot her responsibilities to him and sin is like well she's not the first to lose their way it's all too easy to be seduced by life you know and Cataclysm is pissed like she lied to me. All those years, I'll never forgive her for that. If she had her way, I spent my entire life never knowing who I really was. And I'm sorry for my rambling, Cataclysm says to Sin. And Sin's like, yo, man, don't apologize. One of the great tragedies of life is we do not get to choose our families. Her failings are not yours, so don't trip about it. So they arrive to the Tower of Wrath, currently occupied by Lord Barbados. And they look upon that tower and Cataclysm is like, well, won't they stop us from entering? And Sin's like, yes, because they don't know the consequences yet. And Sin's like, hey, guess what? If they do want to find out those consequences, well, they're going to mess around and find out those consequences. So these two soldiers step in and are like, step no further. You are trespassing on the lands of Lord Barbados. Identify yourselves and state your business. And Cataclysm is like, yo, man, this is Cog. You will beg his forgiveness and take us to your master. And they're like, you enter when I allow it, son. Son, my ass. And he impales him and Cataclysm goes to work on him. I'll repeat myself after the other soldier looks in horror. Run to your master and tell him that Cog has returned. That the king of hell wishes to speak to him. 
okay all right we're gonna go back into this void with spawn hunt and daniel kilgore and this is how they're transported in between the dead zones and this art panel right here yo man this is definitely worth the price of the comic book right there this is pretty sick right here so when they go into the dead zones transporting hunt asks him so what are you gonna do about nix and jim downing the dead zones they just took it out for me you're not gonna even want to get it back for them and spawns like man i'll deal with them eventually but right now there's more important issues well, what if they come to you for the rest of the dead zones and spawns like man they're smart so they won't so relax and kurt's like it might be a bit late for asking but is it safe for me going to heaven i mean what if i get stuck there and spawns like yo man that's not how it works if you want to survive this then abandon everything you know about heaven they've been conning humanity from a start okay look as a fellow christian i have my personal opinions about that but for the sake of the storytelling we're gonna get right back into it and haunts like look man i don't give a crap about either i just want a cure that's all and spawns like that's interesting that your powers have been holding up i need to know how hard i can push you on this mission and haunts like look i morph my fist into this blade my powers are fine into the dead zones and haunts like well that's pretty cool that your power still works inside a dead zone who created your suit and haunts like honestly man I don't know and if you check out haunt issue number one on this channel you will see what happened now keep in mind once they enter they come across sandifon when spawn closed all the dead zones he never thought about just how far the impact of his actions would have on others and the horrible choices they would need to make now this is sandifon the first herald of the magisterium now when spawn closed the dead zone 10 of heaven's warriors had the grave misfortune to be passing through it they enter not realizing they never see daylight again trapped in the black void between dimensions the 10 initially try working together to find a way of escaping the prison but as the days and the weeks pass madness quickly spread and they soon turned on each other one by one the warriors fell until only saldafon remained standing and in some ways he may have been the unluckiest and him and spawn and hunt go at it and it's a brutal battle but while the other suffering ended with their deaths he was left in solitude for the past year that isolation shattered the last of his sanity heaven and hell knew this could happen so to prevent either side from gaining an advantage they introduced a failsafe one that prevents any agents from using their powers inside a dead zone fortunately for spawn those restrictions do not apply to hunt he goes into a blade impels him dices and dices him up and that's it tell your mama to save you a plate so that's what hunt's telling that brother right there so with their victory they forged onward and despite what spawn said daniel kilgore still feels a sense of awe when he finally arrives in heaven because remember in haunt issue number one daniel was a priest so even if the sight in front of him bears little semblance to what he studied in the seminary he's pretty much in awe for what he sees and spawns like i'm not sure this looks different from the last time i was here and guess what now that they hear all these heavens robotic angels with looking like scissor wings come in and the lead one tells him i almost pity you hell spawn has hell fallen so far that it would degrade itself by partnering with the hunt now we'll see how this battle comes up hopefully on the next issue okay so back into this panel right here barbados tells him look i apologize for my centric behavior his insolence will be dealt with swiftly and your reappearance cog is a bit of a surprise so forgive me for asking but given that the dead zones are still locked how did you make it back and we know how we made it back spawn 333 baby so cogs like look man that's a matter for another day barbados for now i want to talk about your century why did you know who i was well look it's an unacceptable disgrace but as you understand it's been quite some time since you were last here and cogs like how long has it been oh about 500 years and judging from your expression though i gather the same amount of time has not passed on earth that blame then lies at the feet of whoever closed the dead zones to begin with spawn and cause gets pissed time moves differently down here says lord barbados but recent events completely destabilized the continuum and now it is accelerating faster than ever before so cog asks him the whereabouts of the other people as modi is inkeeper hafiz and lord barbados like look man it's been some time since i heard those names it would be prudent for you to assume most of your old guards are now presumed dead and cog is suspicious like all except you and barbados like look man we all did what we had to do to survive 
and cause like surviving not much more how did you end here exactly and recall you declaring that you'd rather die than reside in the eighth realm of hell and keep in mind there's a whole lot of exposition here but we're going to go through it as best we can so barbados tells him 500 years changed a lot of things old friend new players new alliances and new leaders and don't give me that look you couldn't seriously have expected hell to remain in stasis this whole time even if you only been gone a week it was inevitable others would step in to fill that void and cog's like and you were one of those old friend and Barbados like you do me a disservice my lord i wouldn't dream of such disloyalty but i would remind you be careful who you accuse you'll need me at your sight if you have any hope of navigating this new hierarchy spare me your gloating says cogs just tell me who i'm up against who sits on my throne so Barbados is like well my man that's a complicated question right now but the short answer is that if you want to make any claim to it you'll first need to contend with hell's current ruler cataclysm now i don't know who this brother is cataclysm but that's the ending i was talking about you won't believe who it is because i don't even know who that is but cataclysm that is a definition of major violence ready to happen now i don't know if that's the first appearance of cataclysm i'm sure somebody watching this video knows more about spawn than i do let comment below let me know on this and this is his first appearance and this issue is definitely worth purchasing but i don't know that for sure because i googled him i couldn't find much on the brother previously on spawn spawn and hunt infiltrate heaven and are shocked by what they discover meanwhile urizen begins to assemble his horsemen so in heaven as spawn and and hunt go ham on the on the armies of heaven we get a little monologue of penamu you know, Penamu had received this highest distinction upon graduating by being touted as a possible candidate for squadron leader. And the thing is, when Penamu came of age, he was served in Heaven's army. But he was also part of the generation who enlisted right before the dead zones were locked. And so, he was never given the chance to taste real combat. For as long as he remembers, he hungered for the moment when he'll be able to prove his metal. He'd be able to prove that he can handle all this. But though nothing can prepare you for a battle with a hell spawn. As he flies away and spawns chain gang goes through his ankles and drinks his ass down to the ground. Get over here! Spawn is ready for that smoke and that action. Takes off Penamu's mask and tells him, I'll give you an option. Tell me where you hide your weapons to neutralize a hell spawn and where to find the antidote for Demonsbane poison or else I'll kill you. And then we see this drone looking down on them we don't know if it's what's looking down on them, but something's looking down on them so meanwhile on this panel right here in the wrath of the Tao, the eighth realm carry on a conversation between sin and barbados barbados tells sin to forgive him it was such a long time ago that he can't recall exactly who was the first one to try to take sin's throne and it doesn't really matter though because once the first traders came the floodgates were open and plunged into political crisis that took centuries to resolve i mean every lord with a couple hundred soldiers suddenly felt emboldened to stake a claim to that throne and if they still had to worry about warring with heaven he suspects that things may have been different and turned out differently everyone wants to throw in hell and everyone feels entitled to it but guess what it's a free-for-all but the thing is none of them lasted long but at the height of the war there were still a dozen viable contenders. The problem was none had the numbers or support necessary to secure a decisive lasting victory. And that resulted in an arms race with each side scrambling to create a weapon powerful enough to break the deadlock. Eventually, a young Lord named Dialon Gale won as he stands victorious. Now, politically, Dialon Gale was astute, well fortified, he was also smart enough to ally himself with the Stygian necromancers quite early on to solidify his throne. That alliance resulted in the Cataclysm, a new breed of warrior designed to replace the Hellspawns. And Barbados tells Sin, look, I know your symbiote, you know, the first symbiote, which you were, was your pet creation sin, but you have to admit, the Hellspawns are becoming relic as a new warrior like this is long overdue. So Sin's like, and tell me more about this Cataclysm. Cataclysm, all right? So, the thing with Cataclysm is, many believe he was a simple foot soldier in Dylon's army who volunteered for the Necromancer's experiments. His entry changed the war and helped establish Dylon as the front runner for the throne, but it was never in doubt who was really the driving force. 
emerging from their ranks, he also had the advantage of being a greatly admired by many of his enemies that he took on that deal like, you know, you may be the throne now, but I'm coming for that ass. That's what Cataclysm said. Now, when it came time to launch his own thing, he was able to harness the admiration to devastating effect. Sin tells my brother, yeah, I heard about that. Some accounts claim that he slaughtered over 500 Dyerline loyals himself, and it's because her powers are from Asidia, right? Not that his powers are from Necroplasm or Necroplasmic. Barbados like, yeah, Cataclysm's entire body is infused with Obsidian. That's one area you may be able to find an opening with the other nine Viceroys. You'll need a majority if you want to have any hope of success taking over that throne, Sin. And that won't be easy because Cataclysm has gifted significant powers to each of the Viceroys. Many of them are enjoying their newfound status, Sin, so you're kind of coming in from the bottom, bro. And you're going to be starting from the bottom, but you're not going to go there just like that. So Sin's like, alright, man, tell me, Barbados, how many soldiers are under your command? And Barbados like, yeah, buddy, about 10,000. And you will need every bit of them because you're just going to need it. You know what I mean? And also, if you're asking me for my help, my help here is not just going to be some foregone conclusion. If I'm going to risk Cataclysm's wrath, it needs to be worth my while, says Barbados. And says like, mm. and you know, he's got that side eye like, I don't know, I think I want to mess you over, but let me see what you have in mind first. What do you have in mind? And Barbados is like, I want to be reinstated as the royal saber with dominion over the second and third realms of hell again. And says that's a high price just for 10,000 men. I'll need more than that. And Barbados like, true, but without them, you'll find it difficult to find new recruits. And Sin's like, and tell me, Barbados, what's to stop me from killing you right now and taking your army like it's mine? And Barbados like, in truth, nothing at all, but you have to wonder how that would look to the other eight viceroys. You think they'll take kind to, like, some kind of kindly overt threats? They won't take kind to that kind of action. It's not a good look, alright? And Sin's like, I accept your request. So, Penamu, back in heaven, held out from not telling Spawn anything for a while, but he got his first wing ripped off, and he didn't want to risk that one, so he gave the information that Spawn demanded. And the building Spawn and Hunt needed to infiltrate is called the Forge, where many of the tools and equipment used by God's army are created and stored. So, they sit back and wait back, and Kurt comes back, and he does his recon, and tells him it wasn't as bad as he expected. I mean, he thought it was going to be pretty intense security, but I think I got a route we can all take so they go on and do this infiltration mission so Kurt tells them while they're doing their mission is most of the security seems to be stationed outside he took a look inside there's not nearly as many guards in there so once they're inside they still need to get past a few defense systems but that shouldn't be too much trouble they stored the military equipment across six floors the main access points is on the 10th floor the doors to it can only be opened by one of the senior administrators we'll need him to get our hands on one of them and spawn kidnaps one of the senior administrators so they can fulfill their mission. So once they open the door, they head straight to the storage center. There's two guards outside. We should be able to deal with them easily enough. Hunt goes in and deals with them easily enough. I estimate we should be able to get in and get out in 20 freaking minutes. By the time anyone notices we've been in there, we'll be long gone. Hell to the yeah. They grab their administrator, do their thing. They get into the infirmary and Spawn looks at him like, all right, if you're going to kill me, which weapon of these would you use? And this senior minister is like, I've seen him use that one. They call it the divine judgment. It's been used to kill hundreds like you. That's all I need to know, says Spawn. Now, where do you store your antidotes? Antidote, says him. We don't keep no antidotes here. Han gets pissed because that was the only reason why he went on this freaking mission. The where the hell are those antidotes? Senior minister's like, it's not here. I swell. Chemical weapons were stored here, but that department moved to Purifier Citadel. Spawn's like, then we need to get moving. Just leave him, Han. He's lying. I'm not leaving. And one of the guards like, don't move. And he calls for backup to his location immediately. Han takes care of him, knocks him out down for the count. And Spawn's like, you know, we've delayed this shit long enough. It's time to go. Now the senior minister that goes in, defends the kingdom's honor, but he, uh, yeah, it's not gonna happen, bro. Sorry about that. Maybe the next afterlife. So the bullhorn in heaven's throne talks about, look, attention, we're under attack, and we all available personnel head to the 10th floor, and they dip out, and they gotta get out. So while Spawn, Haunt, and Daniel Kirk go into the city's outside boundaries, Rapture wants to know, walking through, and how did they breach the facility in the first place? Could they be spies that were trapped here when the dead zones were closed and this guy is like we can't rule that out but i'll be surprised if someone had been here the entire time without us realizing but we have to apprehend them and see what it's all about additionally 
this angel tells them, this uh, robot angel or whatnot, that they discover remains of an entire portal that were killed near one of the dead zone sites. They believe this is how the intruders arrived in heaven. And Raptor's like, are you certain that there was a haunt that was with the hell spawn in heaven? And this guy's like, yes, Raptor, yes. Wonderful, that that means we've already won. Send the order to dispatch the teams to each of the dead zone sites. Tell them this is priority one initiative. He has that grin in his face, and I don't know what the hell this is gonna be all about, but if they already won in their heads, this book is only getting better and better. So in this hideout, and Hans is pissed, because Hans is like, look, man, we had a deal. The deal was I was supposed to go to heaven with you and get my ad until now they're BSing me. And Spawn's like, look, man, I'll honor that, but right now things are too risky. Heaven knows we're here. They'll be hunting for us. And us getting back to any dead zones will be a struggle right now. So we have to wait here and try again later when things calm down. And Hans, I don't have that kind of freaking time. My body's shutting down. And the thing is, you're going to get what you want and just the hell with me, man. That's not how it works, bro. So Hans' body suddenly convulses as they check in on Hans to see what's going on. This voice off panel is like, I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for this day. Now tell me, which of you is responsible for trapping me in this cesspool? I don't know what the heck that point of the drone is. I wonder if the point of that drone in the beginning of this issue. I read some spawn, but I don't know who that is. If you guys know who this character is at the end of this video, comment below, let me know. Previously on Spawn, Spawn and Hunt continue to make their way through heaven in search of a cure for the poison cursing through Hunt's body. So now Spawn gets confronted by Korvox, and this begins exactly where we left off in the last issue. And Korvox is pissed and looks at Spawn like, because of you, I've been stuck here since you sealed the dead zones, but you're gonna help change all of that. And Spawn and Corvax have a stare off like, is that right? And yes, and if you do, I'll get you into the Purifier Citadel. And Spawn's like, and you know about that? Oh yeah, I do, says Corvax. And you should know, the only reason Heaven's Army hasn't found out about you already, that you guys are here, is because I've been throwing them off your set. So Corvax is like, so I'll make you an offer. I'll take you into the Citadel, you help me leave this place. And Spawn's like, I don't know what that's got to do with me, man. I'm just looking for a cure for someone who's been poisoned. And he's like, and I know they're hiding that cure inside that citadel, and I'll take you there. And Spawn's like, they give me what I want, and I'll do what you need. And then he just gets pissed. Like, why are you getting so pissed? Now you have yourself a deal. Corvus like, did it ever occur to you that when you close the dead zones, you'd be trapping people on both sides of it? You have no idea how much heaven has butchered people because of that. And Spawn's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because heaven and hell got along already as it was before that. Don't blame me for your shit. You made your own mess. And you know, when you speak truth like that, People can't handle the truth like that, so Corvux goes off on Spawn, decks him. And you know, when you when you tell the truth like that, people react angrily, which is why Spawn takes the offense whenever possible, but instead, they let their rage guide him. And at times, that rage also blinds him. So Hunt uses an ectoplasm to deck Corvox behind the head like come on now enough have you forgotten where we're at spawns like wait a minute your powers hunt you said you had them under control I do most of the time and Hans like I do most of the time but recently I've been having blackouts and they're getting worse you wouldn't have brought me along if I told you that if you knew that I need that cure and I'm not letting that poison kill me so you want to leave fine I'm staying until I find that cure and spawns like okay well let's get on it then Corvox you lead the way so meanwhile in the infernal keep Located in the heart of the first realm, it houses a throne of hell and serves as the resident of hell's new ruler, Cataclysm. And he's having a sparring match with his demons, and you can tell with this sparring match, he's just, we just get a taste of how brutal and savage this guy really is. His servants, he spars with the servants like that, maybe he can resurrect their life, but he's definitely going to work on them. And his son comes into the room, father, we've got a serious problem. What is it, Avaron? Kalisiostro, he's returned, and I believe he's marshaling an army to unseat you. He calls himself Sin now, and according to our informants, he's secretly trying to recruit a majority of the Viceroys. They're offering the Viceroys double their current territory in exchange for their support. And Cataclysm's like, okay, is that working? And apparently, yes. So far, they secure Lita's backing in the ninth realm, and also Zerat's backing in the sixth realm. And Cataclysm is like, well, Lita and Zerna have always been weak links, 
and in their positions i'll do the same so it's not cool but i can understand why they're doing it because they're weaklings but he's not doing it on his own who's advising him says cataclysm barbados has joined his council ah of course father we need to deal with this rebellion while it's still in its infancy but if you don't act quickly it'll spill out all across the nine realms and what if they uncover the real truth about the throne i don't know what that means but now that's just giving me a reason to read further issues to spawn not that i needed it but yeah now i want more i want more very well says cataclysm if the old man wants to be put out of his misery we shall oblige find out who they're approaching then take a small force and deal with it and before you kill sin find out how he was able to return because remember the dead zones are still shut so Hunt asked Korvox, I'm curious, how'd you get here in the first place? I came as a part of an exploratory research study. Studying what? The afterlife, says Hunt? Yes, this one. But this is one of many afterlives I've visited. Learning about them will hopefully prevent me from being permanently trapped in any of them. Unlike so many others who let their ignorance seal their fates. I don't expect you to understand that, but for me to be stuck in one place for too long could be torturous. And Kurt tells Jay, who cares about this guy? We need to do that antidote. And Hans like, I know, I know. So Korvox continues, there were quite a few spies from hell and green world stranded here. Then Heaven's army came, hunted all of them down over time. And he believes he's the last of them to be left. So Spawn's like, well, this heaven, everything looks different from what I remember. And Korvox is like, well, you could thank the purifiers for that. From what I gathered, They've been heaven's torture experts and mad scientists since the dawn of time, using the disruption created from the dead zone's closures to launch a coup and seize control of everything from themselves. Their leader, Rapture, is a zealot. So Hans like, okay, sorry to interrupt your little storytelling, but what the heck is that? It's our transportation into the Citadel. When we were initially stranded here, a group of us spent months attempting to build a teleporter so we can escape if we needed. But it wasn't able to overcome the locked dead zones at the time. It did, however, provide us with a way of hacking into Heaven's transportation network. Now, with this, we can bypass Heaven's securities and deposit ourselves straight into the heart of the Citadel. So let's go. So as they get rid of the transport, these scientists are reading readings from the manipulations of the dead zones, and they're just doing their research, but out of nowhere, well, they go into the Citadel and they unleash a brutal attack. Blood, guts, quick and swift, they're done with it. Let's get on with it, says Spawn. We did our job on this part. So outside of these angels, these robot angels are like, good news, my lord. We've done numerous checks and there's no doubt that the dead zones are beginning to reopen. We estimate that this will happen within the hour. And the guy is like, the leader of the troops, like, well, then let's ready the troops. We can assume our enemies are unaware that this is happening. We need to press our events advantage while we have it before our enemies become aware of our actions invasion forces my lord are standing by each dead zone once they're open we can begin so now we go back to the tower of screams it's occupied by lord vantis viceroy of the third realm and he greets barbados and sin and he tells him it's nice to hear from you guys i've been hoping for an opportunity like this i've always had concerns cataclysm could lead us but until now we've lacked a viable alternative but excuse my manners let's break some food and have some wine and talk about this over food and wine you know and barbados like thanks but sin and i would prefer to get down to our business first and out of nowhere and what business might that be and that's Avaron, cataclysm's son you're aware hell already has its king and Bar Barbados is shocked. Is he one of yours? Apologies, Barbados. He knows not what we. And he just gets his neck snapped in half before he can even finish his sentence. Your betrayal wasn't a surprise to us, Barbados. Your corpse will hang as a warning to your replacement. And since it's like mm, staring him down, eyeing him up and down, like I think I could take this guy. Cataclysm son's like, what are you looking at, old man? Bow your head. I'm Avaron, first son of Cataclysm. So your father is cowering behind his son? And all these demons are shocked like, yo, man, that's the boss's son. Like, you talking to him like that? You must not know what he is. But then again, Avaron is like, my father, the one true king, fears no one. You're just not worthy enough to garner his personal attention, but do not worry though. I'm more than willing to make sure your presence never bothers my father again, and he goes in for the attack. And that's how we end this review of Spawn, issue number 341. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. I don't know what kind of fight this is going to be, but I personally think obviously Sid's going to survive because I want to see him take down or go at it with 
Cataclysm. And Cataclysm first appeared in Spawn issue number 339. That's his first appearance. So if you guys are a key issue collector, think about adding Spawn 339 to your personal collection. And if this is your first time watching this channel, check out our playlist at the end of this video where we cover the history of Spawn issues number 296 and 297 all the way up to its current run of Spawn as it is now. Links in description if you wish to add Spawn or some of our other rated comments exclusive to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Previously on Spawn, Hunt and Spawn infiltrate the science labs of heaven in search of a cure for Hunt sickness. So back into the green world about three hours ago, the navigator heard they were discussing parliamentary matters when she, Nyx, fell into some kind of weird trance. And Jim Downey's like, man, is she okay? And they're like, wait a minute, you know, it's too dangerous to disturb her in this state. So wait, but their wait isn't long. So when Nyx comes out of the trance, Jim Downey asks if she's okay. She's like, I'm fine, but the dead zones aren't. Giving us a foreshadowing what's happening right now. The dead zones, they've been opened, and the rage from those who've been waiting so long, they're out of control. Hell, near the Tower of the Screams, factions have already been chosen. Sin, Barbados, they're all going to work as they unleash work because Sin wants the throne of hell and he wants to rule it. But right now, Cataclysm has that throne right now. But enemies have been targeted, it's going down. Barbados, who is Sin's advisor, because you tried to blackmail him earlier about, you know, you need my alliance and you need my allegiance to get the army you need to take on Cataclysm. He gets impaled to the back by Cataclysm son, Averon. And Averon's like, nah, bro, were you trying to escape? You haven't earned my mercy. Barbados begs him to stop. But guess what? He gets saved by Sin as Averon gets blasted in the back by Sin, formerly known as Kalisiostro. So your father must think very little of you to send you here to die today, says Sin. And Averon's like, nah, man, you're the dead man, Sin. Did you even notice the importance of this place? It's history, says Sin. He effortlessly takes him out, claps back at him, and pummels him to the ground. And Sin's like, let me educate you. Several miles from here is the site of what was once the largest necroplasm reservoir in hell. A reservoir that for centuries provided enough necroplasm to power every hell spawn in hell's army. But that extraction process was also releasing necro particles into the air that contaminated much of the third realm. And even though the reservoir is now dry, the air is still filled with its residue. Alright, a residue I've been absorbing since the moment I arrived here. And he punches him through the chest, invincible style. I mean, even though Invincible is the image comic, yo, you gotta appreciate the artistry right there. Barbados gets up limping. Well done, my lord, Sin. I don't know who betrayed us or who ratted us out to Avron, but I swear to you, I'm gonna root them out. And Sin's like, nah, you're wounded. And Barbados like, yeah, I've seen better days, but don't worry, I'll be all better once the medic arrives. Well, tragic for you, says Sin. He won't arrive in time. Your sacrifice won't have been in vain, though. Though I suspect Avron's assassination of you and Vantis should help convince the wavering viceroys to join my side. You should have never tried to blackmail me earlier, Barbados. Now that head is mine. I wish we had an editor's notes on what issue he's referring to, but yeah, Barbados is like, you need my help. And if you try to kill me now, which you could, nah, bruh, you're gonna need my help for this. But Sin is like, nah, man, I don't need you for this. I want to be the only one. So meanwhile, in heaven, the Purifier Citadel, Korvox finally completed synthesizing the antidote for Hunt. And Hunt's like, are you sure this is going to work? This is going to cure me? Well, relatively, says Korvox, but I noticed something strange while downloading the Citadel database. It seems Demon's Bane poison isn't fatal as he injects him. What, says Hunt? Yeah, it makes his target delirious, weak. It severely weakens him, but it doesn't kill him. Well, why would someone infect him with something like that, says Hunt. And this angel who got hurt in the battle that ensued, or that happened before, tells him, you have no idea what you've done by coming here today. <sighs> says Spawn, he's trying to stay alive, just buying some time. Maybe, but this was all planned. You were fools. You were lured here to open the dead zones. And Spawn's like, when I leave, I'm locking them again, so don't worry about it, bruh. Too late, says the angel. They're unlocked for good, says the angel. You can't undo that. And we've been limited in the number of warriors we could send through that before. But by coming here, you've permanently destabilized them. 
given us the power to finally be able to launch a full-scale invasion into hell. There wasn't a bridge between our two domains before. There is now in all this war between heaven and hell. Angels from heaven are going into hell and unleashing war and battle. This is brutal right here and I'm loving it. And at this very moment, a staggering buildup of warriors are pouring through every dead zone. They're able to bypass Earth altogether, sending our entire forces directly into hell to begin their ambush. So the angel puts the dagger in the back of Spawn. We have you to thank for that. So Korvox uses his drone in the sky. He's like, yep, he's telling the truth. And Spawn gets pissed. How did you do this? Oh, that's the best part, says the angel. It's because of haunt. Hunts are creatures of chaos, abominations that were never supposed to travel through dead zones. But when you brought him through one, a destructive chain reaction went off that was built up until each disrupted each of the dead zones and it messed everything up. That's why he was poisoned. He was needed as bait and you took it. Reverse it now, says Spawn. The dead zones don't belong to you anymore, says the angel. You've lost. Spawn gets pissed and rips in the shreds with his chains. And Spawn has to regroup himself. He's like, I have to close his portals, man. Once again, I have to close the portals again. And I have to leave you here to do that? I will. Han's like, okay, fine, go. Do you have any idea how many lives will be lost because of this? Well, hey, 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 hold up, bro, says Han. Don't pin this on me. You're the one that knows everything. How'd you miss something that big? You know, don't be putting it on me. I don't do it like that. I was just trying to get a cure, but you're Spawn, you know. That's enough, says Korvox. Heaven's forces are on their way, so if you want to get any hope of getting back to Earth, I suggest you join me at the teleport. So back to the war in hell where all these angels are trying to cleanse the universe of hell's existence. Blood spills as each hour passes and both sides are thinning out their ranks. With each fallen warrior being tossed into the abyss for the dam until the day someone attempted to turn the tide. And when he arrives, Sin is pissed. And these angels know, everyone knows, it's about to go down. Sin, formerly known as Kalis Yosha, has amassed too much power a day that will scar hell forever but you know we'll see how this war is going to turn out because this is going to be crazy so by the end of this particular battle casualties had already been reached into the thousands as heaven's forces sweep across the kingdom the battle of the screams as it became known was one of the rare instances when hell succeeded in repelling its invaders death to them all says cataclysm no matter what side the demons have previously vowed loyalty to in this battle all were united by the end for cataclysm's followers the world before the invasion would no longer matter because in times of crisis it had been sin not their king who would come to defend them to protect them very strategizing for sin so after the battle after they had their short but temporary victory but they know their victory is going to be spreading there's going to be more fights to come cataclysm tells sin We've already received messages from support from several local lords looking to join in on our cause. We have the makings of a formidable force with Barbados and Vantage armies now at our disposal. It'll only grow in the coming weeks, says Cataclysm. Good. No point in hiding any longer. Cataclysm already knows our plan, says Sin. And heaven? What about heaven? Does their arrival change things? Nah, says Sin. It complicates matters but I'll find a way to turn it to our advantage. For now, savor today's victory, Cataclysm. Its memory will fortify us for the long, grueling road ahead. Our enemies, we know, will attempt to use everything at their disposal to try to stop us. But rest assured that in the end, each of them, one by one, will fail. At which point, I will take my rightful place on Hell's throne. And though this is a banger of an issue, the way this ended right now, because I don't know what Spawn's gonna do. I don't know what Nyx of the Green World's gonna do. Cataclysm ain't got no army. Sin's about to look like he's about to rise to the top. And everything is just all up in the air and who knows how it's all going to come down and connect the pieces here so this is an amazing story five out of five ten out of ten this is probably one of the best issues of spawn i read in my personal opinion Previously in Spawn, the dead zones are open. Heaven's plan to deceive Spawn has worked, and an all-out war with Hell has begun. So three days, that's how long it's been since the dead zones were reopened. Three days since Heaven launched its invasion upon Hell, taking their eternal war into new unprecedented territory. Now it's also been three days since Spawn's grand plan 
ended in total failure. This is in the previous issue when Spawn and Haunt were in heaven trying to find a cure for Haunt. While most of heaven and hell have been preoccupied with the war, fighting amongst each other, others have decided to take advantage of their newfound freedom and escape to earth and roam and hide in the shadows. Unconcerned about keeping a low profile, existing simply to inflict suffering, eager to make up for lost time, baby, because Spawn opened up them dead zones and his brother wants to go to work. That's behind spawn since his return from heaven he had no time to regroup or rest and so where is spawn in all this for the most part he's getting exhausted and tired spending every waking moment struggling in vain to hold back an avalanche of threats that has been unleashed and this guy from behind decks spawn with the haymaker from behind and he unleashes himself on him and he mocks spawn after he decks him with the haymaker is it true hell spawn did heaven really trick you so easily I faces him to the ground and all spawn could do at this moment like you ain't clapping back at me i'm clapping back at you symbiotic spike through the hand spawn's not about to answer to no one goes to work on him knees him in the face kicks him in the midsection and spawn looks down at him like yeah you clap at me i'm knocking you out what have you done al says off screen what do you want nix what you think? The dad's ones are shut. Now they've been blown wide open. That's what I want. There's a war going on, burning in hell. So what's your point, says Spawn? So Nix is like, cut the crap out. I know you triggered all of this. Why? What happened? And then Spawn's like, well, heaven destabilized the dead zones. But you were there too, and you were not supposed to be in heaven. So what hand did you play in all this? Hey girl, slow your roll. I was looking for a way to neutralize Sin's power since he's running rapid in hell. And all Nick's to do is like, unbelievable, man. All your grandstanding and lecturing about how great the Al Simmons do everything. Do you have any idea what you've done? Is this why you're here, says Spawn? You're just going to taunt me and mess with my vibe? You mess with my sexy. Well, guess what? I'm here to fix your mess, says Nix. It can't be reversed, says Al. And he wonders if at this time he should call a truce with her. But with the dead zones off the table, there's no reason for them to be enemies no more. Well, 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 says the clown. Now isn't this coming? I didn't know that Nix's death would be the reason for you two to create such a heartfelt relationship. I need to mention this to my own family. And this is referencing Gunslinger Spawn 21 through 23, which we did cover Gunslinger Spawn issue 21, 22, and 23 as of the making of this video has not been unleashed yet or released yet. Now, speaking of release, Spawn is his own necroplasmic release to the clown. Because at this point, he was told that the clown has survived. He killed his wife, Wanda. And he's also the reason Spawn inadvertently created a time rip causing chaos throughout the time metrics. And that's in Spawn issue 300 and 301, which we gladly covered on this channel. And those were gangster moments between the clown and Spawn. But since his transformation to a now formidable size, Clown's physical prowess has increased a hundredfold as he laid another haymaker on Spawn. So he tells Nyx, I'm only here to talk. Al has always been a bit reactive when it comes to me, but I think you both would want to hear what I have to tell you. It's Sin, it's about Sin. He's back in hell right now, gathering himself an army intent on taking over the throne. And Spawn's like, well, who's resisting him? And Nix is like, well, the zones have only been unlocked for a few days now. He can't gather a size of an army that freaking quickly. Oh, he's been there a lot longer than a few days. And who's resisting him? Well, he's not giving anyone a chance to do that. He found a fissure underneath Omega Island. That's how he got it, even though the dead zones were locked. A dimensional crack. Sin was able to use it by harnessing the power he stole from you, Al, and other hell spawns. That's given Sin months to get ahead of his enemies. And why are you telling us all this, says Nix? Well, because he'll destroy everything if he succeeds. And as much as I disdain you guys, as much as Al, you disdain me, if you don't find a way to abort Sin's mission, it won't matter how much you hate me. None of us have a choice in the matter. Then what, says Al? We kill him, clear a path for you so you can take the throne? And Clown's like, yeah, I do want the throne. Because the throne of hell should be ran by its own, not humans. So worry about stopping me after we're done with Sin. So why don't we just deal with the reality that's staring at us right now? Deal with Sin, deal with me later, Spawn. Clown turns around and says, oh, by the way, Nix, you might want to pass this information on to your bosses in the green world. And all Spawn can do is like, what? Green world? 
Oh, she works for them now. You should have known that by now. Her side is involved in this game too, says Clown. Now, I'll leave the two of you to discuss that, but don't spend too much time on it because since hoping that we all fight amongst each other, that way he only has to pick up one of us or two of us so he can go back to his conquering. So, ta-ta. It says Cloud. He didn't say Tata. I just felt fitting. Before Nyx could explain herself to Al, he tells her, I don't want to hear it, Nyx. I'm done with you. And he disappears in the shadows, too. So the war rages on near the infernal cape in hell. And meanwhile, while all this is going on, even though it's been happening for the last few days, they've been all been going at each other. Turns out Cataclysm and his group have found a way to regroup their forces and they've made steady progress driving back their enemies across the kingdom. So they've retaken the regions and all these other parts. And lastly, there is encouraging signs near the Straits of Desolation reports indicate that they may be able to drive Heaven's forces out there if they have the time. So as his advisor tells Cataclysm, however, these are all encouraging signs, but not enough to compensate for the fact that in the last few days, we lost a quarter of the territory to Heaven or Sin's army. And Cataclysm's like, and why was your commission not prepared for this? Well, with respect, King, none of us could have predicted this. We can assess blame later, but it's best to focus on ensuring that we still have the kingdom by month's end. Our most urgent attention is required at the Fangs. We've been able to hold Heaven's army now, and the Fangs is, I'm taking the previous panel we just watched. If we lose to the Fangs, if we lose the Fangs, we lose the war. So connected to that, given the scale of Heaven's threat, there may be time that we may need to consider negotiating a truce with sin. And Cataclysm is like, what are you suggesting? That I go back into my son's murder? Who's trying to steal my throne? You better back up, son. Like, you freaking crazy. And they're like, look, we're not excusing sin's actions, my liege. But the fact remains that right now, hell's forces are splintered and we need to get heaven's warriors up out of here. So if we don't act soon, heaven will overwhelm us. So Cataclysm's like, all right, well, I ain't trying to hear nothing else right now. So begin preparations now. So the thing is, if he really has power of the throne of hell, why hasn't he used that power when that power is known to split the planets in half and just slay all these angels and celestial beings? Well, if all that's true, why hasn't Cataclysm taken it on upon himself to use that power? And that's what Sin is asking Cataclysm. And he's asking, I don't know. Think hard. What's possible reason that for Cataclysm not to use the current and true power of the throne of hell? And Cataclysm is like, oh, because he can't. Yes. And I'll tell you why. Because the substance coursing through Cataclysm's veins, in many ways, Obsidia is a more powerful and potent energy source than Necroplasm. But it has one critical flaw. It isn't native to hell and therefore prevents whoever uses it from accessing the throne's power. So Cataclysm's creator likely chose it that way for an exact reason, hoping it'll be a way to keep Cataclysm at bay, preventing him from trying to take the throne himself. So that's why Cataclysm's been hiding that fact from the people he's controlling. The thing is, ignorance is a powerful tool when used wisely. So remember this, says Sin to Cataclysm. Remember, hell has been closed off for entirety of Cataclysm's reign. Given his presence, he's likely never had to need to demonstrate that throne's power to anyone. So he may call himself the king of hell, but he's only pretending, and soon all of hell will know the truth. So back in Green World, Jim Downey, Cyborg, they've all greet Nick's. We were wondering when you were coming back. And Nix is like, Jim, what's going on? Why is everyone here? Well, we just got some news handed down that you should hear. And Nix is like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I need to speak to the parliament about the situation of hell. It's gotten worse. And they tell her, yeah, they've already made things happen. They've been in deliberations about it for the last few hours, trying to figure it all out. And they've announced a decision, but you know what? You're not gonna like it. And that is the end of this issue, which I believe spawned retreating from Nix it recovers a fatal mistake and I don't know what that fatal mistake is but oh my gosh that's where we end off this issue of spawn issue number 343 what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know Previously in Spawn, the war in hell continues to rage on all sides and Spawn realizes he needs an army of his own. So at 12.53 in midnight, this guy is running away from Gunslinger Spawn and Gunslinger Spawn tells him, yo man, you're slippery, I'll grant you that, but your friend back there, don't think he'd be happy about you leaving him behind like that. And Gunslinger Spawn is looking for some information, he wants to know where McCarver's at. And this guy just tells Gunslinger like, I don't know who he is and I don't know who the hell is at. 
Well, your buddy back there, he's dead, and he says something different, so you better come on with it, boy. That's enough, cowboy, says Spawn off panel. And Gunslinger points his gun at him like, all right, Simmons, I'm busy. What do you need? I got an offer for you, Gunslinger. I'm heading into hell, and I need a team to come with me. I like you to be part of that team. And Gunslinger's like, okay, so we're pals again? That's not exactly how things work. And this is a reference to Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 19, which we did cover on this channel, how Spawn and Gunslinger parted ways and how that turned out. So Gunslinger tells Spawn and kind of claps back at him, like, go talk to your Scorch heroes. And Spawn tells him, but listen, man, these guys you're dealing with, they're nothing compared to what's going on in hell. And if you want to avenge your sister, this might be the best opportunity for you to do that. Ah. Ah, says Gunslinger, now you're trying to appeal to my humanity. How's that? Sin, he's in hell, says Spawn. And Sin, formerly known as Kaliostro, have some history going back like Chiropack, you know? So Spawn tells Gunslinger that he's having an army and he's looking to, you know, take over the throne of hell. And But with the, each amassing of that army, he's getting more powerful. So if he gets to the point where he's able to take over the throne of hell with the army that he's building up, it's game over. Our boy Spawn is smart enough to know that he can't do this thing by himself. Gunslinger's like, okay, so he's not the only one gunning for that throne. Clown's racing there too. He wants that throne. And he said you weren't playing your part in that. But if you can get me to sin, I'll be your soldier under one condition, says Gunslinger. I got to be the one to put the bullet in his head. And this is a reference to Gunslinger Spawn issue number 21 through 23. Even though as of the recording of this video, we haven't covered Gunslinger Spawn issue 23 because it hasn't came out yet. You already know on this channel we will. So in the sixth realm of hell, currently it's under the control of heaven acting as a central command for Heaven's Invasion Force. So this guy gets informed by his commander and he tells him that their intelligence suggests that at this time there's no risk of Cataclysm and Sin forming any alliance. So Cataclysm's army still remains the larger of the two, but with each passing day they're hearing that more and more demons are moving to support Sin. And Sin's army continues to be an ongoing problem in the east as they just keep launching their attacks, attacking their outposts. And guess what? They're winning right now for the dub while heaven's forces are kind of taking the L right now from Sin's side of things. So his commander tells him that he's thinking perhaps they should be focused more on the attention of Sin now. And so they rather focus on Sin and deal with Cataclysm later because Cataclysm is the lesser of the two. So this chief or whoever he is tells this guy that Sin will be dealt with later. For now, we will press forward and grind hell into the ground before they can regroup. Now tell me, how are our efforts at the Fangs progressing? You know, with the Fangs, Gabriel is leading the attack there preparing new assaults you know the fangs will fall in no time and heaven's forces are just going there and the fangs are part of like hell's armies like a division of hell and the way things are going with the fangs they're looking to make their advancements in no time hell will be conquered by heaven in no time but that's good news to the chief now he wants to know about cataclysm and this guy informs him that cataclysm has been cited on the battlefield a testament to hell's increasing desperation and the fangs strategic importance good now we need to take them off the board so the siege of the fangs is day three of this battle and his advisors thinks it's foolish to be here but before he was hell's ruler cataclysm was a soldier and even though his advisors want to fall back because they feel that there's you know their forces are dwindling down nah cataclysm knows the importance of elitist presence on the front lines something that's become even more vital with Sin's rise in power. So there's also another reason. The all-consuming nature of the battle is a welcome distraction from the traumas of the last few weeks. His firstborn son was murdered, butchered by the human now, attempting to steal his throne, Sin. So when you lose your son like that to Sin and you guys are beefing right now, nah, he ain't giving up and he ain't thinking clearly. So it appears in the end, he may likely lose his war, but he doesn't want to think of it like that. So if these are to be his final days, he also wants to take as many of his enemies as he can with them. So back in this panel right here, Spawn is also trying to recruit Hunt. And Hunt's like, come on now, you can't be serious. After that mess that happened a few issues back in heaven? Nah, bruh. And Spawn's like, look, Hunt, this is not about you or me. It's about Earth. And Hunt's like, that's what you said last time, bro. And how did that work for us? So go find you another sucker to do your bidding. And Spawn has to pause, bite his tongue, because he has to grapple to find the white words to say next. And Spawn's like, okay, bro, you're kind of right on this. Excuse me, says Hunt, because this is very uncharacteristic of you. 
I said you're right. I mean, what happened to heaven was my fault. You want to hate my guts for that? Fine, but right now, we need you. And we need you to go to hell or else we're all going to be swept away. And Hans like, I don't know if I'm built for this kind of stuff. I thought that once I found the cure for this thing, that maybe things with myself and this ectoplasm that's all up on me will be normal again. But all this is bullshit. I never asked for any of it. And yet, here I am, says Hunt. And the worst part is, is knowing that nothing's ever going to be normal for me again. So am I angry? You're damn right. I'm freaking angry at everything. But then I think about what those bastards did to those people. I couldn't care less. So guess what? Right now, wrestling with my own thoughts over here. Huh, you got yourself a soldier for this suicide mission. How many soldiers you got right now? And Spawn's like, a few. Okay, well, Hunt's like, well, count me in then. I guess I'm already in. But what about the dead zones? I mean, I thought if I go through the dead zones in the previous issues, it'll screw everything up. And Spawn's like, well, don't even worry about that. They're already destabilized. You can't make things worse than what they already are. Little does he know, Spawn's not giving them the whole truth right now because heaven, hell, dead zones, it's all going down right now. It's Armageddon on its own right there. But Spawn needs Hunt on his side, so he'll tell him whatever lies he needs to to get him on board. So that desperate level of recruiting has been on full display since his recent encounter with Clown and Nyx. Al knows that he has a limited amount of time before he has to get to hell. As it is, both Sin and Clown already have a large head start. Soon, Spawn will need to make up for that lost time, while some who have joined him have converged on this rooftop building in Berlin. So he goes up to Jessica, asks what's the latest. She spawn tells Spawn there's six guards on the inside. You know, the rest is not too extensive. Gunslinger and Soul Crusher are inside and they already got things handled right now. But the building right now, right that we're looking at Spawn, it's just a shell. Designed to the dimensions of the dead zones it's sitting over. So as soon as we step in there, we will have no powers because that's the thing with hell spawns. You go into a dead zone, their powers will be no more. So she spawn asks Spawn, do you know where we'll land once we go through the portal? Hard to tell, realistically, says Spawn. It could drop us anywhere, even in the middle of the battle. But she spawn goes into the calm and Soul Crusher tells She Spawn that they secure the location and She Spawn's like, hang tight. You know, we're still waiting for others to arrive. We're gonna go in there, man. Soul Crusher's like, okay, but Gunsicker Spawn says if you guys are not here in two minutes, he's going through the portal himself. Which, you know, for all we know, Gunsicker Spawn might be going into the middle of the battlefield at this point. But anyway. Anyways, they'll be seen in a second. So day five of the war, the dead now number in the tens of thousands with more to come. So Katagus gets told that, you know, their forces are spread too far and too thin with sinking morale and recruits are getting harder to come by. Heaven's forces will take the fangs with another new advancement. Now the only question is, when will we fall back? We need to focus on surviving in the future. That means getting you out of here before it's too late. No, says Cataclysm, I won't leave my army. So Cataclysm is like, nah, if we lose the fangs, we might as well hand over the entire kingdom of hell over to heaven's leaders and we stay and we just, you know, oh, but my king, they interrupt him. Our entire position is deteriorating. We're out of options here, we have to go. But there's a loud, thunderous sound that happens in the air. Overkill, Saigor, the Green World comes in and they come in and attack. And based on the last issue, there was a decision to be made, but guess what? With that decision, with the Green World, obviously for the first time in millennia, Green World has finally come off the fence and made a choice. And that choice is to help out our side, help out humanity when it was indicated before that they may not even lean towards that. They might just tear it all down and build it up again and more chaos is about to ensue. All while Spawn is trying to figure out how to go to hell and make sure Clown or Sin doesn't get the throne. And that is the end of this issue of Spawn issue number 344. Armageddon Unleashed and Spawn's Eternal War S escalates what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know previously in spawn just when cataclysm feels the war is all but lost a new ally joins him it's a war for the throne of hell the dead zones are open heaven hell all the forces are going in and out like it's nobody's business and they're going all out so three days ago in the green world the Oracle tells Nyx and Jim Downey that none of them are pleased about the circumstances that they're faced with right now. This breaks centuries of neutrality. Green World never intervenes like this. And what they're talking about is heaven want to take over Hell's throne. Sin has a master army. He wants the throne of Hell too. So right now, the likeliest outcome of this war is heaven conquers Hell entirely or that Sin takes over the throne. 
both will be catastrophic for the green world. The throne of hell must be occupied, so Cataclysm is the best of the regretful options, and he's the lesser of the evil right now because their intelligence suggests that he cannot access the throne's addictive powers due to his physiology. And that was referencing a few issues back when Sin knows that Cataclysm cannot access hell's true power because he's not Necroplasm. That's not his origin. It's a different origin. Also, the Oracle knows that Cataclysm can be negotiated with. So Nyx is like, there's got to be another way. There isn't, says the Oracle. And if you two had such concerns about this, perhaps he would have tried harder to prevent it. If you would have taken control over all the dead zones from spawn, they wouldn't be in this position right now. Jim is like, so now they're playing a little blame game going back and forth right now. So Oracle's like, enough. We must act or else Sin will almost certainly take the throne. And if he does, none of us will survive. So right now, protecting the green world is above all else. Nyx and Jim Downey, you guys are the scion of the green world. Now go and do your duty. So now, in present time, all is going out. Nyx is doing her thing. Overkill's doing his thing. Cygor's doing his thing. They're just going all out in hell, annihilating these angels. And one of the commanders tells this guy, hey, you know, this is turning into a slaughter, my lord. We don't have the numbers for this. We need to leave or we'll be trapped here. But before they can give the order, there's some incoming. And that incoming, it's the heap. He goes in, guns blazing, heat blazing, I should say, heat blazing, not heats blazing, heat blazing. Cracks him in the skull. And this guy, Gabriel's like, you filth, prepare to. And he gets blasted in the back. Like, nah, it prepared nothing. So Nyx blasts him in the back and she tells he, good work, keep pushing. So this guy tells Nyx, you should have stayed out of this. We have respected Green World's neutrality. We would have respected it, but you've broken your oath. After hell, we will lay waste to your eternal forest too. Your sacred gardens will burn and every root and branch will be ripped out till nothing remains. So Nyx goes up to Cataclysm and Cataclysm is like, okay, so Green World has finally chosen a side? You must be scared. Nah, says Nyx, you got it all wrong, bro. Scared? You weren't capable of maintaining control of your own kingdom. I'm a scion of Green World. On their behalf, I'm here to offer you our support. Hmm, <laughs> says Cataclysm, and what do your masters want in return? Stability once his war is over with, and Earth is off limits. And Cataclysm's like, great, because I have no interest in Earth. So tell your parliament I accept. So now they take the prisoner from, you know, the Heaven's Angel, and they want to extract every information they can out of him. And Cataclysm tells his people to, you know, set up the accommodations for his new allies. So now Spawn's in the seventh realm, Spawn his team. And due to the Dead Zone's ongoing instability, it's been impossible for Spawn to predict where in hell and the portal would send him and his team. While not ideal, the seventh realm is their starting port. And they have to navigate this surgically to avoid any unnecessary conflict and they have to be slow in the progress well not too damn slow but in hell there's no shortage of threats lurking in the shadows so spawn soldiers know that they won't all be coming back from this encounter some like medieval and redeemer are here out of a sense of duty of honor of others like reaper he's driven by a future destiny Gunslinger Spawn, like many of the other soldiers, is driven simply by self-preservation. Because they all know if this war is lost, they will be nowhere safe to hide. So, but they all blame Spawn about this because they're like, hmm, Spawn, you're barking orders when you're the one that caused all this mess. You allow Nyx and Jim to get access to half the dead zones. You opened up the dead zones and now all this is turning upside down and it's all your fault. Yeah, you know what? It is Spawn's fault. But you know what? They're all here because of one man. Sin, and Sin was formerly known as Calisiostro, but in King Spawn, no, then in Spawn's universe, it showed his transformation, and it showed how it led up to that transformation of Spawn issue 314 through 317, which we did cover that in this channel. And no matter what era they hail from, each hell spawn in this group has had their life blighted by the man once called Cagliostro. And each knows that, for all Spawn's flaws, he remains their best chance at stopping Sin. Because by now, every faction has deployed enough scramblers and enchantments to make any attempt at teleportation impossible, so they gotta walk. So traveling on foot, it takes Spawn's team a week to reach the edge of the Sixth Realm. Two additional days are spent crossing the numbing cold of Leviathan's domain, and they rest up a little bit. But they all question their own sanity. 
So they're riding on this boat, crossing about the, the Hell River, I guess you want to say. And they keep talking about, they keep hearing voices of the people that they know who've died. And Medieval Spawn's like, I forget that this is your first time in Hell, she spawned. Do not worry. These voices are just one of Hell's many tricks to confuse you. At least the voices you hear are friendly. The ones I hear belong to those enemies whose lives I took. Sadly, your own victims will soon be screaming in your head. So they hear a splash out loud. Somebody jumped in the water. It was Soul Crusher. Like Jessica, this is Sergi's first trip to hell too. Several moments ago, from the depths of the swamp, he began hearing a voice calling for help. And that voice was his sister Natasha's voice. And she died months ago in a horrible accident. He knows it can't be real, and yet he continues to swim deeper. So Spawn goes in to rescue him. Sergi's like, nah, don't be coming at me like that. I want to rescue my sister. So he decks Spawn in the face and Spawn decks him with his chains. So even after he regains consciousness, Sergi will continue fighting against his restraints, wanting to return to the swamp. It will take another two hours for his madness to fully pass. Ass. Hell's playing tricks on him, and guess what? That's just the way the game goes, bro. Later, at the edge of heaven, occupied territory. So now they notice that they're resting, that they've created a defensive perimeter stretching miles in either direction. Spawn notices that. And Redeemer's like, can we go around? Nah, says Spawn. That'll take too long. We're already days behind where we need to be. And she spawns like, well, there has to be another way. Can you guys scout ahead? See if there's any kind of gap in the perimeter we can sneak through. Medieval escort them sort them all out come back and report so in the fourth room cataclysm and sin have a conversation and what their conversation is about is sin tells cataclysm do you remember when we met i was convinced you were a spy sent by a clown and that's going back a few issues back in spawn too and cataclysm is like well i hope i've changed your mind about that well that's yet to be determined but you have done well these past few months cataclysm of uniting so many different armies under one banner that was not easy but you did it and i may just have to keep you alive when this is all done though even though sin won't say this out loud sin feels a deep sense of pride having watched this boy develop into a strong capable leader so cataclysm asks him if I may, there's some concern amongst the soldiers about Green World's intervention. Ha <laughs> says Sin, understood, but I'm focused on the future. Tell me, do you know what a World Saber is? And Cataclysm is a no. It's one of the highest positions in the Hellfire Council, responsible for overseeing the entire military of Hell. So Sin tells Cataclysm, when I take the throne, I want you to be my Saber. So in the Infernal Keep, the first realm, Cataclysm is having a meeting with his people. And even though it feels like momentum is in their side right now after their intervention, it's also making him look weak because he has to accept outside help. They don't know that he can't tap into Hell's Throne's full potential power. But you know what? Cataclysm is like, when this is done, no one will care what blade we use to kill the snake. You know what? So it's all good. So his people tell him, well, that's okay, because there's also further good news as well. So Cataclysm is like, what? Another potential ally wishes to speak with us? Or what's going on? Now, back in this panel right here, She Spawn finally knows that Nyx is alive and Nyx is behind all this. Nyx is with the Green World, and she took the Green World side, and Green World took Cataclysm's side to defend the throne of hell. And She Spawn's like, this doesn't make any sense. This is not something that she would do. Not without a good reason. And Spawn's like, I've learned everyone has an agenda she's no different death will do that but if green world gets in our way we treat them the same as heaven and hell hmm says she spawned maybe cataclysm staying in power is the best option for now he's a lesser the evil spawns like mm -mm, we can't let cataclysm take over the throne he won't even last even if they could keep him in power he'd be diminished and his challenges aren't going to stop coming for him until someone whoa then they see something from afar and they got incoming and that incoming impacts on the ground and sergi's like christ almighty and that is the reaper on the ground even though it's been foreshadowed that not all of them are going to make this trip alive and come back alive well we don't know what the threat is but whatever did that to reaper it's about to go down and that is the end of spawn ish number 345 Previously on Spawn, the battle continues to rage across the landscape of Hell as several contenders begin their final approach towards the throne. So we begin this issue in this panel with the narration from the Reaper because in the last issue, Eddie the Reaper was, came down from the sky and made a blazing impact on the ground so now he recounts what happened. It took a few hours but we finally found a path through Heaven's Line just out in the wastelands. Gunslinger Spawn, Medieval, the Freak and Reaper are out there. But on their way back, 
Gunseeker spotted one of them on the horizon. Then more of them came, all coming from different directions until we were all surrounded. And they were not having soldiers, they were definitely from hell. All these brimstones come in. Now they try to fight back, but there was just too many of them, and they were just too skilled for them. It happened so fast, they took down Medieval Spawn and Gunseeker Spawn first. Then the freak as they impale him through the midsection. We never stood a chance. Then suddenly, it was just me left standing against all of them, and I knew if I didn't get out of there in the next few seconds, that was it. I managed to slip past them and just kept flying up out of there. What about medieval gunsticker spawn, says spawn? I'm not sure. I heard one of them say shouting that, you know, not to damage the other hell spawns, you know? Maybe I should have stayed. No, you did the right thing, Eddie. If you stayed, you'd be dead too. So she spawn asked, any idea who attacked him? And spawns like, I'm betting they're sins people because they were hunting for necropasm. Sin's been away hell for such a long time, so now every time he uses his power, he burns through his own necroplasm reserves. There are some natural sources he can tap into within hell, but those will only give him a small fraction of what he needs, and the closer he gets to the infernal keep, the less he'll be able to draw onto them. So he's likely dispatched those acolytes to capture more necroplasm so it could supply him. It's what I would do if I were him. So Spawn's thinking like, you know, military CIA assassin style. So she Spawn's wondering, so if his words could lead us to him, then we could probably follow that path. And Redeemer's like, nah, it's not that simple. I searched the entire attack area. There was no sign of medieval and no sign of Gunstinger Spawn as he brings back the freak injured but i did find the freak can we revive him and spawns like nah i can't not here not here in hell and she spawns like all right then let's get moving if we hurry we might be able to pick up their trail and spawns like no that's not the plan and redeemer is like well i did see another route we can use and what about gunsicker spawn medieval that's what she spawn asks when she's concerned about him no says spawn we need to keep moving and she spawn proposes and let's take a smaller group to search for them while the rest of you guys go ahead no says spawn are you crazy they took down medieval and gunslinger sending another group would be like handing them more prisoners so we're just gonna abandon them says the hunt yeah are their lives worth everyone else's no we waste time going after them then sin gets the throne we got to think of the bigger picture here and she spawns like well i guess the bro is right so let's go find sin nah says raven spawn it's not that easy he's coming from another realm and we don't know which one it is our best bet is to follow the path redeemer saw even if we venture elsewhere you know we take one wrong turn it'll cost us days so if those troops came from sin then we got to follow their trail <laughs> and spawn thinks about it like you know what it makes sense because we are already days behind so let's follow that trail we need to get to the infernal keep sin will expend his energies getting there that's where we hit him i'll bury the freak after that we leave but suspicion grows amongst the group something isn't quite right and they know it you know what and they're wondering okay spawn what the hell are we gonna do and at the end of this issue we will find out what the hell spawn is thinking because it's just crazy how can you keep cataclysm at the throne he doesn't have the power to harness his true powers sin can't have it because it'll be all hell broken loose clown may be the lesser of the evil but you just can't trust clown so in the infernal keep even cataclysm was like why should i listen to you clown because we both want the same thing sin can't sit on the throne we know that <clears throat> then who does said cataclysm anyone but a damn human says the clown i'd have thought that you want it for yourself i can assist you with that i assure you because i'm the one that helped create sin's hell spawn powers in the first place <clears throat> says cataclysm and he's suspicious too i've been informed about you then you know what i'm capable of says the clown here's the reality things have started to improve for you even with the green world backing you up you're still fighting a war on multiple fronts you're smart enough to know you can't keep that up and even if you could get sent out the way you still won't be able to relax not while heaven can just keep pouring reinforcements to the dead zones like that and cataclysm's like well we're on the verge of shutting down those dead zones so relax no not enough for them. I can help with that. You know why? Because heaven made a critical mistake rushing in so quickly. They got so excited busting a high school through that dead zone penetration that they forgot to protect their own backyard. It's why I was able to marshal my own army in the back. So while heaven's destructed in hell, causing you destruction on the front, I got my own armies in the back doing their thing so we can flip this whole thing on them. So you won't be the one who lost hell, but instead you'll be the king who conquered heaven. Mm, says cataclysm okay so if you're gonna provide me an army to invade in the back while heaven is attacking me from the front what do you get out of all this hey 
I get to protect hell. I've been fighting for this place for eons, and you know you just can't trust Clown like that. Hell nah. But Clown tells him, I'm not about to let it fall into heaven's hands or sin's hands. And Cataclysm's like, you know sin? Oh yeah. We go way back like chiropractic. That human scum has been trying to steal power from us for centuries, but I promise I'll die before I let that bastard do that. And once we knock Kevin off balance, you should have a clean shot at him, alright? Hmm, says Cataclysm. Then we should join forces, but under my leadership. Of course, says the clown. And a word of advice, there's a hell spawn running around in hell. Keep your eye on him. A hell spawn, says Cataclysm. I don't worry about those relics, and you know that pisses clown off. Keep me informed of your plans. I'll be in touch. And Forsaken, even though that Sin's brother, Cain and Abel, from way back in those spawn issues in 300, I don't know which one it is, but it definitely goes back. Forsaken asks Clown, do you think he really believes you? Does it matter, says the Clown. He knows he needs me if he wants to stop your brother. We'll keep him around for as long as we need him. Then show Cataclysm what the true power is, and that moment is, he'll be expendable. Forget him. For right now, he's a useful idiot. <laughs> so let's prepare the troops, and we got an evasion to plan. Clown's all happy about that. So over the next few days, war continues to rage on. In response to a Titan attack, Cataclysm forces detonate a Scream Warp, an ancient destructive power swallowing everything in its path. That ensuing explosion leaves no survivors on either side. Now on the east, Heaven's army overwhelms the territory of her lord, one loyal to Cataclysm. To sow further discontent, they string up bodies of the dead for miles, making it appear that Sin was responsible for all those deaths. Now, hundreds of miles north, Green World helps Cataclysm retake three provinces from Sin's troops, bringing the region of Azimuth back under its control. Across Hell's territories are conquered, then reconquered back and forth as thousands are sacrificed, all for the sake of inches. Now, this is only Nyx's second visit to Hell. The first time was long ago when she first met Spawn, and that was to save a soul of a friend. She had stolen a fragment of Spawn's powers, then ventured into this accursed place, not realizing the impact it would have one day on her life. Now, there's no editor notes as to what issue are they talking about, because I didn't get to that issue, but going back to Nyx, she barely recognizes the person she was back then. So Jim Downey goes up to her and says, just got word from one of Cataclysm's guys. He's on his way. Sounds like they're planning for their next big push against Sin. And Nyx is like, we couldn't pull it off forever. And so they ask each other how they're feeling. And before Jason Downey can tell his feeling, off panel, somebody yells, catch him. Now, what are they talking about? It looks like these, <laughs> I don't know, these minions, these demon minions are like, you know, we got a treacherous dog on our hands. So Nyx and Jim go down. They want to know what's going on. This doesn't concern you. He was trying to escape so he could join Sin's army. Well, is that true? No, I just can't do this no more. He wasn't trying to join Sin's army. He just wanted to get out of it. So before they could even hear him out, they silence him up by killing him because they don't want to harbor any traitors. Unfortunately for the commander, this dead soldier is by no means unique. Desertions have been rising steadily with more and more soldiers from all sides trying to find a way out of this suicide mission that they're being sent on. And Nyx knows that this has to end sooner rather than later. Meanwhile in Heaven's spaceship, they're told that Rapture and his groups are telling them whatever they want to hear so they can continue fighting this war. But you know what, then as they're flying and they're all concerned about what's going on and the casualties and the body count rising, they see a spark in the air which looks like to them might be a distress call. So they ask if they should call it in and they're like no let's just make sure it's not a false alarm first. So they exit out the ship. They go down, they see that there's something over there walking, someone's walking up to them. Well, it's not really walking up to them, it's the Redeemer setting his trap. And he thanks him for landing the plane and, you know, rescuing him. So he tells him we were ambushed by some Hell Lords and a fleet of Sycorax. Is there anything these Cretans won't do, they won't resort to? Call the ship, you know, we're the survivors here, thank you for saving us. So these Heaven's Angels tells Poel, you know, we found a survivor, it's the Redeemer. But when Poel realizes it's a trap, Redeemer blasts him with their energy blast and just puts him down for the count. But meanwhile, Redeemer was a distraction from the front and Haunt and Spawn go in from the back. Before he could even talk to them on the intercom, 
Oh, Spawn's like, nah, bro. He can't help you now. Decks him in the face. So they congratulate each other on a heist mission gone successfully because now they're able to go through the rest of Heaven's territory without being spotted. And Jessica Priest is like, ow, I need a word. Not now, says Spawn. No, I need an answer before we go any further. I've been running over what you said before. And this plan of yours, it doesn't add up. It sounds like even if we beat Sin, even if Cataclysm holds on to that throne, that's not going to fix things. There will always be others, Clown and a million like him trying to take control of this place and that throne and earth. It's never going to end. It's going to be a eternal bloodshed. So what are we really doing here, says she, Spawn. You're right, says Spawn. It won't end. I've done everything I can to find another way. I can't figure out a way to not keep Sin out the throne, not keep Clown out the throne, and keep Cataclysm on there. You're right. And the truth is, the only way to ever cure this problem is to put someone else on the throne permanently. And that someone is going to be me. And this is a crazy way to end this issue of Spawn, issue number 346, because one, I, I, I guess it was only eventual that Spawn had to take the throne. And if we go back to Spawn, issue number 175, it was prophesied by Mammon to Al Simmons' ancestor, I don't know if that was his grandfather or his great-great-grandfather, that one day there will be a hell spawn greater than all others who will make this whole world what Job has made Bane. And Job was a person that was the first gunslinger spawn in Spawn issue number 174 or 175 when he decimated the entire town of Bane on a revenge path. And you know what? That's just a little snippet right there. I'll put the link in the description if you want to check out that issue but it was prophesied by mammon that spawn will make the whole world what job made of bane decimated it and now spawn taking the throne of hell that's only going to be one step closer to all that what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know also links in the description if you wish to add this comic book and or some of our other rated comments exclusives to your comic book collection support the art support the industry So previously in Spawn, the battle for the throne is approaching its apex as fighting breaks out across all realms of hell and spills into heaven. So we go back in this flashback untold centuries ago. We did cover this in Spawn issue 323 or 333. It's a backstory Calistiostra as Cain, but now he's on the cross and Violator is just mocking him like, ha ha ha, this is a sight, isn't it? Heard Malboja sent the screaming sisters on you, Cogliostro, but this is worse than I imagined. What do you think would happen after you launched your coup, huh? You think you're just gonna betray him and take the throne of hell for yourself? What well, the good news is, is that tomorrow, Malboja is letting that corpse makers take their turn on you. And word is, they know how to do some really good torture. I mean, essentially, it's a living autopsy. Personally, I'm curious about getting a peek at your brain. I've always wondered how the heck did you get in your head this delusion that you're gonna take the throwing a hell for yourself. I blame Malboja for encouraging this in the first place. He should have never given you that hell spawn symbiote. Uh-uh-uh. I told Malboja, I said humans can handle it, but I can assure you, Cog, as long as I live, you'll never sit upon hell's throne. And now back in today, Cogliosho as Sin is motivated as ever, but he gets some news from his guy Cataclysm, kind of like his second in command. He tells him it's been confirmed, my lord. The past few weeks, Cataclysm and Green World have been secretly building their forces in the regions, and they're flanking either side of us. And Cog's like, how did we miss this? Or Sin's like, how did we miss this? Well, they've been coordinating this for months. They're planning to trap us in the pincer. Green World's forces will be coming from the east, and Cataclysm's forces will be coming from the west, and the attack might come as early as today. Then we move quickly, says Sin, and raided the troops. Divide the troops. I'll take one half. Cataclysm, you lead the other half. All right, so we got to stop them where they are. So now where we left off in the previous issue where Spawn announced that he was going to take the throne of hell for himself. And she spawns like, you can't be doing this. And spawns like, well, there's no other option, Jessica. That's the only way we deal with the problem permanently. Well, is that why you lied to us to lead us here? No, says spawn. And who cares anyway? Stopping sin or a clown from getting to the throne first? That's all that matters. Otherwise, Earth falls. So we just follow you blindly, says Raven spawn. Well, yeah, says Spawn. Otherwise, you might as well join Sin. Keeping me from the throne just leaves it open for him. Then we won't be able to stop him, all right? So Spawn is thinking, I got to do this to take to take them out the equation. I'm the lesser of the evil. 
So Hans has a pretty good question. It's like, I'm confused. What was the point of us going to heaven early? And that was going back a few issues back. I don't recall the issue. But Hans and Spawn did have to go to heaven to get the gun. And that's what Spawn told him. We needed that gun. And that was before the dead zones were reopened. But with Sin having access to vast necroplasm reserves, I don't know if the gun will even be powerful enough to deal with it. And if we could stop Sin, that wouldn't solve the problem. There's always going to be someone clawing to claim the throne. The only way for this to end is for it to be me. And so they all look at Spawn like, I don't know, bro, that's kind of sus. Why should it be you anyway? Because I can control it. Like you control the dead zones. You really think anyone here trusts you with that level of power, says Monolith? You're weak, Simmons. Then you take it, Monolith says Spawn. Or how about you, Raven? How about you, Jessica? How about one of you take it, all right? It doesn't have to be me. Any creature born of hell or marked by hell can sit on the throne. You don't want me, that's fine, but one of you needs to step up and make this sacrifice knowing that damn well you'll never be able to return to your earth or never see anyone that you care about again. So the silence is deafening. They all go quiet. <laughs> Spawn's like, yeah, that's what I thought. This is all a con, Spawn. You want that power for yourself. And Raven unleashes his ravens on Spawn. I want the universe to survive, says Spawn. That's what I want, you coward. And he decks him in the face with his chain. We all want that, says Monolith. And, you know, before this fight breaks out, they're all about to go out and go at each other. But in hindsight, it's only stalling time for them to stop Sin and Clown from taking a throne while they're fighting amongst themselves and not thinking rationally. I mean, how could you? The tensions are rising high here. So Jessica Priest is like, all right, Simmons is right after she blasts her necroplasm to kind of stop them at their tracks. We don't have time for this, all right? We need to stop Sin and right now. Our best chance to do that is to track down those freaking guys who capture gunslinger spawn and medieval spawn al i'm not gonna stand your way but i'll be damned if i'm gonna abandon my teammates anyone who wants to stay is welcome to stay the rest of you we're leaving in two minutes one by one they slip away simmons lets them go he won't beg he's too proud for that the only one who pauses even for a moment is reaper in the end even he turns to help save his teammates so now we go into this attack and he begin in the early hours and and heaven is wondering how did this attack go unnoticed i mean it's more complicated than that and they believe the attack is carried on by the orders of the demon the clown in theory he's aligned with cataclysm but it's known that he harbors his own ambitions for his own for the throne you just have to know that with clown they know that so initially they thought it was either cataclysm or sin to attack him on the east or the west but no it's the clown's army so now heaven wants to send out word that they need to start pulling back and redirecting some of their forces into heaven's directions and rafter's like nah we can't do that that ain't what we're doing and his lieutenants are like we understand the importance of the throne but we're in danger of losing control of this situation well, with all disrespect, says Raptor, you're overreacting. They only made an incursion at the edges of the territory. They're nowhere near the Shining City itself. Nothing more. You're just overreacting. So his lieutenant's like, okay, I'm not asking for a full retreat. We maintain a presence here while reducing our overall forces while hell civil war runs its course. Let them do their thing, but let's reduce our numbers and, re and redirect those forces to us. No, says Raptor. We slow down now. It'll give them time to end their war and have them unite behind one leader. No, we got to keep that attack and keep that foot on the throat. No matter how many lives we lost, we're doing that. So we stayed the course. They may have had the element of surprise, but that won't last. What's more important is pushing forward here and cementing our victory. And these guys are not buying it. They're like, but Rapture, you, got, you ain't listening. No, I said press forward, says Rapture. Do as you're ordered. It's a skirmish. That's it. And then these guys are like, is he out of his freaking mind? He's always been stubborn, but this is just obsessive. If we don't change courses soon, they may not be a home for us to go back to. And the other lieutenant's like, I agree. I'm starting to worry he'll let heaven burn if it meant for him to get the victory down here. Th that's just not how you do it. You can't let heaven burn and get the victory in hell. That makes no freaking sense. So the lieutenant's like, I think it might be time to think about what the feature might look like after Rapture. They want to dethrone his ass. So meanwhile, back to Spawn. Spawn didn't mention it to she, Spawn, or the others, but there was another way to get to the Infernal Keep. A dark route that runs through the underbelly of hell. Though, the lands below, a place most have forsaken long ago. At least, though still with their sanity. Because the immense toll the land below demands of those who attempt to journey through it, eh, well, not many people want to do all that. But as mentioned, Spawn is out of any good options right now. And 
out of allies as he descends into the darkness. So in the Infernal Keep, Cataclysm is asking what's the latest going on with the battlefield. So his lieutenant's like, well, it's still too early, my leech, but what I've heard so far has been encouraging. The Green World has engaged since forces on the outskirts in the First Realm, near the Pestilence Field. And less is known about our own armies and battles, but I wouldn't at this point, it, you know, it wouldn't be cause for any concern. They're doing their thing right now. And, you know, no news is good news. And guess what? We're doing our thing, Cataclysm. So don't worry about it. And what if sin, says Cataclysm, has he been cited? <laughs> nah, not yet, bro. On their way, Jim asked Nyx how she was feeling. And that was in a couple issues back or in the previous issue. I don't recall, but she lied saying that she was fine. She doesn't sleep much anymore. When she does, she dreams images of the moments right before her death, before she was murdered by Sin when he was Cagliostro. Ever since, there's been a growing sense of unease rising in her. Even though there was a chance that she knew or she believed that Sin might go to another battlefield, well, that perhaps could be, you know, she might be facing him for another day, but then again, she might be facing him today as this necropasm beam comes down and guess what? Sin is there and he's ready to go to work. So it's true, he says. I heard rumors that Green World had brought you back. What a waste to have to kill you again as he stands tall and very imposing on her. I was about to say the same thing, says Nyx. Sin allows a tiny smile to cross his face, almost admiring her confidence. However, it was delusional. For Nyx, she as yet has no idea how much this battle will cost her or how many of those standing at her side will meet their ends that day. You got Heap, you got Saigo, you got Overkill, you got Jim Downing and Nick's ready to go to work on Sin or is Sin gonna go to work on them? We will find that out later. But on the other side of hell, for a long time, she has watched from the silence as the world grew darker. When the dead zones finally opened, she took her chance and escaped from heaven, journeying out across the void between the worlds in search of one man. Her name is Wanda Fitzgerald, and she has traveled a long way to speak with Al Simmons. And that story is gonna be continued in King Spawn issue number 27, which does conclude Spawn issue number 347, hell thrown away but the power struggle begins with everybody who's gonna take it who's gonna go down and you know for a possession that great the price of this victory or the price of that possession is gonna have to be very great too i love the how the way this ended and you know on this channel we cover all the spawn comics spawn king spawn gunstick spawn and the scorched link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry Previously in Spawn, the members of the Scorch are taken as prisoners. Jessica Priest and Spawn decide to go their separate ways, each with their own mission and plan to regain control of the throne. So now in the previous issue, we left off with Nyx and her team, Cy Gorg and Jim Downing and Overkill, duking it out with Sin. But she's made a terrible mistake. She's allowed herself to hope. Defeating Sin was going to be monumental challenge. But there was a moment, minutes into her attack, where she started to believe that they might actually have a chance. And then that moment passes because their nightmare begins as Sin begins to take the upper hand. What none knew and what none of them realized is that Sin's powers were constantly evolving as he consumed more and more necroplasm. The Heap learned that lesson firsthand in its last seconds of life as Sin unleashes all of his necroplasm at hand and the Heap just can't handle it. So in the moment of high dramatic despair, Nyx is a hail to the gnaw. I'm about, you about to see these hands. But Nyx hits Sin with everything she has. But the truth is, few things in the universe could stop Sin right now. And that wasn't enough. So <laughs> Nyx gets Molly Wop, just backhanded or something, all the way across the Hellverse. And it's a crushing realization for Nyx. Now Overkill comes in and tries to buy some time. And the thing is, promised reinforcements sent by Cataclysm are still nowhere close enough to help. It'll be too late if they do arrive. Nyx tries to steady herself, but she's feeling way too much pain in her body, and her body is failing, before being blasted into darkness. Now, Sin takes care of Overkill and just puts an end to that, bro. In the road below, Wanda Blake and Spawn reunite, and this is a reference in the editorial notes of King Spawn issue number 29, which comes out next year in January, which you know we will cover on that channel. So now that Wanda and Al Simmons have reunited, 
time moves differently along the road below. Now, while only a few days have passed for Wanda and Al, Al and Wanda have been on its path for months, with no guarantee it won't be years or even decades before they reach their destination. But a selfish part of Spawn would love to stay here forever, just the two of them to rekindle. But Wanda gives Spawn that realization that once you're on that throne, what happens next? And Al's like, well, hopefully I can end this war. Then with its power, bring you back to life. I'm not asking about that, Al. I'm asking what happens to you. And Al's like, well, I have to stay here and rule hell to prevent others from exploiting it. And Wanda's like, there's no way to pass it on to someone else. No, says Spawn. Once someone claims a throne, the only way of removing them is by killing them. But with the throne's power, they won't even get close enough to do that. But the longer you sit on the throne, the more it corrupts you. That's what I've been told. Eh, can you handle it, Spawn? And Al was like, I'll have to. But if you don't, I will. I won't have a choice. And I'm not about to let anyone else claim it. So get off my back. And there it is. The anger. It's always been a part of Al Simmons. But he seems to have less control over it now. And ashamed of that, Spawn is like, look, I'm sorry. There's just no other way to fix this, Wanda. I wish there was. And Wanda coughs. She's like, it's all right. Journeying in this path is brutal for all travelers, but especially for a soul from heaven. Every moment here is agony for her, and it's getting worse. Seeing her in pain is torture for Al. So Al tells her, let's keep it moving. He trusts Wanda's help. But the thing is, it never crosses his mind. She might be here for her own reasons. Maybe we'll get more of that in King Spawn issue 29. So Sin recovers and obviously he recovers because he lays hands on all of them and just tells him, look, man, this is you guys are kids trying to mess with an adult. You know what I mean? So he gets back and he asks his commanders or he asks his people what happened to like his blade. And how about Cataclysm? How did he do? And they're like, "Ooh, <laughs> why you got to ask that question right away? What did you hear me? Well, I'm afraid the battle has not gone as we hope, my lord. So now back to Nix and Jim Downing and the rest of them. She awakens from her dark slumber. She looks to see if Jim is okay. But the Green World doctors tell Nix that his condition is improving. But it's too early to say if he will make a full recovery. We've been told you owe your survivor to a phalanx of our soldiers who swarmed in and kept Sin at bay long enough to get you out of here. And Nix is like, okay, that's cool, but what about the others? I'm afraid you and Jim are the only survivors. No, that can't be. We had a lot of heat down there, says Nix. I need to speak with the Emerald Parliament now. Can you help me with that? No, says the Green World Doctors. You're still recovering. You need to rest. Can it wait till we get back? Get back? No. Look, listen, girl. Like, we sustained a lot of casualties here. And they decided it was best for us to withdraw from this stuff. No. How... We can't walk away, not from Sin. If we walk away, then he wins. The Great World Doctor's like, I'm sorry, but that's the orders we've been given. And we're gonna evacuate in the next few hours. So back to Sin, hordes of these creatures appear in the outskirts of Sin's camps, hours after his return. They're mindless beasts that once they're set on the path, they're gonna do everything they can relentlessly to get there. And after being checked for booby traps by Sin and his crew, they're brought to Sin. He knows what's coming. Cataclysm's force had been far greater than their initial intel had suggested, so survivors from Sin's side reported Cataclysm fought bravely until the very end. But other than Sin himself, no single warrior could have turned the tide. So when they examine the young man's remains, the morticians find evidence of extreme torture while Cataclysm had still been alive. Bones broken, limbs mutilated, it had not been a quick or merciful death and Cataclysm was sending Sin a very stark message and Sin gets pissed. He's like, we're taking the Infernal Keep tonight. Let's go. So now back to Gunslinger Spawn and Medieval Spawn with all these brimstones getting, you know, hauled in this truck. So Gunslinger Spawn's like, how much longer would this take? We're wasting time. And this brimstone's like, if I were you, I wouldn't be in such a hurry. I'd enjoy whatever time we got left wasn't asking you because I'm hunting my own prey. And Gunsicker Spawn, who he's hunting, is the one who helped kill his sister. Sin's name is at the top of his list. Gunsicker Spawn tells him, you guys doing all this, you're saving me the trouble of tracking him down my damn self. But that's if they get to their destination. So gunshots come in. They don't know where the gunshots are coming from. The bullets have been dipped in angel's blood and the scorch, monolith, reaper, redeemer, hunt. And you know, our girl, she spun coming in, ready to lay some hands and throw them blows. And Brimstone's like, we got to get out of here. What's going on out there? So Gunsinker Spawn's like, okay, this is my time to act. And enough of this playing prisoner part. Gets a knife, stabs the guy in the chest, kicks him out the truck, 
we're done here, says Gunslinger Spawn. Time to get out of here. And Medieval Spawn's like, okay, say less. So as they go to work on these fools and they <laughs> tear them up apart, literally, She Spawn asks one of the Brimstones, the Inferno Keep, how much longer till we get there? Soon enough, but who's gonna stop Sin's troops? His final siege has begun. By the time we get there, he'll be on the throne already. Well, at least he's not on the throne now, and we don't stop until he stops us. Don't start none, there won't be none. Well, there's gonna be something. So meanwhile in heaven, it turns out that Clown's invasion of heaven was successful. So one of the angels tells him, please don't do this, the dead zones are too unstable right now. The portals aren't meant to have so many going through at the same time. It could cause irreparable damage. <laughs> you side star this, said Clown. I try to stop them, says the angel. I swear, this will only make things worse. Well, you needn't worry about that because you won't be around for that and just rips his head from where it stands. That's how Clown does it. And the Forsaken is like, look, I brought you here to solve problems, not mess it up. Well, I'll watch your tone if I were you, says the Clown. Given how events are accelerating and since proximity to the throne, there's much ground to make up. So you stay here like a good boy, distract your heavenly brothers, do that and I'll send you a souvenir. Your brother sends head. And that's where we end this issue of the Infernal Showdown and the Clash for Hellstone intensifies and spawn issue number 348. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. What I really find interesting here is how the events of spawn, King spawn, Gunslinger spawn, and the Scorch, even though the Scorch are on Earth right now, about to fight the Viscerator, one of Violators, or the Clown Sisters, it's cool how all this is tying together, and that's a very tough task for Todd McFarlane and gang, but if they do it right, it'll be very, very, very sweet sweet like high school prom night or something so link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection and also don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com to add some really cool limited print rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection Previously in Spawn, the march to the throne has come to an end. The battle rages outside of the keep, and only one can claim its power. So we begin this issue in Hell, the first realm. Nyx is talking to Gaia, and she tells Gaia that this is not the time to retreat. We can win this, we just need more soldiers. Gaia is like, that's out of the question. Everything that's happened, there seems to be no path forward for Cataclysm. They initially invaded Hell to help Cataclysm out because he was the lesser of the evil to take the throne, but there's been too many casualties. And one of the parliaments tells Nyx, listen to her Nyx, even if Sin falls, Clown and Spawn have also been sighted in hell and are almost certainly on their way to the throne. We cannot stop them all. There will soon be a new king in hell. We must prepare ourselves for that reality. So Nyx is like, so we run and hide? That's it? We broke centuries of neutrality for what? Overkill and Cyborg and Heap? They all died for nothing? They died protecting Green World as we will one day. So you know what? They will be given their honor. But for now, it's time to return home. And that is the end of discussion. So Nyx is pissed and one of the other warriors goes up to Nyx and tells her, forgive the intrusion, but we receive word that Sin is marching on the Infernal Keep. And Nyx is like, damn already? Come on, bro has no chill. Well, yeah, unfortunately, he appears to be directing all of his forces at the Keep in a final push. So Heaven's army is also on the move too, Nyx. We believe Sin's actions caught them off guard. So Heaven's armies are attempting to capture the throne before Sin. But what do you want us to do? And Nyx is like, well, tell you what, why don't you assign a party, then take Jim and the other wounded back to the green world. Those who want to leave, they can join Jim and the others. The rest, tell them to prepare. We're heading for the keep. So at the Inferno Keep, a sense of dread has set in, a suffocating awareness that time is running out for everyone. No one is feeling it more acutely than Cataclysm. So one of Cataclysm commanders tells him, hey, you know what, unfortunately our titans failed to halt Sin's progress. They got molly whopped and they got worked. Our commanders are doing their best, but we are spread far too thin to deal with Sin and Heaven. So what remains of Green World's forces will surely arrive here shortly, but on their own, there won't be enough to turn the tide. As I expect, our enemies will reach the keep within two hours or so, give or take. It could even be sooner. From what's being reported, sir? And Cataclysm's like, all right, man, just give it to me straight, bro. Well, Cataclysm's not sending his armies alone. He's coming in, and he's getting his hands dirty. So given everything, I fear there will be no good ending in all this. So, but of course, we still have time to evacuate and evacuate you if we do it quickly. What kind of existence would that be living out eternity as a coward? No. One way or the other, this will end on the battlefield. I ain't going out like no punk. I'm going in. So the general's estimate proves to be optimistic. Sin's army arrives less than an hour later, then rapidly 
one by one, the war's various factions all begin converging on the keep. They're going in as if the throne itself is exerting an almost magnetic pull on all of them, ensuring all will bear witness to the extension of Hell's new ruler. And here we go, Rapture, one of Heaven's armies overlooking it like, yo, man, our aerial assaults are proving to be ineffective. And so his commander comes in like, Rapture, yo, man, we're outmatched. We got to retreat. Never. We press forward. And this bro is like, man, we should have never embarked on this campaign. You'll get us all killed. We turn our back now. There will be another chance to take control of the throne, says Rapture then why don't you get out there and fight with us instead of letting everyone else just die? But before bro can finish his sentence, Raptor's like, man, shut up, bro. We press forward. Reinforcements will be here soon. Clown goes in on that port. Remember from the previous issue? Yeah, he's here now. He's ready for that smoke. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure of that, says Clown. You guys are a bit occupied right now. So despite these long, grueling months in hell, Raptor has always maintained an unshakable belief heaven will ultimately triumph. It's only now as clown soldiers loom over him that his belief begins to falter for the first time as he sees what all his generals have known for weeks. That his campaign is doomed and he has led his army to death and his eventual death as well. So Sin is going to work and he gets called out. Old man, Cataclysm comes in, prepared to die. And Sin's like, uh-huh. So the pretender decides to show his face at last or did you just run out of suns to hide behind? And Cataclysm's like, man, I ain't gonna take all that smoke. Now notice the details in this fight. Sin goes in, decks him. Now Cataclysm decks him in the face with his foot. But every time Sin gets hit from here on out, he sees stars. Stars right there, Sin strikes back. The bro is fighting valiantly and, and you know, I'll give him credit, man. The bro has my respect and street cred. But once he gets hit again, stars. And Sin knows he's outmatched. And Sin tells him, you failed. Look around. Hell's in disarray. With heaven staining our soil, all because of your weakness. And Sin lays down the might and the gauntlet and the hammer on his midsection right there. That's got to crack a rib or two or three. But let's admire that art real quick. But another contender has just arrived. And it's Wanda and Spawn. And Wanda's like, oh my god, man. It's worse than I imagined. Can you still do anything, asked Wanda? Yes, says Spawn. They come here with all that smoke, and I want that smoke. But I don't think there's much time left, or perhaps it's already too late. I have to go, says Spawn. When this is over, I'll come find you. Now, Wanda tells Al to wait, but she whispers a few words to him in private. But moments later, he's gone. Wanda watches him disappear into the slaughter, hoping she hasn't made an enormous mistake. For everyone's sake, Spawn goes to work. But we're going back to Sin and Cataclysm, and Sin's just pissed. He's going to work on him. And he tells Cataclysm, if you truly cared about hell, you'd step aside the moment heaven invaded. Well, Sin gets pissed and he decks him in the face. Your ego has compromised everything and he backhands him. Well, he didn't really backhand him, but he definitely throws him back like, bitch, back off of me. That's why I'm here, says Sin, so I can save hell. Now, being belittled by a human is something Cataclysm won't tolerate. Sin feels exactly the same thing. Enough of this. And he just lays the backbreaker, just like how Bane broke the bat. Well, Sin broke the cataclysm, the cat, meow, without the, anyways, well, that's a silly humor right there, but boy got work, we just, that, that's just facts right there, but Sin picks him up and cataclysm is defeated, and Sin tells him, just rubbing salt to the wound, before I merely plan to hang your corpse up on the keep's walls, but for what you did at cataclysm, you deserve to suffer more, torture for torture, so every day I sit on the throne, I will use its power to bring you and your son back to life. Then every day, you'll watch your son die again and again in the most extreme tortures possible. I will show you how a true king rules. Ooh, man. <laughs> That's like an invincible moment right there. Just penetrating through the midsection. Just like that. Now, Sin picks him up victorious and says the pretender is dead. The throne is mine. All hail Sin, the true king of the throne. Right? So his boys are eager. They're about to go in, but long live the king. Sin goes in, Clown goes in, and Spawn goes in. Now, where do we go from here? In this death match, the Devil's Gambit, Hell's Throne awaits the victor, but who will survive and take the throne? And that's where we end this issue with Spawn, issue number 349.
Previously in Spawn, Spawn has arrived and the final battle for the fate of the throne has begun. Who will take the throne and become the new monarch of hell? So now, the Infernal Keep. Since the dawn of time, the throne of hell has been one of the most powerful objects in the universe. In order to claim it, to wield its extraordinary power, one must either be a creature of hell or one who's been marked by it. Across the realm, many wait to see who will emerge as hell's new ruler. Amongst them is Wanda Fitzgerald, Spawn's former wife. After escaping from heaven, she traveled to hell, hoping to help Spawn on his path to the Infernal Keep. Her role fulfilled, she watches from the sidelines now, hoping she's done enough to turn the tide. And every second she remains in hell causes her excruciating pain, but she knows leaving would be pointless, because if Spawn fails his mission, then nowhere in creation will be safe to exist. She, Spawn, Monolith, and Gang are going in, and she spawns like, we have to find Sin, we need eyes on him now, the rest of this is just a distraction. And Redeemer's like, yo man, they're inside the keep already, Jessica. I did a sweep, there's no sign of Spawn or Clown anywhere, so they gotta be inside. Then we need to move, says she Spawn. Redeemer, gather whoever you can. But before she can finish that, yo, this huge necroplasmic blast just takes off and goes off from the distance and they know, at least they have a really strong indication that they might be too late. Someone has claimed the throne already. But before we get to that answer, 10 minutes earlier, Sin has breached the inner wall. As he closes in on his cherished prized possession that he intends on taking, Hell's Throne, well, you know, everyone comes in to try to get in his way, but Sin easily disposes of them. Get out my way. You know I'm hungry for that throne. We hungry like that. Sin encounters Clown and he's pissed. He's like, of course you're here. You've always deluded yourself that you could do more than you were capable of. I'm surprised you cut up so soon, says Sin. Then blame yourself, says Clown. You see, while you and Cataclysm were having your little squabbling, I did something that none of Hell's rulers have ever done before. I beat in Hell, and that throne is mine. Millennia ago, when mankind was still young, Clown made a promise to Sin that as long as he lived, no Hellspawn will ever sit upon a Hellstone, including Sin. So while they're duking it out, the hatred between these two is really unique. They hate each other with a passion, maybe beyond that. It's outlived entire civilizations, but today, at long last, kinda like when the head cheerleader says yes to you on a prom date, well, their feud is finally about to go down, and Clown goes up and just turns into this monstrosity, he wants some action, he's looking for that smoke. So as he collides his fist to the ground, that temporarily knocks Sin off balance. Clown is like, how sad, after all that work and all your efforts, only to fail at the final step. High above them, unnoticed by either villain, a silent observer is part of this fray. This rotting skull of Malboja. Their former master still watches over their rivalry as he did for thousands of years. He would find it delighted to see the chaos between the two and the destruction that they're causing, all in the name of the throne. They go down, Sin goes in, Clown is attacking, yo man, everything is just going down like that. And then all of a sudden, Sin gets blasted from the back. Why you gotta go from the back like that? Do it from the front. But you know what? In the name of the game, to get the hell's throne ain't no rules just action boss spawn uses a weapon wielded that was forged deep in heaven celestial's furnace the product of countless experimentations on captured soldiers from hell designed specifically to eliminate a necropasm powered hell spawn with a single lethal shot the only problem for spawn is is that sin has the power of an army of hell spawns coursing through him and sin gets up all pissed like yo was that a tickle was that it simmons you have all this time to prepare and that was the best you can do i'll give you credit for getting this far but you'll have to do better than that if you plan on walking out of here and spawns like you're the one that won't be leaving bro let's do this dance before sin left camp this morning one of his lieutenants foolishly remarked that destiny had brought them to this moment for these three behemoths destiny has nothing to do with it though they have brought themselves to this point, each obsessed with achieving their ultimate goal, to stop their enemies' power grab by acquiring Hell's ultimate pinnacle, the throne. Now you just gotta enjoy that artwork, cause you know what? <laughs> it's just a lot of action, this issue. So having dragged themselves across the wastelands of Hell, over the corpses of their enemies, reducing their existence to this one single goal to get the Hell throne, 
and clown scratches sin's face you sin you are never getting to that throne not you or any other damn human and sin blasts his clown and his blast is so powerful that clown is like yo man that was a that was too damn much of a blast man i gotta stay down for a minute and sin's like there's a reason you never ruled hell clown you're trapped in the past a human will sit upon that throne either myself or simmons but under no circumstance will i allow it to be you you aren't built to handle its power. That's a reason your master never put the symbiote on one of his own. He knew a hellborn was incapable of being a master or how to go beyond that. You see? And he puts his hand on his head. I'm a god now. And he rips his head off like a sub-zero fatality. And Spawn's like, oh, hell no. That ain't about to be me right now. Stay down, Simmons. There's no need to die today. Spawn chain goes off and it snaps. And Sin's like, all right, very well then. So he puts him to the ground and he wants to put him out of his misery. He tackles him like Ray Lewis, like an NFL land biker. He knocks him out like Mike Tyson is prime, knocking out them other brothers. But Spawn tries to fight back. And Sin's like, all right, bro, you trying to clap back? We'll see these hands and see that brick pillar too and while spawn is down sin goes up to him and is like this was always going to be the outcome simmons you must have known that you can't beat me you can only make me stronger and sin attempts to suck spawns necroplasmic power for himself to make sin stronger because that's how sin became so damn strong but out of nowhere this blast emerges all sin can do is just watch in horror and he's like hail to the knob but we don't know who it is yet so five minutes ago before all that happened, a voice off panel tells Spawn, you can't do this. I don't care what I have to do. You can't take the throne. I know. That's why I'm here, says Spawn. It's you. You're the one who needs to take it. I don't want it, says a voice off panel. Now, this is a devil you didn't know. It doesn't matter what we want anymore. In the next few minutes, someone's taking it. Unless you step up, it can't be any of the rest of us. And whoever sits on it, their powers multiply. I can't be trusted with that kind of power. So we have a flashback between spawn and wanda and wanda tells al you can't take the throne it'll turn you into something you don't want to become it corrupts everything there has to be someone else and this is where we bring it back to spawn it needs to be you says spawn you understand this world more than any of the others and you have the best chance of resisting the throne's influence al even if i wanted to i can't i'm not from hell oh but you can says al and you want to know why? Because anyone marked by hell can take it. And that is you, Nyx. And the reason why is Nyx was the original she spawn. And she was marked by being a spawn. The first she spawn, that is. And the thing about Nyx and spawn, at least for me reading from issues 300 to now, Nyx and spawn have a complicated relationship. See, in Spawn issue 300 or 301, Nyx was axed and killed by Cogliostro. Spawn didn't bother to investigate that, so when Nyx came back to life, she questioned Spawn about that. And on top of that, Spawn was locking up all the dead zones. That way, heaven and hell could not transport in between. So Nyx was like, why are you doing this? It caused a tension between her, and this is not putting an end to your war, it's actually making it worse. So what Nyx did along with Jim Downing is break into Spawn's mind, and that was back in Spawn issue number 335, to hack the the dead zones and open them up and this is where we lead over many issues back to this so even though spawn wanted nix to take it over their relationship is complicated that's all i got to say so spawn looks and he kind of regrets this or he's feeling very sorry about it and he tells nix and for what it's worth i'm sorry for all of this how did it come to this for a moment nix considers leaving because she doesn't know if she can make that kind of sacrifice so we go back to now, but in the end, she did. This war is over. Hell ends under my control now, and we see a newly improved and way more powerful Nyx. And she looks at Sin, and you have much to answer for, mofo. You dare? Sin's like, hell no, not to you. I wiped the floor with you before. I wiped my ass with you before, and I'm wiping it again. Hell no. Nah. But Nyx is like, oh, hell yeah, baby. Take all that necklace into the head, because it's going to put you to bones on your feet simmons it should have never came to this and simmons like oh crap what do we do now we could have worked together says nix could have found another solution but no one tells the great spawn what to do right except it's the rest of us who must bear the cost of your pride spawn of your arrogance of your mistakes when did you become like them I don't know why it happened but somewhere along the line you lost your way you need to change that soon and because I can see far beyond all of this now and you have no idea what's coming for you so everyone starts to vanish up out of hell and before spawn can vanish Nyx tells him now leave out of my sight you're no longer welcome in hell not anymore Nyx wait if I made a mistake we can 
She snaps her fingers, goodbye Al, and he vanishes out of there too. Off panel, a voice says, bravo my majesty, our queen of hell. If I may, I'm Al Safan, chief custodian of the infernal keep. Allow me to be the first of many to congratulate you on your accession. Spare me your groveling, says Nyx. Instead, bring me a list of potential candidates for a new advisory council. He's like, whoa, 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 is that wise, your highness? This war split the loyalties of many factions. I won't repeat myself, says Nyx. As you will, my queen. It's all good, bruh. Don't worry about it. Good, says Nyx, because everything is about to change on Earth as she sits on the throne of hell, beckoning and ready to flex. Don't be trying me like I'm some kind of sample, right? So we get this epilogue. Back on Earth, seeds are being planted from hell and heaven and all of them equally confused as to why. They're all confused. They're not in heaven. They're not in hell. They're kicked out of there. But what are they doing back here? Once again, the devil you don't know. So Spawn gets vanished right back. He's zapped over there. And the first words that come out of his mouth is Wanda. He wants his Wanda. What have I done? Says Al. And she spawns like, if you're here after everything, does that mean we've lost? I don't know. I don't think we'll know that for a while, says Spawn. I let Nyx take the throne. Nyx? Says she spawn. She's part of the green world. You remember that? I mean, they don't really side with heaven. They don't side with hell. They do their own thing. I'll let her explain, says Spawn. When you left hell, did you see anyone else vanishing? I mean, yeah, there were a lot of us, but I don't know where they went. Why do you ask that question? And Spawn's like, Wanda was with me in hell. Her soul was sent there by heaven, but I could see something was happening to her. I think it was happening to all of us. So behind them, they hear a sharp hiss and the labored breathing of creatures trying to adjust to Earth's oxygen. So Spawn reacts instinctively, trying to blast some necroplasm, but guess what? Nothing happens. His powers appear to be gone. Why? He's nowhere near a dead zone. But before he can find out that answer, well, he gets clapped and the first blow lands on him. But soon he realizes the impact of his enemy's blows aren't as severe either, meaning his opponents seem to also have lost their power and that changes everything. So he claps back with his chains and spawns like something's wrong. Check your powers. Do they work? She spawns like, no, they don't, but they'll deal with that later. There's still two creatures standing in their way and they go in, they do the teamwork, dream work kind of thing and they lay them hands on them. Okay. So she spawns like, what the heck is going on? Our costumes are acting like we're inside of a dead zone, but we're not even close to one. And spawns like, I had my powers in hell. I assume you did too. But ever since we've been transported, what the heck is going on? And she spawns like, if this is true, we need to find out if this is widespread. Redeemer, are you there? And Redeemer checks in. He's like, I'm here with Monolith. We're at the Himalayas. They materialized there a few minutes ago, but something strange is happening with them too. They too don't have their powers. And she spawns like, is Nyx doing something to us? And spawns like, we don't know her intent yet. We'll need more info. And the dead monster from hell is like, <laughs> you don't have a clue what's happening to you do you the dead zones did you think this wouldn't happen did you think it would have come to this that there'll be no consequences to all your interference you locked us out spawn for so long that ruined everything letting heaven and clown ran their armies through them and allowed a hunt inside and what they mean by that is haunt is not a creature of heaven and not a creature of hell but when he transports into the dead zones it just creates some kind of off-putting energy level frequency that just throws everything out of whack You've broken them, every damn dead zone. And now that someone sits on the throne, everyone's gonna pay for what you did, including you, Spawn. And all Spawn and Jessica Priest can do is just look in horror. The green world has taken over because while you disappeared into hell, the dead zones have been expanding and expanding. And now they've grown large enough to cover your entire planet. So every hell spawn that has powers before, they ain't got no powers. And now Earth will pay the price for hell's new queen and as you see right here spawn's power meter is down to number one before it was higher than that a lot higher but hey also are we going back to referencing spawn issue number one or issue number five when malboja tells spawn if you deplete your powers that's a second death for you yo that is pretty heavy right there but that is the end of spawn issue number 350 hell's new ruler and the devil you didn't know what you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. Also, link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Because this issue, issue 350, tells a story of who takes a new throne of hell ever since Spawn issue number 100 when Spawn decapitated Malboja's head and the throne of hell has been vacant. I think this issue is worth adding to your comic book collection just simply because of that. Because that is a major 
plot point right there. Lastly, this video is sponsored by coffee. So if you'd like to buy a boy a cup of coffee, link in description or donate to the super thanks. But the greatest compliment you can do is by liking this video and subscribing to Rated Comics YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.